Well, a very good morning. Welcome to Hove for the final day of this county championship match between Sussex and Northamptonshire. I'm uh, Adrian Arms, and a very good morning to our co-commentator uh, from BBC Radio Northampton, uh, Andrew Rack. Morning, Adrian. Morning, everybody. And, uh, well, so far, so good weather-wise, although I think the forecast for later is not massively promising, but uh, very pleasant at the moment, and there's still, I think there's still a bit left in this game, you know? Well, we'll hear about that in a minute because um, I certainly think you would, I don't know who you spoke to last night. I spoke to, to Tom Haynes who was very pleased with his start to the season and was talking a little bit about his trip out to India and uh, playing particularly against spin. We haven't got the biggest crowd here. I mean, two reasons for that. A, it's the final day. It looks like it's a draw. B, the weather forecast is not brilliant after lunch today. But C, there's also the rail strike. Yes. And so, um, that, I mean, that would have certainly affected, certainly a couple of people have been in touch already who live up towards Haywards Heath who said they won't be down. Um, we'll do a quick check around the ground and just, yes, we are going out. I think that might be Tim up there who's waving. Yes, it is. I don't know who's next to him. <laughs> but he's definitely, a <laughs> it's not Julian. I know that. He's already said that he's not coming today. Uh, but Tim, thank you very much. Uh, lovely to see you sitting up there. Uh, in the stand and we're about to get underway in Sussex with this very fine um, uh, partnership between uh, Finn Hudson Prentice and Danny Lamb. They came together when the score uh, was 200 and, th well, I'll look at my notes here now, uh, Andrew. 258. Go. Yeah, for six. And they, Sussex yesterday after tea, I think I worked it out, added 176 in 31 overs. So doubled, they doubled the score basically yeah, in, that, going, uh, in yeah. that session. Uh, and actually, interestingly, last night, Tom Haynes said there was some chatter around Sussex of declaring mm. and putting Northamptonshire in for a few overs last night. But then the light went and it went quickly. And um, so they didn't do it. Anyway, in comes Ben Sanderson. He's running in down the hill, bowls to uh, Danny Lamb, who lets that all pass by outside the off stump. And there is no run. Yeah, you know, I think Northamptonshire actually w were a little bit <sighs> anxious, but they, they wonder whether that might be the case. And... Uh, I think the feeling is from the, the North Amateur camp that, you know, it's 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 not going to be... If there's, there's still possibilities, if we got a full day's play, that um, Sussex might, you know, presumably press on, try and get at least a 400, get four points, um, get a nice little lead, and, and then put a little bit of pressure on, maybe. But it, you need a full day's play, and I'm not sure we're going to get one. I agree. Sanderson in bowls, and forward comes Lamb, plays into the covers. And there is no run. Actually, the weather forecast I heard this morning um, was that there was going to be some pretty heavy rain around the southeast, sort of, you know, this afternoon. Um, yeah, that was uh, the the um, the weather app sort of suggesting maybe a bit at lunchtime and then some more organised rain, if you like, later on in the day, sort of five o'clock onwards, just when I'm probably going to be driving home. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sanderson is on his way. Uh, two slips go down. Um, Lamb waits and plays straight back down the track, fielded by Sanderson, and there is no run. Um, they'll be hoping there, were, there isn't any rain in large parts of the United States today, because there is a total eclipse of the sun. That's right, yes. Isn't that? Yes. Um, and people are getting very excited. Four minutes, I think, of... And apparently, right in the west of the UK, um, early evening, you might see a bit of it, apparently. Yes, that's correct, so they're saying. Um, so there's a bit of useless information. <laughs> <laughs> No, no eclipse of the sun here. We just want to see some sun. In comes Sanderson running in, uh, in and bowls. Oh, takes a step down the track, does uh, Danny Lamb. Well, that was uh, extraordinary. I don't think that will please Ben Sanderson too much. <laughs> Almost running down the track. And uh, uh, Well, actually, they will know each other very well. And I can see Ben Sanderson just patting uh, Danny Lamb 
on the back. They'll know each other from uh, certainly from Danny Lamb's time up at Lancashire and then Lutz Armisen will know him from around the, the circuit. It's interesting you mentioned yesterday, uh, Adrian, that you know one of the, the great joys of, of what we're you know, fortunate enough to do is, is the relationship between the players and the teams. Yeah. And it was really nice when we were doing our uh, post-match stuff to see a couple of the Northamptonshire players while you were uh, just finished interviewing Tom Haynes uh, and I was having a chat with uh, with Lewis McManus and, and uh, Luke Proctor and you know they all went over to Tom Haynes and said well played and you know we, where, where are you going for a pint afterwards and the rest of it and that's just great that's what you like to see and the relationship between the players on the county circuit is oh, I wish our effects mic was working on the roof because then I could plug another another mic in and we could have Bruce Talbot oh. on some commentary but I haven't got another mic I can put I, I because our, our microphone on the roof isn't working. Well, here's Chris Tremaine starting proceedings from the sea end. Balls to Danny Lamb, who's trying to do the little scoop, the Dilshan, yeah. over the head of the aforementioned Lewis McManus. There are two slips in place. It's a fairly conventional field. Two slips in place. A man sweeping on the cover boundary. Extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket. Deep square, just in from the boundary, and a fine leg on the boundary, down at the Cromwell Road end within conversational distance of anybody sitting in the deck chairs, but there's not too many no. down there at the moment. Here's Tremaine, the Australian, running in and bowls, and it hits Lamb on the pad. There's a, half an appeal for LBW, but it rolls out into the onside, and they come through for a leg by, not a leg by, so they must have got a little bit of an inside edge on it. There's no signal from umpire Sham McGam, so one more onto the total. And Sussex now 353 for six. So clearly, I think looking to, to get up certainly to 400 and get the the fourth point. Yeah. We've got plenty of time to do it. We're only in the, what, 82nd over yeah, of the I innings? Yeah, I've got so plenty of time. Yeah. Bags of time available. But if these two stay together, they could possibly even go for the fifth. Here's Tremaine in again. Bolster Hudson Prentice pushes up to mid on right. and just sees that George Bartlett was a little bit on his heels and they come through for a very good positive well judged single. Takes Hudson Prentice up to 60 and Sussex to 354 for six. We're talking throughout the match about uh, the, the various parts of the world that we've had uh, people getting in touch from which is absolutely terrific and um, I had another one last night, quite late last night, which I'll share with you in a moment. It's another one to tick off the list, put on the, another clock on the wall. Yeah. Here's Tremaine. And again, and bowls to Lamb, who plays that up to mid-off. And there's no run. Uh, Lawrence Wadey, morning to you, Lawrence, if you are listening at the moment. Um, he was saying, very enjoyable listening and watching. Heard some of the places read out to all corners of the world. Please add Macau. Well, I think that's how it's pronounced. Mm. Autonomous region in southern China to that list. Good luck for the season ahead, though not quite so much as Sussex. Well, we know where your uh, loyalties lie, but that's great. And thank you very much for getting in touch. Very good to hear from you. I've also got another one which I'll share in a second. Here's Tremaine in, and that's a good ball. Bounces a little bit, and it goes off a thick outside edge out into the offside for a single. Takes... Lamb up to 41, so 6 to 3.55 for 6. I also mentioned we, we touched on Dixon and Dot Green yesterday, yeah. didn't we, for reasons that I'm not absolutely why. sure why. No. But um, Scott George Curtis has been uh, on and says um, good stuff on, on the commentary. Thank you. He says, uh, I hope you carry on films get a mention today. He said, you can't beat them. Well, I would uh, would not disagree with that, but um, carry on batting at the moment for for Sussex. Here's Tremaine running away from us, and then batter Hudson Prentice pulls away. Now, <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous! Isn't it, it is no one in. The, it's, it's a paramedic, I think. Mean, one of the oh, guys okay. is just, just it perhaps didn't realise you're not meant to walk behind them. But there should be a steward there, really, saying actually. Well, it, it is. It is always frustrating, but it's one of the great laws of you know what that if you have any cricket match, even a club match, and there's nobody on the ground, there will always be the one person on the ground will walk behind the bowler's yeah. arm. Yeah. Um, I think the chap there probably realised. But uh, anyway, we put a little bit of sunshine, and we a little bit of uh, what, what our colleague uh, Anthony Gibson refers to as milky sunshine. But uh, some pie cloud around as well. Here's 
Tremaine in bowls and just dropped down on the offside by Hudson Prentice down into the gully. And again, they come through for a, a quick single. Hudson Prentice to 61, and that's the end of Chris Tremaine's over. He's bowled 13 overs, one made no wicket for 66. So having taken 50 wickets in the Sheffield Shield season, he's finding life a little bit more difficult here. 356 for six, Sussex. Hudson Prentice is 61. Danny Lamb is 41. And these two have now put on 98 for the seventh wicket. And I noticed that the game has been abandoned at Derby yes. where the ball bowled uh, against Gloucestershire. So that's not... Uh, that's not good news. I'm indebted to Tim Drew. It's Tim who's sitting up there in the top of East Ben Carmel with his listening to us um, chatting away. Thank you, Tim. Lovely to hear from you. Um, he says, great to be back for another season. Sorry we missed day two as we were at the Amex and yesterday due to the marathon, um, which um, had a nice day for the marathon, actually. Um, so, Tim, lovely to, to see you there up on the, the top deck. As in comes Sanders on bowls, hammered away, and it's just going to be a single. I thought for a moment that was going all the way for a boundary, but it's one more to Hudson Prentice, who goes to 62, Sussex 3.57 for six. Good to see George Bartlett out there, Andrew, because that was a fair old clonk he got on the head yesterday. Yeah, it was, it, he, he came back on the field just before they came off again, actually, for, for, for bad light. But, yeah, it was, it was very good. He was... Uh, it was a little bit worrying, wasn't it, when you see that happen first yeah. off? But uh, and as you say, thank goodness for helmets. Sanderson waits. There's a change in the field. The fine leg is just going a little finer, just away to our left hand side. Sanderson in bowls and driven by uh, Lamb to mid off, and there is no run. Danny Lamb on 41, Hudson Prentice 62. I guess, it, it, and we've said this, we've discussed it, you know, th this week about how strong the second division is, and points are going to, you know, bonus points are going to be really important from yep. a Sussex perspective. First of all, if they could come out of this with, you know, five batting points, two bowling, and eight for the draw, you know, 15's a, you know, a, a, a reasonable return, isn't it, if you can't win a game? And from North Hants, um, just wait as Sanderson uh, runs in and bowls let go outside the off stump by Lamb. There is no run. They would have three batting. They could still get um, 14. They could still get th the yeah. third bowling point. So yeah, no, I think I think um, that would be. I think you know very very handy for both sides. Yeah. It's it's maybe as I say Sussex have their eyes on maybe something a bit more than that if we get a full day. But I think that's that's going to be the problem. That's very frustrating. But. Hey, we've, we're very much better off than uh, than some elsewhere. So let's let's be grateful for the cricket we've had. Sanderson comes into bowl to uh, Danny Lamb is in and Lamb drives and that's a very good bit of fielding. That just dropped a little short. I think that's uh, Zayf Said in there and it just fell short of him. A good bit of fielding though and there is no run. Yeah. Um, and actually, Sussex missed out on maximum bowling points by one ball because mm. it was after it, Ollie Robinson took a wicket with the in the 111th over, um, right at the start of that over. So had it been one ball earlier, Sussex would have uh, picked up all three bowling bonus points. Sanderson in bowls and hammered away uh, by Lamb. And has he been caught? He has. That is a fantastic catch at mid-wicket because Danny Lamb absolutely leathered that and he's been caught at uh, mid-wicket. I think that's Chris Tremaine. It is Tremaine, there. yes. That is a brilliant catch because he apt that came right out the middle from Danny Lamb. And we were just I was just thinking, oh, there's the 100 partnership. But not to be. And Lamb is on his way for 41. Sussex 357 for seven. That is, I was just watching it on the, uh, on the replay. He, <laughs> as you say, he hit that very, very hard to the extent that it pretty much knocked Chris Tremaine off his feet. Uh, sort of knocked him over backwards when he held it, but it was it went low and it was taken very very well by the big Aussie. Got down to it well. If his uncle Mark's listening, as he has been, I know, out in Sydney yes. to some of this game, then uh, the, the boy done good there, Mark. But uh, really good really catch by Tremaine. It's uh, just going to halt the Sussex momentum a little bit. They're still what 14 runs behind, but a cracking partnership, 99 between those two, and as we say, had an awful lot to do with the fact that Sussex were able to double the score in a in a truncated final session last night, because of course we lost overs to the light, but uh, he goes for 41, Jack Carson coming in. Now, Tim, um, I didn't read out the final um, sentence in his uh, 
uh, original email because he said because uh, I said who's sitting next to you, Tim, and he said to answer your question, it's Gail sitting next to me, but don't tell the wife. He said exclamation mark, and I thought, oh dear. Anyway, he says, don't worry, Gail is the wife, <laughs> so you can name her. So there you go, <laughs> Tim and Gail <laughs> sitting up there. Uh, so Jack Carson, uh, why have they got Lamb still on the board? There he is. Okay, Jack Carson. Um, the, and the final two will be Ollie Robinson, who's got a test half-century to his name now, that one test he did play um, in the winter. And uh, Jaden Stills will be the last man in. So Jack Carson, he's got a top score of 87 in first-class cricket. And last year, he scored 438 runs at an average of 29. So he knows how to hold a bat, does uh, Jack Carson. But he's facing Ben Sanderson, who's coming in down the hill from the Cromwell Road end. Oh, he's beaten all ends up outside the off stump. Like, if, you had a, if you had a pound for every time <laughs> Ben Sanderson puts it on that spot... I'd be in the Bahamas you with, would be, with, our, with our, our friends that were, um, that were there yesterday. Yes, they were. Um, that was a cracking delivery, wasn't it? And he just puts it on a sixpence. Anyway, end of the over. 3.57 for seven... Hudson Prentice on 62. Carson is yet to score the man out in that over. Danny Lamb, who was very well caught by uh, Tremaine at mid-wicket for 41. For the um, statistically minded, uh, that is Ben Sanderson's 490th wicket for Northamptonshire in all competitions across all formats, which puts him level with Neil Malander on the uh, all-time list. Ghosty. Um, he has Billy East ahead of him on 493, and then once he gets to the mark of 500, he really does join the, the elite. Here's Tremaine starting a fresh over down the leg side, a little bit short, pulled by Hudson Prentice down to long leg for a single. Takes Hudson Prentice to 63, and Sussex to 358 for seven. Yes, when you, you get past 500, then... Every one of those bowlers is, a, is an absolute top liner. You've got the likes of Frank Tyson in there and David Larter, another England bowler. David Steele. John Dye. Wow, John yeah, Dye I, do, from I Kent. do remember John Dye. Moved Left armour? Left armour, that's right. Moved yeah. from Kent up to Northamptonshire and helped Northamptonshire win the Gillette Cup in 1976. Bowling for Rook Engineer early on the... Morning of the final. Here's Tremaine in bowls to the new batter, Jack Carson, who's Ooh. forward pushing it up to extra cover and there's no run. You mentioned Mark Tremaine and he is listening. Ah, morning, he says, Mark. I've logged in again. The end of daylight savings on Sunday means slightly earlier viewing for us here in Sydney. And actually, Mark, I was reading you've had horrendous rain in Sydney. I think that there's only sort of one road open to the Blue Mountains. I don't know whether you're affected by that or how bad it is, but I think they've had a stack of rain out in that part of the world, which I think is unseasonal. Um, but perhaps you could let us know, but it's great to have your company. And it was a good catch, by the way. It was a good catch. Here's Tremaine, in and bowls to Carson, who forces off the back foot, goes out into the covers for safe Zabe to field, and there's no run. Zabe with three wickets. He said yesterday, it was the first time he's taken more than two in a championship innings since 2016, which is a bit of a surprise, but as I say, he hasn't... A lot of people feel he probably has been underused a bit, but if he's going to have more of a role to play this year, then I'm sure say, a lot of supporters, and indeed Safe Save himself, will be very delighted. Here's Tremaine. Still with two slips in place, running away from us from the sea end. And bowls short to Carson, who ducks underneath it, goes through into the gloves of Lewis McManus, and umpire Suri Shanmugam signals one for the over. I just wonder whether we should... Um, we don't have a third voice um, today, which is supplied centrally by um, uh, the BBC, but Bruce Talbot is here. I wonder if he'd, would you fancy Natter for 15 minutes, Bruce? Um, I want to go after half 11, perhaps have a Natter to you. Uh, OK, yeah. You, 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 yeah, you, you should have a Natter, and we, then we can still get some Sussex and some Northamptonshire yes. perspective. And um, Here's Tremaine in, bowls to Carson, again is in behind that, plays it up on the onside this time, Justin Broad comes across from mid-wicket to field. It'd be good to get some views from, from Britain. And some of the things John Philby was talking about yesterday, and one of the really interesting things John spoke about was this idea 
um, that why can't county cricket start at half past ten? You know, particularly because we lost overs last night. You know, it got dark very quickly. It's early April, and if we'd started at half past ten yesterday, and there was no reason why not, you know, we could have got those overs in. It's, it's, yeah. I, I just think some of these rules in cricket, they, they're, they're not helping. They, they, they no, I, I can only agree with you. I, I've been probably a little bit sceptical about that, but uh, when you get a situation like yesterday, it is pretty much impossible to argue against. Here's Tremaine in. Bowls to Jack Carson, who just gets a thickish outside edge down to deep backward point, and uh, he's off the mark with a single, and he's pinched the bowling as well, so Carson is one, Hudson Prentice is 63. At the end of the over, 3.59 for seven. Sussex, if you're just tuning in a little bit late, lost the wicket this morning of Danny Lamb, very well caught at mid-wicket by Chris Tremaine off Ben Sanderson for 41. That made it 3.57 for seven. Bright enough at the moment here on the Sussex coast, but some high cloud around. Not a great deal of breeze. Forecast into this afternoon is a little dubious. But, um, well, as I say, we'll enjoy it while, it's, uh, while the cricket's with us. And in view of the fact, I say, Derbyshire match abandoned. First game at Derby, abandoned without a ball bowled, I think, since 2010, I was reading. In comes uh, Ben Sanderson, bowls to Carson, and again beats him outside the off stump with an identical delivery to which he beat Carson in the previous over. He's in his 19th over, Ben Sanderson, four maidens, two for 44. I would imagine they're the sort of figures that you've seen pretty regularly yes. throughout his Northamptonshire career. Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, he's just Mr. Reliable, really, and... Uh, like old Father Thames, he keeps rolling along. Yeah, well, he's bowled very well in this game. I don't he'll get a stack of wickets during the season, running in towards us, down the hill, bowls, and Carson is inside the line, placed a mid-wicket, and there is no run. There are two slips, a point cover mid-off, mid-on, um, oh, sort of fairly widish mid-wicket, more erring to mid-on. There's a deep backward scare, scare, square, and a fine leg. And if you've just joined us this morning, a very good morning. Welcome to our coverage on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Uh, Adrian Harms and Andrew Rad, your commentary team. And if you'd like to get in touch, sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk via email. As Sunderson is in bowls and Carlson drives nicely down the ground and that's four runs. That was a very fine shot. He cracked that away through mid on. And Jack Carson goes to five and Sussex to three, 63 for seven. If you want to tweet us, um, Old Man Rad, R A D is Andrew's Twitter handle, which you all know up in Northampton, or you can tweet us at BBC Sussex Sports. It'd be great to hear from you. Uh, Still no play up at Chester the Street as well. They haven't bowled a ball there yet between Durham and Hampshire. I mean, that would almost, I mean, you think about Hampshire, I mean, the journey back down to <laughs> Southampton. <laughs> it's a long way, it, isn't it? Is it all, you know, is it really worth it for, well, you know, less than a day's play. In comes Sanders and Bowles. Oh, Carson again beaten outside the off stump. It's an old expression. He's got the the ball on a piece of string here, isn't he, Ben Sanders? That delivery. And again, if they did one of these maps, which they do on you mm. know, on the television, on Sky, and just showing where the ball is pitched, um, several of these, well, a lot of balls that Ben Sanderson has bowled would be very, very close to each other. I have a, a nomination for today's viral cricket video, which I'll share with you in a second. In comes on some bowls, and Carson was looking to heave that one over the next side. He was going to get four runs, or is he? he no, well fielded, sir. Literally down in front of us. That's well fielded by uh, Michael Finan. Um, but three runs to Jack Carson. He was looking to hoik that away. It was a rather ugly shot over mid wicket. He got a big outside edge, and the ball ended up down at uh, third man. Uh, but three more to Carson, he goes to eight, the total to 366 for seven. Yes, our good friend David Griffin at, uh, at Derby has, uh, has put a 20-second video up of three gentlemen in Wellington boots um, walking on a very, very muddy outfield at Derby, just showing how wet it is. And, uh, gosh, there's absolutely no way they could have done anything there. Sanderson in the bowls and cracked away by Hudson Prentice to uh, mid-off. And there's a misfield at mid-off, and that allows Hudson Prentice to go through. Now, is the fielder there hurt himself? What if he might? No, he hasn't. He's OK. End of the over. Hudson Prentice goes to 64, 367 for seven. A couple of emails. Um, hello to Adrian and Andrew. I'm enjoying listening to Sussex back from here in Brentwood in Essex. 
Adrian may remember me from my long time ago working at the ECB and also bumping into each other at Albion Games. This is from Julian Good. He says, I'm unfortunately long term unwell, so listening bedbound at the moment. Being back at home and watching in person at some point is on my wish list after recovery. Keep up the good work. I'm really sorry to hear that. Uh, Julian. I remember, I can remember Julian yeah. as well with ECB, so yeah, please. And there's like good wishes there from Andrew Rad, Julian yeah. and Bruce Talbot, who's going to come have a natter twist in about 10 minutes time as well. So uh, we wish you all the best and sorry to hear that you're, uh, you're unwell at the moment. Tremaine starting a fresh over with a field very well scattered, seven men on the boundary as he comes in and bowls to Hudson Prentice, who opens the face drives it down to backward point, deep backward point for a single, and then the field suddenly converges on Jack Carson. So they're quite prepared to give Hudson Prentice the single. He's 65, and Sussex 368 for seven. George Bartlett was fielding down here at Long On, immediately in front of our commentary position. Very good view that we have down here under the south stand here at Hove. And there were seven, as I say, seven on the boundary. But they've now moved in. Now, Tremaine's having a chat with um, Lewis McManus, who has walked all the way down for a natter about something. Helmet. He's going to stand up, I think, to Chris Tremaine, which is an interesting move. He was just having a word with Luke Proctor, the captain, who's at mid-off. Lewis McManus is vice-captain of the uh, Red Bull side for Northamptonshire and they just signalled to the dressing room for a helmet mm. and all the while I don't wish to be a harbinger of doom but it's just getting oh, it a is. little bit darker isn't it, no, it is. um, no it definitely is um, uh, these delays for helmets are ridiculous actually Mark tremaine has been back in touch and he says uh, yes Sydney received a huge amount of rain last Friday probably not unseasonal as we often receive good rainfall in autumn, but the amount was substantial. I live close to the river that separates Sydney from the Blue Mountains, but not close enough to be affected by the flooding. The only bright side was that the original forecast was for the same amount of rain on the Saturday, uh, but it never arrived. So there we are. Weather right. update. Well, I got that wrong because it's not the keeper that's going to get the helmet. It's they're putting forward short leg in. Not George Bartlett, I hope. Not George Bartlett, no. Justin Broad is going in there. Must have been like quite sure how Chris Tremaine would react to having the keeper standing up. I say Ben Sanderson it happens quite frequently but um, well now the field is running everywhere. They've got first slip, Karen Nair is now coming out of first slip going into mid wicket. So there's just the one slip, Emilio Gay and a forward short leg and then a ring of five saving one as Tremaine comes in and bowls short and Carson ducks underneath it, goes through to Lewis McManus, and again, the umpire signals one for the over. And Paul Baldwin, who's just finding his view obscured by, I should think, the right leg of Justin Broad, in there at forward short leg under the lid, has moved across to point. Which means he can have a cosy chat with the fielder down there. And here's Tremaine turning from this C end. Running in again to bowl to Jack Carson, who plays that well. It just bounced on him a little bit around the rib cage, and he turns it down to fine leg for a single. Takes Carson to nine, and Sussex to 369 for seven. So two runs behind. In the old days, of course, first innings points would have been would have been worth having. Yeah, don't yeah. do that anymore. Yeah, actually, that was a question that came in yesterday for me to pose to John on another occasion about um, points. And I said, if I can find the email, it came in from William Knight yesterday. Well, now they've got this spread field far and wide. Two, there's four men on the onside, all of them on the boundary, or just in from the boundary. As Tremaine comes in and bowls to Hudson Prentice, who cracks that away out to deep extra. And it's only going to be a single. Takes him to 66, and Sussex to 370 for seven, but 66, Mark, you off just 47, 48 balls now. It really has been a terrific effort from Finn Hudson Prentice, a six and 11 fours. I mean, he's had license just to play a yeah, shot. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Sussex clearly looking for quick runs. I was saying yesterday, to have somebody like that coming in at this stage of the innings is just 
absolutely priceless. Here's Tremaine in balls to Carson. Short and wide. Carson just lets it go through to Lewis McManus. As I say, it's the sort of role that Adam Rossington played for Northamptonshire when he was uh, with the club. I remember a couple of innings of his going in at sort of number six generally and, and launching a counter-attack, not least a very important game against Durham in 2019 when Northamptonshire were in some disarray and a match that they really needed to win to keep themselves in the promotion challenge. Here's Tremaine in again, bowls and turned away by Carson out to deep mid-wicket. Karen Nair fields one more to Carson. Takes him into double figures, 10 to him, and the score's level, 371 for 7 at the end of the over, so Carson's nicked the bowling. 371 for 7, 66 to Hudson Prentice, 10 to Carson. And uh, they were playing over the Clark Road side of uh, Wantage Road, and he hit, I think, off the top of my head, six seven sixes, um, targeting the short boundary, and suddenly brought North Outlicher back into the game, which they finished up winning and securing promotion not long thereafter and also down at Bristol and there's the game we mentioned actually on the first day because I think that the lights were on pretty much for the entire four days and um, again he, he was really one of the very few batters to come to terms with what were very difficult batting conditions certainly over the first three days. In comes Ben Sanderson down the hill from the Cromwell Road in bowls to Jack Carson with a flick of the wrist plays that through mid wicket and he's going to pick up a boundary is uh, Jack Carson he goes to is that going to go to 14? No, it's, he's already gone up. He's gone to 10. Three seven, no, there we go. He goes to 14. 375 uh, for 7. Sussex in front. Yes, indeed. By four runs after Northamptonshire yesterday made 371. If you've just joined us this morning, a very good morning. Welcome to our coverage here at Hove. BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Adrian Harms. And Andrew Rad on commentary duties this morning as in comes Sanderson running in down the hill bowls. And Carson's at it again, and that could have gone all the way for the maximum. And that was effortless. Yes, indeed, it sailed away for six runs into the Spen Karma Pavilion. He just picked that up of about a length and deposited the ball over mid wicket for six. That was a gorgeous shot, it wasn't, was, it? wasn't it? I'm that very glad at this moment that we don't have Ben Sanderson on player mic <laughs> because I don't think. I think we might have to get the um, the bleep out, possibly. Because well, he's yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's not going to be massively um, enjoying this. It's interesting. We, we were talking yesterday, obviously, while they're just trying to find the ball and get it back on. Where's Brendan? Is, is Brendan not down? Oh, there? Brenda will be there. Uh, uh, wild horses, you know. No. Br Br Brenda Lower is always there. She's sitting about two rows back. Oh, I see. Uh, next yes. to yep. where the uh, the umpire's room is. Oh, they got uh, the ball back. We'll come back. I was just going to talk a little bit about the Cookerborough ball. We'll come on to that in a second. In comes Sanderson over the wicket bowls. And Carson's at it again, but this time he's going to be caught. No, he's not. It's a brilliant effort at backward square. It was short. It was pulled away. Um, I can't see exactly who the fielder is down there, but he got a hand to it, but could only help the ball over the rope. So Jack Carson... George Bartlett. Uh, four, and he's a pretty tall man, George Bartlett. Um, so a four and two sixes, and uh, that will not improve the mood of Ben Sanderson, who's bowled beautifully here. 14 of three balls. And we welcome listeners to Five Sports Extra to Hove as well. Very good morning to you. As ben Sanderson is on his way from the Cromwell Road end. He's in on bowls. And Jack Carlson is now trying some sort of reverse ramp. And the ball thuds through into the gloves of uh, Lewis McManus behind the stumps. And I think there was a wry smile there from Ben Sanderson. Yes, Adrian Arms and Andrew Rad on commentary here at Hove, where Sussex have just lost the one wicket this morning, resumed on... 3.51 for six, lost Danny Lamb, very well caught at mid-wicket by Chris Tremaine off Ben Sanderson for 41, breaking a 99-run partnership between Lamb and Finn Hudson-Prentice. Hudson-Prentice still there on 66, and Jack Carson now going for it. He's 26th not out off 19 balls. And the sun trying to break through here at home, which is good news, as Sanderson is in, bowls to Carson. Carson hits on the pad. I reckon he got an inside edge on that because... He looked to be pretty in, pretty much in front, did uh, Jack Carson, but it was a stifled appeal from a combination of Ben Sanderson and Lewis McManus. And as far as where we're going in the game, I 
I suspect, I mean, we're talking about possibly Sussex were thinking about getting Northamptonshire in last night, but the light didn't really allow that. So I, I would assume they're going to certainly pick up at least one more batting point. They've got still the, the capability to, to get uh, all five with still plenty of overs left. Sanderson is in again short and Carson plays that firmly up to mid-on and picks up a single. He will retain the strike. It is the end of the over. 388 for seven. Hudson Prentice is on 66. Jack Carson is on 27. And just to say, you're listening to live cricket on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Adrian Harms, Andrew Rad, Bruce Talbot is going to come and join our commentary uh, in a few moments' time. And a very profitable over for Sussex. So Sussex now leading by 17. It, I suppose it boils down to whether Paul Farbrace and John Simpson feel that there is any mileage in possibly trying to put Northamptonshire under a bit of pressure with the bat, get themselves a little lead. The momentum has obviously shifted very much in the direction of Sussex. The, the partnership between Hudson Prentice and, and Lamb adding 99, including, as we were saying earlier, basically doubling the score from 175 for th 176 for three to, 100 to 351 for six at the close last night. So doubling the score in that session has really put Sussex in a quite a strong position, but whether on this pitch there's enough help available with the Kookaburra ball as well for Sussex to put Northamptonshire under any pressure with the bat in the second innings remains to be seen. Nevertheless, Sussex will be looking to get this fourth batting point. And the field with Jack Carson on strike is fairly conventional. Five saving one and a slip in as Tremaine runs in from the CN. Bowl short, pulled by Jack Carson. And it goes straight to mid-wicket for a safe Zabe fields. And there's no run. Chris Tremaine and Ben Sanderson opening up for Northamptonshire this morning. Still with a fairly newish ball. We're only in the 88th over of the innings, though, so there's plenty of time. Another 22 overs after this for Sussex to try and get up to 450. If these two stay together, there's every chance they could do it. No, absolutely. Here's Tremaine running in again. Bowls that short of a length and... Carson just riding the bounce, runs it down through backward point. They've taken one, thought about a second, but decide against it. So Jack Carson goes up to 28 of just 23 balls. Mm. And Sussex to 389 for seven. Keep an eye on what's happening elsewhere in the matches that are actually being played. We've been very lucky here. Although we've lost some time, obviously, to the weather and to bad light last night. We have had some, some interesting cricket, some entertaining cricket over the last three days. And now with Finn Hudson Prentice on strike, the field scatters. North Amplature have one, two, three, four, five men on the boundary on the onside, three on the boundary on the offside. And that's short from Tremaine, attempted pull by Hudson Prentice, hits him somewhere on the body and rolls down for wicketkeeper Lewis McManus, who's got nobody to talk to, really. I suppose Gully's just about within conversational distance, Emilio Gay. I think Hudson Prentice thought there there was a single as the ball ran through to Lewis McManus, but Jack Carson wasn't too keen, was he, from the non-striker's end? Well, they're having a little bit of a conference yeah, at the moment, so that, that may be the, the gist of it. A little bit of rather watery sunshine breaking through at the moment. Cloud's pretty high. As Tremaine, with a south stand behind him, runs in and bowls. Very full and chopped down hard into the ground by Hudson Prentice. It bounces up for Emilio Gay to retrieve it. Gay, the only close fielder. Now, mid-off, long-off, is coming up into what would be the circle at mid-off. Well, they might just be having a chat, because it's Luke Proctor, might just be having a chat with his bowler. George Bartlett on his North Amplature debut, having made the move from Somerset. He's fielding on the boundary immediately in front of our commentary position at long on. And Proctor now retreats back to his position at long off as Tremaine comes in and bowls and very full again, trying to whip that one away, Hudson Prentice, but it just hits him on the pad. And there's no run. 389 for seven. And I know you've got an update to do, Hadrian. 
Yes, as Tremaine just wanders back to his mark. Yes, hello, Sarah. Yes, a bit of milky sunshine across Hove this morning. The forecast isn't great for later in the day, so we're going to make the most of it uh, whilst we can. Sussex are pressing on here this morning. They're 389 for seven. Finn Hudson Prentice, 66 not out. That's come off of just 51 balls. And Jack Carson on 28 or just 23 balls. He's already hit two uh, big sixes as Sussex look to close in on maximum batting bonus points. But it does look, Sarah, this game is heading for a draw. Maybe not so down at Canterbury, uh, where Somerset bowled out this morning for 403. Uh, three wickets there for Nathan Gilchrist. Somerset leading by 119. And I'm afraid um, more bad weather up in Manchester Surrey 15 without loss they haven't started today they only had 21 balls uh, yesterday because of the rain that game is certainly destined for a draw so um, at the end of the over there's a bit of a council going on in the middle uh, between some of the Northamptonshire players 390 for 7 67 to Hudson Prentice 28 to uh, Jack Carson. Uh, I'm going to vacate the uh, commentary um, for 20 minutes or so. I'm going to leave you with uh, Andrew Rad, and we're going to bring in Bruce Talbot, who um, is someone who's uh, written for the local paper here, the Argus, for many, many years, written many books um, of uh, Sussex players as well. It'd be great to have Bruce on for 20 minutes or so to have a, have a natter away to Andrew. Yeah, look forward to that as uh, Bruce comes into the seat on my left. And it is going to be Ben Sanderson to continue. He's into his 21st over, 2 for 69. If you were with us at the start, I mentioned that the second wicket of the innings that Sanderson took this morning takes him up to 490 for Northamptonshire in all formats. Uh, puts him level with Neil Malinder on the all-time list, the ghost. And closing in on 500, which really would be a, a remarkable milestone. Now, the, the field spread far and wide as Sanderson comes in and bowls to Hudson Prentice, who drives pleasantly up to long off. They thought about taking on the arm for two, but decide against it. Rob Keogh fielding out there in front of the deck chairs at the Cromwell Road end. And so they settle for the single. Hudson Prentice to 68 and Sussex to 391 for seven. And a very good morning to Bruce. Radders, good morning to you. So, one uh, one veteran to another at the moment. I saw it was official you were described as a, as right. a veteran a cricket veteran. writer somewhere in the week. Yeah, in a column I wrote in the Brighton and Hove City News last week. Yeah, veteran. I wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> well, you know, I've been doing this for a, for a while between us. Here's Sanderson from the Cromwell Road end, runs in and bowls, and that's just nudged away on the onside by Jack Carson. Doesn't manage to beat the man in at mid-wicket, as I say, with Carson on strike. is a much more conventional field with a, a ring saving one, four on the offside, two on the onside. They've got long leg on the boundary and a deep square just in front on the boundary. The man in there tight at mid-wicket, looking to save one. And here's Sanderson. Seagulls audible as he comes in. Bowls slower ball, no ball called by umpire Paul Baldwin. And it's driven up to Keo at mid off, and there's no run off the bat. But two, of course, on the total of the no ball, 393 for seven. How do you see this shaping up, Bruce? I mean, like, for me, it just looks as though Sussex are looking, you know, they, they, they could target the fifth batting point comfortably at the moment they've got bags of time That's the, the wicket's doing very little it's, it's a typical hope pitch one we've seen so many similar surfaces in the last few years here uh, radders it, it doesn't really deteriorate a, gr a great deal and we've not really had a, this is the fourth day but we've not really had four we've certainly not had four full days of play um yes, sanderson in again bowls to carson who drops it out on the offside thinks about a single but it's not there two fielders converge on it justin broad gets there first and so there's no run. And I suppose the other thing is, um, there's obviously lots of discussion about the, the Kookaburra ball, but it's it's done very, very little, especially for the seamers in this game, hasn't it? Both sides have, have found it hard work. The spinners have enjoyed it, I think. Yeah. It's, it, it, apparently it, it feels quite nice in the hand because it feels a little bit smaller, but um, no, for the seamers it's been hard work. Here's Sanderson in and bowl short, pulled away by Carson, and that's half a dozen. 
That's six. It's gone into the seating of the members' pavilion over to our left. Well, he's bounced back very obligingly for the umpire just to be able to retrieve it. I don't know whether Brenda had got a hold of it. The doyen of the Sussex supporters down... Bit, bit too Brenda's, bit too far to yes, Brenda's it was, right was for even her to scurry across and get it. I think it just bounced back off the seating, maybe. But it's six to Carson. He goes to 34, and Sussex to 399 for seven. So just one run away from picking up this fourth batting bonus point. Field. <laughs> Yes, they're going in all directions. There's uh, Michael Fine is now being pushed way back at backward point. Emilio Gay is already back on the third man boundary as Sanderson comes in, and that's whipped away by Carson running out to the boundary in front of the indoor school. That's four more, and it brings up the 400 for Sussex, and means they secure their fourth batting bonus point. Takes Carson up to 38 off just 28 balls, and. I think when he f first came in, Bruce, and I thought, but you were quite happy just to get him on strike. He's and a dangerous, uh, a dangerous bit like Hudson Prentice. He's a, a very, very good batsman, uh, Jack Carson, more than capable of getting runs and scoring quickly. Um, he's obviously got a license to play shots a little bit in this situation. But um, yeah, another dangerous, a dangerous uh, player down the lower order. And Hudson Prentice, I mean, got nine fifties last year. Didn't convert any of them into hundreds, which was a disappointment for him. And uh, this is an opportunity for him to do that, I think. Certainly, bat deep, Sussex. As Sanderson comes in, bowls short, and that's swatted away by uh, Carson, who is dropped. It was in the air for a long time. It looked as though it was going to be caught out there at long on, and it's gone down. Uh, I'm just looking to see it's the very furthest part of the ground who actually was the fielder responsible for that. Might have been Rob Keogh. No, it wasn't it wasn't Keogh. I think it might have been the captain actually. It was it was, it was Luke Proctor. But uh, it was in the air for a while. He had to move to try and get to it and didn't manage to do so. I think in the end he thought it was coming not I think he went a little bit further yeah, than he thought and he finished bit, up yeah. having to run back towards the indoor school and he didn't manage to get hands on it and they pick up a couple of runs so 40 to Carson 405 for seven when you think Bruce though he's still got Ollie Robinson to come who's, who's made the useful runs in, in test cricket as well and then Seals who I don't know what his batting pedigree is like but I imagine he can he's got a few shots as well so yeah I mean you know Sussex get to 450 475 lead of 100 just puts North Hands under a little bit of pressure but I, I, I I can't believe that this game's going to finish in any other uh, way except a draw. Here's Tremaine starting a fresh over to Hudson Prentice. Turns that away out through mid-wicket. Certainly one. Are they going to think about two? No, they're not. Michael Finan is <laughs> quickly to the ball. Michael Finan, who's, who's had a bit of a walk-on part, I think it's fair to say, in this game so far, making his debut for Northamptonshire. Short-term deal from Leicestershire. He's only bowled five overs. Uh, Nought for 44. Did have a catch dropped, albeit a difficult one yesterday, which probably would have made all the difference, to be honest, Bruce, if that one had just stuck in the in Lewis McManus's glove uh, after he went for, was it 26, I think, in his first three, brought him back and still didn't, uh, didn't quite manage to stem the flow. Conversation between Luke Proctor and Chris Tremaine. Tremaine running in. Again to bowl to Carson. Carson drives handsomely up to deep mid-off where Proctor fields. But they're able to come through for a single. Carson to 41 and Sussex to 407 for seven. Lots to talk about, obviously, at this point time of the, the season, Bruce. And one of the things that, that strikes me about this Sussex side, and we've just touched on it there, is, is the, the depth of batting. It really is a team with no tail. Pretty much, um, you know, you've got Danny Lamb, Finn Hudson, Prentice, Jack Carson, all more than capable, uh, six, seven and eight. Here's Tremaine in bowling to Hudson Prentice with everybody on the boundary, apart from bowler and keeper, every Northamptonshire fielder on the fence. He pulls that for a single, takes Hudson Prentice up to 70 and Northamptonshire to 408 for seven. Interesting what you were saying about the the, the spinners, Bruce. I was talking to Rob Keogh uh, last night and sort of saying that it looked to be coming out okay. And he said it is, but he said the trouble is when, it, and I suppose it's the same with a 
the Duke's ball as well. That when the, when it gets old and soft, um, it does just doesn't bounce, That's nice. um, and you've got to really flight it, throw it up to get it to do anything. Tremaine in bowls short, and Carson sways out of the way, goes through to Lewis McManus. Yeah, interesting. I mean, looking ahead to the next round of fixtures, I know North Hans are home to Middlesex. Can you see there being any changes? Um, I, I suppose it depends what sort of surface uh, they have at Northampton because it's going to be Cookerborough again, isn't it? Because yeah. it's uh, for the first two rounds. I mean, they would Northampton would dearly love to have Jack White, obviously, uh, back on parade. I'm, I'm not sure that word I heard was that he might not be around for, for the Middlesex game. That is a, a serious blow to Northamptonshire, not having him around his Tremaine in bowls and a big swing from... Jack Carson, it goes out off a sort of inner portion of the bat out to deep square for a single. Didn't get the whole meat of the bat on it, otherwise I think it would have gone in the um, hospitality area down to our left. Uh, 70 to Hudson Prentice, 42 to Carson, 409 for seven. So, I mean, that I suspect is probably not going to, to happen. The other one who would come back in if fit is probably Ricardo Vasconcelos. Um, who's got a bit of a shin problem uh, again the word was that he was not too far away so he might come in but some, yeah, some interesting selection poses driven sweetly by Hudson Prentice out through extra cover and it's Luke Proctor who comes across to retrieve and they come through for a single so Hudson Prentice will have the bowling at the start of the next over 71 to him 42 to Carson and Sussex are 410 for seven at the end of the 90th over. So still 20 overs in which to get another 40 runs, 40 runs which should be an absolute doddle. At this rate, yeah, Carson's played a really good hand here, hasn't he? 42 off 32 balls. Hudson Prentice, I mean, he was smashing it everywhere last night, but this morning he's been fairly, um, you know, he's, he's allowed Carson to, to take the lead. And the sun's out and it's lovely. It is, it's gorgeous now, isn't it? Yeah, we do have, we do have some sunshine here on the south coast and because I think um, Sussex are at Grace Road isn't it I think they next, are next, uh, next, next round uh, next round on Friday talking about I mean we, I know you've been discussing the weather this morning with Adrian the prospect of some rain later but what I tend to and I've just looked at the radar it, you, you do find a lot of the time with the rain here sometimes will skirt mm. over the downs round you could see it pouring down you know f right in the far distance we um, but it, it, it can often skirt round them and, and we'll miss it completely and um, I've got a feeling that, you know, local, my local knowledge, Radish, tells me that's what's <laughs> going to happen today. We're going to see more cricket than we think we Well, I hope, I, ha I very much hope you're right. Uh, it's a single off the first ball of the over for Hudson Prentice, driven up to long on. Sanderson continuing this spell from the Cromwell Road end, 411 for seven, and Hudson Prentice 72 in the sunshine. I mean, the thing is, Bruce, there's, there's still a lot of cricket left in this game. There's still 86 overs after this one. So there's a... A great deal of cricket still to be played as Adrian Harms performs his most useful service of the day. <laughs> of the by, week. By, <laughs> by bringing in the lunch ticket. Thanks, Adrian, very much. Adrian will be back with us on commentary very shortly. Here's Sanderson. Bowls to Carson, who gives it the full flamboyant IVA Carson. <laughs> Extra cover drive, and he gets a single. Goes out to man, one of the many men out on the boundary. Carson goes to 43 and Sussex to 413 for seven. There won't be many championship wickets here this season that are as near as to the pavilion as this one, to be no. fair. Um, that's it inflates the scoring slightly. Here's Sanderson running in again to bowl to Hudson Prentice wide outside the off stump, just hanging it out there, trying to keep it out of Hudson Prentice's reach. He does successfully on this occasion. This might but be Sanderson's last over. I think like so. He, he's, he's bowled for 50, 50 minutes. Yes, I think he's probably uh, probably earned a little bit of a rest. 22nd over, he's in. Two for 86. His figures have just taken a little bit of a dent this morning. Here's Sanderson in again. Bowls, and that's attempted sort of flat bat. Crack bass past the bowler by... Carson, he doesn't really time it and he just gets a single it's half stop by Sanderson takes Carson to 
Uh, Hudson Prentice, rather, beg your pardon, to 73, and Sussex to 413 for seven. Yes, it is over towards the, uh, the pavilion side, isn't it, of the square here at Hove. Here's Sanderson in and bowls to Carson, who goes for a, <laughs> a big swing, gets a bottom edge, just goes past the leg stump, retrieved by Lewis McManus behind the stumps, and there's no run. It's going to be a lot of interest, and you know, you and I were talking about this off air yesterday, Bruce, uh, next week with the announcement of the uh, professional, eight professional women's sides, and I think pretty much every county has put their plate up and said we would like one. Perhaps talk about that in a second. Here's Sanderson in again, bowls to Carson, and that is wide. Sanderson, it's quite clear what he's trying to do. He's just trying to hang it wide, and it's, it's a fairly negative tactic. And on this occasion, Paul Baldwin has called wide outside the off stump. So one more onto the total, 4.14 for seven. In normal circumstances, you don't see Ben Sanderson bowl too many wide. He's, <laughs> he's having a chat with... Paul Baldwin was saying yesterday, Ben, who's, who's an absolutely fantastic chap, but he does have this sort of rather hangdog demeanour. He's almost got it into a, made it into an art form. And um, he's not massively enjoying himself out there, probably it's fair to say, at this precise moment. Here's Sanderson. Bowls to Carson, who smashes that straight back past the bowler. A despairing dive. By the fielder coming across from long on, but Carson hit that very hard. And it's gone for four to finish Sanderson's over, possibly finish his spell. He's still having a word with Paul Baldwin, and I'm not entirely sure that's a great idea. I think um, uh, the umpires very rarely lose those arguments in the long term. Anyway, end of the over. 418 for seven. Carson is 47. Hudson Prentice is 73. Yes, yeah, so, um, I mean, obviously Sussex have have uh, put forward a bid that I think by common consent has been a strong one. What do you think the chances are? Um, I'd like to think they're very good, but I've got a horrible feeling, Radis, that Sussex's geographical position is going to be held against them. You've got a strong women's set-up already at the uh, GS Bowl, or whatever it's called now, um, with Hampshire and, and uh, the Southern Vipers. Kent have got ambitious plans at Beckenham. They already host the South East Stars there. You've got Surrey up the road. And that's not um, thinking about what might happen uh, with MCC and uh, Middlesex at Lords. So I think Sussex will put, have put together a really good bid. Paul Farbrace was involved. He went to the presentation. I think they were the only one of the 16 counties who, whose men's head coach was in attendance. They've got some ambitious plans here to turn uh, some of the facilities, some of the hospitality f facilities into women-only changing rooms, which again is, is great. And hopefully that will happen regardless of whether they get the, um, the go-ahead or not. But I... I I think we'll know a lot of di uh, the direction of travel yeah. county cricket in the next few years. We'll know when we see who, which counties have got those uh, franchises. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Here's Tremaine continuing his spell, driven up in the air, and that's caught by George Bartlett immediately below us at Long On, just coming in a few steps, and that's the end of Hudson Prentice. A very good catch by Bartlett. It was just dying on him a little bit, and he d dived forward and caught it. So Hudson Prentice goes for an excellent 73 off just 60 balls with a 6 and 11 falls. It's the first wicket of the innings, first wicket of the season for Chris Tremaine. So if I were you, Uncle Mark, listening in Sydney, go and make yourself a cup of tea or whatever. And 419, 418 for 7, for 8 now it is with applause and very well merited applause for Finn Hudson Prentice as he walks back to the pavilion gets a pat on the back from Ollie Robinson who passes him on the way in yeah be disappointed because there was a hundred there for, you know we talked about the, his 950s last year Finn Hudson Prentice was a hundred there for the taking just sort of checked the shot a little bit and in the end Bartlett made the catch look fairly comfortable Tremaine deserved that wicket I think he's persevered and bowled pretty well um, not been He's obviously a far more used to bowling with a kookaburra ball than, um, than uh, anyone else um, out there today, but um, it's hard work on this pitch. Very dry, there's not a lot of movement, sea movement. Um, there's nothing in the air really either for the bowlers. It's uh, been a bit of a slog in the last two or three sessions for North Ants, but um, 418 for eight. So Sussex need another 32 to get the 
fifth batting point. Two more wickets. Robson, Robinson and Seals a lot. Depends now on Carson. I think he's got to take the lead here. Robinson can hang around and, and he can hit shots, but he can also um, <laughs> get out quite quickly. So <laughs> yeah. we'll see. Yeah, but I, I, just to go back what we were talking about, the, uh, the, the women's teams, I, I quite agree in that, I think, and we, the word we were using, I think when we were talking about it earlier in the match, was as a signal. It's going to be a very clear signal of what the thinking is at ECB and, and John Philby, the Sussex chairman, who was kind enough to spend a good hour with us in the box yesterday, um, was saying that, you know, is it, does it really make sense to just basically say, well, okay, well, we're going to give these uh, these teams to those grounds, the test grounds that already have test cricket, international cricket, the 100 and, and so on and so forth, or are we actually going to try and spread it around a little bit? I mean, Northamptonshire have also put in a, a bid, as we were talking about yesterday, geographically, perhaps it's a, it's a, a, a stronger, stronger case. Yeah, I think, um, I think that is the case. So... It's Robinson facing his first ball from Tremaine. It's pitched up and it's pushed by Robinson out into the covers. Well, safe save to field and there's no run. Yes, I mean, geographically, obviously, North Africa can say, OK, well, um, obviously, reasonably close to Leicester in one direction, but the relationship that North Africa have with Cricket East, which is predominantly Bedfordshire, Hunts, Cams, um, into North Buckinghamshire as well, um, that should you would think yeah, in their favour. they would say and, and they have said indeed that they want to be a hub for women's cricket professional cricket in in that area here's Tremaine just pushing Proctor back at long off and opens the face Robinson runs it down towards third man and he's away with a single 419 for eight now Sussex and the other thing is um, as we were touching on earlier on Northampton do have these plans for a second ground and one of the at, uh, at Moulton, just outside Northampton, they've ag agreed a 125-year lease for the land with West Northamptonshire Council. And well, Sussex have got a second ground, of course, at yeah, Blackstone, not course, too yeah. far away from here. It's not. Um, I, I'm not sure how much development there could be of the facilities that are there already, which are perfectly fine. They play a lot of second-team cricket there. There has been there has been a lot of age-group cricket played there and women's cricket. Um, but predominantly he would be based at Hove. Yeah, here's Tremaine in bowls short and Carson ducks underneath it, goes to, through to Lewis McManus. Yes, the idea of a, of a sort of a dedicated set of changing rooms for women's cricket over the, the, is it the northeast corner of the ground over to our right. It's, it's a smashing location for it, isn't it? And I mean, Northamptonshire also has spent a lot of money, about a million pounds on new changing rooms part of which, although they are used by the, the men's teams as well, but part of it is to have facilities that, that can be used for, for women's cricket. They've got uh, uh, another women's ODI this uh, international match this year. Here's Tremaine in bowl short again. <laughs> Jack Carson's asked, called a no ball. Yeah, I thought it might be by the umpire. It's probably it, you can see what the tactic is, but if you overdo it, then that's what happens. 421 for eight. Carson stays on 47. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. The it's 18th, I think, 18th. 18th, April. yeah, week on Thursday, I think, is the is D Day, which will be very, very interesting. And, um, yes, yeah, somebody's going to be disappointed, aren't they? Or a few, quite a few people are going to be disappointed. Here's Tremaine in, nudged away in the onside by Carson, sensible bit of cricket and they come through for a single. Okay. Tremaine has to do the fielding himself, not least because there are no fielders within about 30, 40 yards of him. One more onto the total, 422 for eight. I wonder if there's any sort of appeals procedure if, for the counties yes. who don't get uh, a chosen. Um, or I, might, I would be surprised if there was. But or might they decide in, in view of if, if the bids are very strong that, that they could perhaps squeeze another one out, I don't know, eight, eight, no, eight, why not ten? Yeah. Um, there's, I mean, given the growth of, of women and girls cricket right across the country, and, and certainly I'm sure it's the same as in Sussex as it is in, back home in Northamptonshire, and all, you know, the participation numbers are, are certainly very, very much higher. Whether that might uh, feed into the decision, we shall see. Anyway, uh, Ollie Robinson goes 
for the little reverse flick over the head of the keeper doesn't make contact and that is I think no I was going to say I, th I saw Jack Carson marching towards the pavilion I thought they surely they're not going to declare at this stage they're not the Sussex 12th man's coming out with uh, I think a, maybe a new helmet or new gloves possibly a drink so conversation between captain and vice captain for Northamptonshire Proctor and McManus having a natter 422 for 8 it is 92 overs have been bowled so still 18 overs available from which bonus points can be achieved Sussex need another 28 runs to get maximum batting points which will be a terrific start to the season Northamptonshire need one more wicket for the maximum bowling points one more over and I think Adrian come back in and join Bruce and it is a change of bowling Bruce called that one absolutely spot on and that it was going to be the end of Sanderson and Michael Finan who we were talking about earlier has had well a challenging debut is probably the, the best expression I can think of at the moment. Five overs for 44. Left arm seamer bowling down the hill from the Cromwell Road end and he's in bowls and that's lovely shot from Carson just opening the face and running it down to Emilio Gay at third man for a single. Carson to 48 and Sussex to 4.23 for eight. Fine and Joining Northamptonshire on a, a short-term deal from Leicestershire. But he's a Lancastrian by birth, born in Tameside. Played for Lancashire age group sides and impressed John Sadler when he bowled at uh, Trent Bridge last week. And I beg your pardon, it's... Uh, Adrian's coming in place of Bruce. That's so, right. Uh, no, no, you, you and I are back together. Yeah, no, no, Bruce is going to come back in a minute and give right. you a breather for 20 minutes. OK. Here's Feynman and bowls, and that's driven straight back past the bowler by Ollie Robinson. They come through for a single. Robinson to two, 424 for eight. So we've got the switch around, and Bruce Talbot is going to come... Andrew's going to have a breather for 20 minutes, and uh, Bruce is going to come back in and join uh, myself on, on commentary. Uh, very good morning, uh, very good afternoon actually now, wherever you're listening from, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton, Adrian Harms, Bruce Talbot and Andrew Rad, your commentary team here, as in comes fine and downhill in lovely sunshine comes in on bowls and eased away by uh, Jack Carson who picks up his 50th run and gets a healthy round of applause from the crowd who are enjoying the, uh, the sunshine here. 50 of just 40 deliveries from Jack Carson coming in 53 minutes four fours and three sixes. It's been uh, quite the performance from uh, Jack Carson, who actually played and missed and very nearly got an edge to pretty much the first ball he received from Ben Sanderson. Um, but he's made the most of his... Um, of that. Well, it wasn't even a let-off because he didn't get a nick on it, but uh, he's a sort of hastened Sussex towards um, 450. And uh, hopefully, from a Sussex point of view, a fifth batting bonus point. Here comes Fine and left arm over the wicket bowls to Robinson, who's forward and plays that down the ground. Picks up a single as Ollie Robinson. The throw comes into the uh, strike as in Jack Carson was running to the danger end and managed to get home before uh, quite comfortably uh, in the end. 426 for eight. Carson 50, Robinson three. Uh, men out today. Danny Lamb for 41, Finn Hudson Prentice for 73. And when you think Sussex began the morning on 3.51 for 7, it means they've added 49 and 26, whatever that is, 75 um, in a little over an hour this morning. So it's been entertaining cricket as Finan races in. He's in and bowls, and Carlson is back and just eases that uh, into the offside. Picks up one. They're going to think about two. That, well, there wasn't two there, and a good bit of fielding in the end by. Uh, Justin Broad, who prevents that second run of being taken. And Robinson goes to uh, three. Sussex 4.27 uh, for eight. Robinson and Carlson have a little touch of the gloves. Uh, Bruce is back with us. It's been entertaining, this Bruce. I've enjoyed it this morning. It's been very, it's been very good. Isn't it? Carlson and... I mean, he can bat Jack Carlson. He's a handy man to come in at number nine. 
as in comes fine and running in down the hill, bowling the last ball of the over, and Ollie Robinson flicks that nicely down to uh, fine leg, where it's followed by Zaif Said. It's another single, so six singles uh, coming off of the over. Sussex 428 for eight. Robinson is on four. Carson is on 51. I was looking at Jack Carson's figures for last year. Bruce, 438 runs at 29.2. I mean, that, that, that's handy, isn't it, for it someone is, coming in yeah. to slow I down? Mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's a case for saying he should be batting higher up the order. Um, he's in, obviously in the team to bowl, but predominantly, but um, you, you, he's capable of batting at six or seven, absolutely. Uh, you've got three, you've got uh, Simpson, Lamb, Hudson, Prentice, and Carson, I think, who, all, who could probably all bat at number six in this team. As I say, live cricket here on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Uh, every ball of every match of every game right through the season here uh, on the BBC. And the next delivery is going to be bowled by uh, Chris Tremaine, who's on call, has been in touch from Sydney throughout the match. Uh, we were talking about the deluge out in that part of the world over the last couple of days, but thankfully seems to have relented. And, uh, maybe Chris is pleased that he's, he's here in England at the minute, here at Hove, where the sun is out and Tremaine makes his way up the hill. He's in and bowls, and Ollie Robinson, who's a tall man, ducks underneath a short delivery that didn't miss him by very much. And there is no run. You can contact us, sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk. You can tweet us at oldmanrad, R-A-D-D, or at BBC uh, Sussex Sport. And the objective here, unquestionably, Bruce, get these five batting bonus points. Get the five batting points, get the lead up to maybe, you know, 100, 120 if they can, and then um, have a dart at North Ants this afternoon. Tremaine is on his way. The field is widely spread. I'll give you that in a moment. Tremaine is in bowls to Robinson, who plays it on the straight back down the track. Tremaine feels of his own bowling, and there is no rub. We know Wally Robinson could bat. I mean, he had 100 on his debut for Sussex, and I... Uh, you know, I would say that he doesn't make the amount of runs he should do, really, Ollie Robinson. No, he's a bit skittish. He is. I think is the word. Great description. <laughs> yeah, great description. He, he's got the shot, certainly. Um, and if he's in the mood, he can be a very, very dangerous customer. You know, you get a Test 50 uh, as a bowler, you've got something about you. He averages 19 in first-class cricket. He's better than that. He's better than that, yeah, definitely. Much better. He should, his average should be in the mid-20s at least. Tremaine is in, bowls right over the wicket, and Robinson helps that one down towards it. In fact, I say helps, in fact, it's gone all the way for four runs. He timed it far better than I thought, did Ollie Robinson. And the ball sped away, backward of square on the leg side, and picks up a boundary, as if to illustrate the point. Robinson goes to eight, 432 for eight. That's a proper shot. You've got two fielders out there, probably within 10 to 12 yards of each other, and he's dissected the pair of them. That was a really, really top shot by Ollie Robinson. He just rolled his wrists, and... Uh, helped it on its way. Tremaine's probably in his last over as well, I would say. He's, he's put in a good stint today. He's bowled for over an hour. Hard work up the hill. Um, and he's got one wicket, so he's got some reward for his efforts. But uh, he looks to me like this might be his, um, his last over as well. Tall, strong Australian running in up the hill from the sea end to bowl to Ollie Robinson. He's in and bowls, and Robinson ducks underneath a short delivery that goes through to... Uh, Lewis McManus, who doesn't take the ball cleanly. Just good to see Ollie Robinson out there, really, Bruce. And I thought when he bowled in this game, it, 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 he seemed to be getting his rhythm more and more the more that he bowled. And he said that, and he? he needs to play cricket. He needs to play, and he needs to play next week at Leicester. Maybe then give him a rest for the Gloucester game. I think the idea is, is, is for him to play f five of the first seven championship matches. Um, so, yeah, there's no, I don't think there's any, any point in him bowling and playing in this game and then not playing next week. I think you've, he's got to I build agree. the overs, get overs under his belt and, um, and just build up his, his fitness and his skill levels. Tremaine is in, bowls, and Robinson steps to the leg side and clumps the ball to short extra cover and there is no run. That was a slightly ungainly shot from Ollie Robinson. There is no run. But, but also, Bruce, he'll want to play because he's only got a year on this central contract. Um, and there are people snapping at his heels. We were saying earlier in the match, you know, Matty Potts. Um, Gus Atkinson. Gus Atkinson. Is that, um, Josh Tung. Tung, yeah. Now, all these guys are snapping at Robinson's heels. And if he doesn't take wickets or he doesn't bowl, that central contract is going to be... In well, he won't have it. <laughs> Tremaine in bowls. Ollie Robinson again steps away to the leg side and just eases that one down to... 
Um, a widish third man and picks up a single does Ollie Robertson. He's going to pinch the strike. He goes to nine for 33 for eight. Carson on 51. Jaden Seals is batting prowess. Do you know much about that? I don't know much about it. I've not seen him bat. Let's look at his, uh, see if we can find Jaden's numbers. Um, he averages 6.76 right. with the bat, so it doesn't sound as if he's great. Uh, he bowled very well, didn't he's, he? He's in his rightful position in the order. It sounds like it. But I thought he bowled really well. And I, I think it's a good option for Sussex this season. Yeah, he did, he did bowl well, very skillfully, I thought. Um, again, I'm not sure how much experience of the Kookaburra ball he's got, but um, yeah, it was a good, a good first, uh, you know, a good debut. I couldn't believe on when was it Friday or Saturday he was fielding in a short-sleeved. He was shirt. He was. Yeah. <laughs> Spoke to him after the first day, and uh, a, a very amiable. Feller he was. What, what, what do you make of this use of the Kookaburra ball, Bruce? Well, I think you've, I think it's good to have some variety, uh, um, and, and and there's no point in doing it one week and then moving to the duke. You've got to give it a couple of rounds of um, of, uh, of matches, and there'll be teams obviously because of all the bad weather we've had in this first round who won't have picked up, won't have used it yet. So um, I think it's good to to. Um, for it to be, you know, being used again next week, the players will have got a bit more used to it. Um, it's good for spinners, I think. They were talking about uh, Rob Keogh and um, James Coles were talking about how nice it feels in the hand. In comes Michael Finan running in down the hill. Bowls to Robinson, who hammers that one away. Uh, straight down the ground, over the head of mid-off. Is it going to run away for four runs? I think it's just literally been pulled up inside the ropes. That's a very good bit of fielding way down in the distance at the Cromwell Road in. But Ollie Robinson opening his shoulders, drilling the ball down the ground. He goes to 11 and Sussex to 4.35 for eight. Radder just looking at the radar, the rain radar. I think it's all going to push to the west of us. I think we might get away with it. Mm. We might get our full allocation in today. Uh, we had an email in from David McDonald. Hello, David. Lovely to hear from you over in East Preston, um, which is on the outskirts of Brighton as incomes fine and bold, and that's wide of the off stump, and it will be signalled as such. Finan looks disappointed. Ollie Robinson sort of glares at Michael Finan. Very much on the outskirts of Brighton, East Preston. It's probably on this nearer Chichester than it is to Brighton. But he just says, um, wanted to thank you for the commentary. I'm confined to base, having had a full knee replacement on Thursday. Ooh. The result of 45 seasons of playing hockey. And I'm enjoying watching the match on my iPad, listening to the commentary, and hoping Sussex make their way to 4:50. Full knee replacement. Well, I mean, I saw you doing your knee strengthening exercises, Adrian. You might be next on the list. <laughs> in comes fine and bowls to Robinson, who clubs that one away on the offside and picks up a single. He goes to 12. Yeah, 4.39 to 6. That's too much football, too much cricket, Bruce. Well, y you... Um you, you moved into the little booth next to us and uh, I was sitting in the press room and I uh, saw these sort of movements of, oh, I thought you were doing some yoga initially. <laughs> yeah, a bit of Pilates, Bruce. Pilates, well, yeah. yeah. You know, when you get to our, you know, our veteran stage <laughs> of life, I Adrian, know. you have to uh, look after yourself. No play at all at Durham, uh, Radditch is pointing out, so that's oh. the second game that's been abandoned without a ball bowled. Finding is on his way. Lovely sunshine here at home. Over the wicket bowls and Carlson eases that one down to third man. It's fielded by Milio Gay, but Carlson picks up another run. He goes to 52. Uh, 438 for eight. Our oh, Sussex, 12 more runs needed for this fifth batting bonus point. Well, I, we, I mean, this is it's very arbitrary because you just don't know, obviously, with the weather. But, you, you, you know, you've got these first two rounds of fixtures, games at Durham, Old Trafford, Headingley, Derbyshire, the four, uh, four of the, well, the four probably the most northerly counties and hardly any cricket played at any, in any of them, um, which to me doesn't make a lot of sense, but I don't mm. plan the fixtures and I'm sure that's a very, very difficult job. In comes Fine and bowls to Robinson and the ball hits the stumps at the non-striker's end and Sussex rather cheekily take a single and in fact the stumps have been demolished at the far end. Robinson goes through for a single, he goes to 13, the total to 4.39 for 8. I'm just wondering next week, Bruce, with all the rain that's been around the north of England, Sussex up to Leicester. Um, I, Just, I think it's how, how well the group, I mean, how the, well it the group drains, yeah, yeah. Uh, the for, for, forecast for next week, actually, it's not too, it's bad. Not too yeah, bad, yeah. I think you might be okay up there, we'll get something. Um, but 
yeah, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? We were, you, you know, we've had this conversation. I know you two have as well about starting. You know, again yesterday we lose seven point four oh. overs at the end, which we could easily have bowled in the first half hour when it was absolutely glorious. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Finding in bowls and Castle with the player and miss outside the off stump. There is no run. I was interested Especially though. Especially no floodlights. Yeah, so no floodlights here at Hove this year. And in fact, John Philby, the Sussex chair, was with us yesterday. And thank you, everybody, for your messages when John came in. And thanks again to John for taking the time to come up. But he was saying how frustrated he was they couldn't have a half ten start. And that he's a member of a sixth county committee who sort of, you know, look at this sort of thing and make recommendations. And, you know, I, I would have thought that would go through almost on the nod, really. You, you would have thought Why so. Why wouldn't you start you at half past ten? Players want to play, you know. We want to watch. Spectators want to watch. Finan is in. Bowls and Carlson is back and he hammers that one down the ground to long off. He'll pick up one. They're going to come back for two. That's good running by Ollie Robinson, actually, who's running to the, uh, the non-strikers end and the danger end. And Carlson goes to 54. 4.41 for eight. Our oh, Sussex at the end of Finan's over. He has bowled. Ouch. Seven overs, no maidens. Naught for 58. Yeah. And he's taking a bit of tap as Michael Fine, and he wanders away to his uh, fielding position. So the sun is out, and you know the the suggestion from and actually looking out to the west, where the weather's coming from, it, it does. Looks I mean, fine, yeah. it does look it does look fine. Um, there's not a huge crowd here today. I think a lot of people who may have been tempted have been deterred by the rail strikes in this part of the world. And Mondays is and Mondays is difficult. Hard sell, isn't it? Yeah, and we spoke to John Philby about this yesterday actually, and was saying that. You know, someone got in touch on email and said, does that affect corporate hospitality? Because people don't want to come on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, I'm not sure people... There's no and and they probably don't want to on a Monday either. Well, there's not a massive take-up of corporate hospitality for championship games full stop. But if you start on a Friday, that's probably a tempting day. Yeah, it's I difficult. agree. You know, you say, oh, let's just play Thursday because we don't come Monday. Let's play Thursday, Friday. You've still got two weekend days. Well, in theory, you have. But if a game finishes in three days, there's nothing on a Sunday, which... You know, you, it's it, it's it's difficult. Very, and I wouldn't want to f plan the fixtures. You know, we just talked about geographical locations for these first round of games. It, it's it's very very hard. We've got a change of bowling, and uh, as they say, is going to come in to the attack. Nineteen oh, sorry, thirteen overs, one maiden, three for sixty one. He picked up a couple of wickets yesterday from deliveries that perhaps didn't deserve wickets. And it's not being unkind in any way, but it was a. Um, a rank long hop. Sydney. Yeah, that James Full Cole toss. smacked a <laughs> mid hop. And then Tom Haynes, similarly out, in comes a bowls to Robinson, who hits that straight to short extra cover and looks exasperated because a yard either side, he would have probably got a boundary, Ollie Robinson, but he remains on 50, no, he remains on 13. Zabe is in, bowls to Robinson, who uses his feet, clips the ball down the ground. That's intelligent cricket by Ollie Robinson, and it very nearly resulted in a couple of runs. He deliberately played it with soft hands, set off very quickly. But eventually, the, uh, it was uh, Karen Nair who came in very quickly to field and just prevented anything more than a single. Bruce is with us for another couple of minutes as in comes... Zabe again, clipped into the onside by Carson. Sussex going very steadily towards this uh, fifth batting bonus point. 4.43 for eight. Carson to 55. Zabe does rattle through his overs. In fact, now Northamptonshire are bringing in Nair, who's coming into uh, mid-wicket to save the single. And he switched ends because he bowled from the top end yesterday. So it's yes, he did. It was a, a much bigger boundary to defend. On the leg side, uh, Robinson just steps back in his crease and mistimes that down to log on, but he's going to pick up a single fielded down in front of us by George Bartlett, who we're very pleased to see on the field. He got clonked on the helmet yesterday at Shoreleg, where it made a horrible sound, didn't it? Horrible, yeah. Um, but I'm <laughs> glad to see that he's okay. Zabin again bowls, and forward comes Carson, plays down the onside of the track, and there is no run. One more ball left in the over. 444 for 8 are Sussex in reply to North Hans 371 as Abin again bowls and well bowled pulls to Carson who just plays that to mid wicket and there is no run so the end of the over could you do one more over Bruce and then we'll have you got to go okay. one more and then Bruce let's talk about division 2 we've discussed it a little bit this this week I mean I reckon you can make a case I think you can make a case for any of the eight counties 
getting promoted from this division. I think it's going to be a really interesting season. Yeah, I don't think it's going to quite be the cakewalk that everyone assumes it will be for Yorkshire, but uh, obviously they're, they're very strong in batting. They're, they've got their seam attack fit again. Uh, they should they should be there or thereabouts, but there's so many factors. I mean, you know, this week obviously Yorkshire and Leicestershire will hardly pick up any points because there's been no very little play at Headingley, whereas here, you know, Sussex might walk away with um, 15 points, which will probably put them top of the table. Mm -hmm. uh, Middlesex, uh, uh, I'm not sure that they'll they'll um, that they they've got enough. Uh, Glamorgan had a really good season last year. Can they repeat it? I'm not so sure. Fine and in bowls. Robinson hammers that down the ground to Long Old and picks up a single. He goes to 16, 445 for eight. I think Sussex will be up there. Hmm. Um, I think there's, they've got genuine promotion chance. So, so, so I think of North Ants, who probably a lot of people haven't really considered, um, but they were Division One county last year. Talking of Middlesex. Um, they're 518 for six at Lords. Only nine wickets have fallen in the match. Uh, Ryan Higgins not out, 158. Uh, that game is heading to a draw. In comes Vine and Bowles. And Carson's going to get four very fortunate runs. Had there been anyone in the slips, he would have probably been on his way. But it's a big, thick outside edge. The ball comes down to third man literally in front of us. Jack Carson goes to 59. He won't worry about that. And Sussex now just need one more run to pick up their fifth Batting bonus point, 449 uh, for eight. That does sound like a bit of a road at Lords, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, very difficult for groundsmen, I'm sure, all around the country, just trying to get wickets prepared. Um, ben Gibson was saying here, when I went out on the first morning, that it's been a really difficult yeah. winter. It has been constant rains, really, since Christmas, hasn't it? January, February, March, been very, very wet. Obviously, at Lords, you've got fantastic drainage system. You've got the cover, that they, you know, that... Um, it, cover that's not sort of rolled on rolled off it's a motorized cover and it covers not only the um pitch but the the um the, the run-ups as well are very hard i mean i know there were complaints yesterday uh you know people wondering why there wasn't any play at old trafford because it was too windy to get the sheets off i mean you know in a gale force wind if you're on the end of a sheet covering it and that <laughs> picked up the wind you're going as well as the sheet i mean it's very very hard for grand start fine and in bowls to castle who plays it on the offside and there we are that's the fifth batting bonus point for Sussex so five batting two bowling points as far as Sussex are concerned if the game is drawn which seems you know that that, that that's the most likely outcome here Sussex will move on to Leicester next week with 15 points already in the bag eight points for the draw back this year is that a good thing Bruce yeah I think so yeah um Again, it's going to take a while before you know for the season to settle down and and and, and the teams to find their best selections, their best form pitches to settle down. Then we'll go back to the Duke's ball. Will that make a difference? Um, Finding in bowls to Robinson, who's sort of down almost on bended knee and plays that one down to deep backward point. Picks up a single. He goes to 17 for 51 for eight. Interesting summer ahead, as always, Adrian. It is. One more ball to go, Bruce, and then we'll... No, two more balls to go, then we'll let you go. Uh, Phil pennicott has been in touch. He says, good afternoon, Adrian and Bruce. I heard the chairman mention yesterday about big money being spent on the scoreboard. Can you enlighten us on what the new board is like? Well, Andrew and I were waxing lyrical about the scoreboard, because I think pretty much... I mean, it looks similar, um, but there's just lots of useful information on there. Did you notice it was a new scoreboard? I didn't, to be well, honest. It I, is. I, I, well, that is a, it doesn't look any different to the old one to me, I have to say. But um, <laughs> Now, I think th th there are some... Um, as long as it's up to date and it doesn't, the, the screen doesn't go blank, I don't really care. Um, there's plenty of ways of finding out the score, isn't there? I but think what had happened was that the... I got a note through. I think the, the old scoreboard, and I'll find the note, um, the, the contract with the people who maintained it, I think had run out, Bruce. Right. Um, and so they had to do something about a new scoreboard, which I think the chairman said cost 80 grand. Was that right? I forgot what he said yesterday. Yeah, it would be, yeah. In comes uh, Fine and Bowles, and Carson plays an orthodox shot into the offside, and there is no run. Perhaps when I'm off commentary and we're back with Radders, he can talk you through Radders and I scoring Sussex v Northamptonshire matches together. Oh! In the Caribbean in 2001? 2001. You two were out in the Caribbean. Grenada. We were, yeah. He, he'll tell you more about it. But it was a, we were scorers, PA announcers, <laughs> um, journalists, 
we, we did it. We did everything in that. We didn't actually operate the scoreboard, which was one of the old-fashioned ones, wasn't it, Radders? But yeah. In comes fine and bowls, cast and defends into the offside, no run. So the old scoreboard had to be upgraded. We had no choice but to invest. It had become obsolete, and the company who operate the technology strongly advised it had to be upgraded this season. It was at risk of dying mid-season. So there we are, 4.51 for eight. Uh, Bruce uh, Talbot is going to leave us. I didn't ask the question to Bruce. Um, about his football club, which is Birmingham City. And uh, the media boys were wondering whether they might be playing League One football next year, which is a bit unkind, isn't it? That's really unkind. Thank you, Bruce. Lovely to have Bruce with us on commentary. And uh, you, 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 you could tell us all about the trip to Grenada in a moment. But... Um, you're listening to live cricket on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Adrian Harms, Andrew Rad back with us and Bruce Talbot this morning. I have to say, for those of you who have endured some pretty miserable weather, like you know, particularly at Derby and Durham over the last four days, we have been extremely lucky. And I don't want to rub it in, um, but it's oh, go on. But it's a <laughs> it's a glorious day. I mean, the forecast is not great for later in the day, but at the minute, we'll, we'll, we'll live with this lovely blue skies. And it is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? And uh, I didn't expect this, actually. No. I, I thought we may be sort of scurrying off for rain now. That's what the forecast was suggesting. Well, there's a few few spectators just maybe just drifting in, but as you say, the travel problems making it quite problematic today. Here's Save Save starting a fresh over. Reverse sweep comes out from Ollie Robinson, but just picks out the man at backward point. And there's no run. 451 for eight. So Sussex batting on Northamptonshire still looking for one more wicket to get another bowling point driven by Robinson this time up to long off in fact, it's intercepted before it gets there by Luke Proctor so they just come through for a single 452 for eight Robinson to 18 off 22 balls so he's playing a useful hand for his side as well is Zabin bowls and that's cut away by Jack Carson out to deep cover for a single. Carson to 61, 453 for eight. We'll talk a little bit about Sussex, Northamptonshire and Grenada in a, in a second. Safe save does get through his overs very quickly. It's a shorter ball. It's slightly quicker and he's going to get a wicket, I think. He's going to be caught. Oh, it's straight through the hands. And it's gone for four. It was driven out to long off and the fielder there... Herring round Chris Tremaine, who took a very good catch earlier. In the end, he wasn't quite there. He had to dive for it, and he couldn't hang on, and it just rolled over the rope for four. So it's been that sort of morning for Northamptonshire. 4.57 for eight. Robinson to 22. Here's Zabin again, driven again by Robinson. This time he's just going to get a single up to Chris Tremaine. On the long off boundary, 23 to him, 4.58 for eight. Sorry, Adrian. No, I was just going to say, having got there, uh, he should have had Mr. Main, I, yeah. th I think he'd be disappointed he didn't hold on there. Yeah, I would agree. But uh, here's Zabin again, bowls, and he's bowled him all over the place. Carson going for a big heave over the leg side. So, without but you've got another bowling point. A little bit of justice done as far as save saves concerned. This is fourth wicket of the innings. Mm. And Sussex are 4.58 for nine. And Safe Zabe has got now four for 71 in 15 overs. That's the end of the over. I wondered if they might at this stage decide to pull out and give Northamptonshire a potentially nasty little session before lunch. But um, no, Jaden Sales is going to come out and show us what he's got. Yeah. So just looking this morning, Sussex have added uh, 49 plus 15. D3, is that right? They did 102 this morning. I did 107. 107, 107 runs this morning. Yeah, which is... So they've certainly stepped on the accelerator, largely due to Hudson Prentice, who made 73, and Jack Carson, as you're saying, 61 in just 55 uh, balls. So, you know, it's like we very much look like we're heading for a draw here, but, a, you know, Sussex, if they get... Yeah, not out of... No, I said there's still, there's still some cricket, and I know, talking, you know, to North Aperture camp last night, they were just, you know, slightly, I say, worried, but they were just conscious of the fact that yeah. they might have to bat 
facing a deficit if if mm. Sussex have a good morning, which they have had pretty much. And you know, there's still a bit of work to do, especially if we as I say if we do get a full day's play, which. Well, if, if Bruce says it's it's going to going to get a full day's play, then I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't no, dream well, of arguing with uh, no, I with, agree with Bruce. Uh, that was the end of the over. Yes, Northamptonshire and Sussex both found themselves in Grenada in 2001 pre-season. I was out there with Northamptonshire. Bruce was out there with Sussex, but they had no scorers, um, and they played a number of matches against teams from Grenada and so on. Including was this pre-season, the, including yes, including the Prime Minister's eleven. Keith Mitchell was Prime Minister. Of, Grenada for a number of years. He, he had his team, he actually played himself. Um, and so we finished up um, being roped in as scorers and we were trying to sort of hype it up a little bit and the drink out there being Carib beer. So we coined it the Carib Cup, this time it's personal. <laughs> um, and Nick Cook finished up having to go out an umpire. So it was all done sort of in-house, but it was good fun, it was a good trip. He comes Michael Fyder running in down the hill from the Cromwell Road in bowls to Ollie Robbins who clubs that down the ground to deep mid-wicket or sort of wide-ish mid on and picks up another single. He goes to 25, 460 for nine. I've been to Grenada, but not, I, I did go to the cricket ground, but there was no cricket on it. And it's pretty much on the on the front, though. That, that's yes, what it was. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, it was. Oh, no, it, I, I'd never been before. In fact, it's the only time I've been to the Caribbean, but it was, uh, it was an enjoyable trip. Um, Alan Lamb was out there for, for a a little while and uh, a good time was had some, some useful cricket as well we actually managed to I don't think we lost any cricket at all we played five or six games Finan is in and bowls and Jaden Sills who's a left hander when he bats a right arm bowler and he gets his first run in Sussex colours so well done Jaden and takes the score to 460 for nine one of my abiding memories of that trip was uh, Lesroy Weeks, who was on North Hampshire staff then, former Yorkshire bowler, uh, from Montserrat. And there was a problem with his passport, um, and he was due to go on the tour. Um, Bob Carter, who was then um, director of cricket, had got him down to go on the, the trip, but, but um, he couldn't go, unfortunately. Five minutes, bowls to Robbins, who drives firmly down the ground, picks up a single to look off. The field is widely spread. In fact, there isn't anybody, or there isn't anyone for Robinson, saving a single for 61 for nine. Um, and so they had to look for a, a replacement, and um, we finished off, finished up pulling off the M1 on, in, the, uh, in the bus, heading down to the airport. Um, at Luton to pick up one Monty Panasar, oh, right. who then hadn't played first-class cricket for Northamptonshire and came on the tour, and the rest as they say. Fine, in, in the bowls to Seals, who hammers that one away. Nothing wrong with that from Jaden Seals. That's going to go for four runs. Drove right through the line of the ball. The ball disappears over Midon, who had to come up to save the single. And Seals goes to five, Sussex to 465 for nine. I'm getting the blame for costing the club 80 grand. Go on then. Because last <laughs> season I kept on saying I couldn't see the scoreboard clearly <laughs> enough. And Gary Knight has been in touch. He says, good afternoon, Adrian. On the subject of the new scoreboard, having been at the ground on Saturday, I don't actually think many changes have been made to the content on display. I think the main change is that the figures are easier to read when the sun shines directly on it. I understand a specific request for the improvement was made by Mr. A. Harms, so I hope he thinks the 80 grand was fully justified. In comes Fine and Bowles, and Seals is looking to club that one away in the same direction. He doesn't make contact, the ball goes through to McManus, and there is no run. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, um, 80 grand, that's a lot of money for a scoreboard, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the numbers are more. I mean, a few times last year, I thought I was going slightly mad, and my eyesight was going because it was difficult to make out the numbers. But th this year, um, they do seem to be clearer. I think it just proves the uh, the power that you uh, that you wield in these these parts, Adrian. It's uh, <laughs> clearly um, whatever harm says goes. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Sussex. In comes Finan and, and Bowles and Seals places firmly into the offside. There is no run. It's worth mentioning the lead here at this stage, which is uh, approaching. 100? What are we? 94. Four, four, yeah, 465 for nine at the end of the over from Michael Fine and nine overs, no maidens, naught for 72. Hasn't been his match. Um, but in fairness to him, the Sussex have really looked to get after the bowling really since about tea time yesterday. Uh, the wind has got up a little. You can see the Northamptonshire flag is billowing away on the clock tower scoreboard 
away to our uh, right hand side. It, it, actually, with regards to the weather, there is some darker cloud drifting in from the southwest, which I think is where the weather uh, is coming from. So we will keep an eye on that. Um, but uh, I think we have been very lucky here, as you say, considering elsewhere has uh, been far less fortunate than us. Save, save. Starting another over, looking for a, a five-wicket haul. Reverse sweep for four by Ollie Robinson. <laughs> Donchelant. Played that yes, with, a, with a minimum of effort. Maximum of effect. 29 to Robinson. 469 now for nine. So the lead goes up to 98. Um just retrieving the ball. I think it may have just hopped over the, the boundary rope into the seating. So an obliging gentleman has uh, thrown the ball back. Still a very defensive field, understandably, from Northamptonshire. Five men out. As Zabe comes in, Bowles repeats the stroke. Ollie Robinson. This time he's only going to get two. We might be running out here. Well, there should really only have been one, to be honest. But uh, it's not the speediest piece of fielding I've ever seen down in the outfield but anyway they've picked up a couple of runs takes Robinson to 31 and that's a hundred lead now for Sussex 471 for nine Zabin again round the wicket bowls to Robinson who drives back past the bowler George Bartlett at long on comes into field keeps it to a single takes Robinson to 31 472 for nine Yes, thank you, Sarah. It's been a good morning for Sussex and an entertaining one at that. They're 471 for nine, which means they lead by exactly 100 runs. Ollie Robinson is on 31. Jaden Seals is on five. Earlier, Jack Carson made 61 and Finn Hunson Prentice 73 as Sussex look to press home their advantage. It looks like we're heading for a draw in this game, but Sussex have certainly made it entertaining today as Jaden Seals hits a huge six over the pavilion, so he's getting in on the act as well. Sussex now 478 for nine. Meanwhile, down at Canterbury, uh, Kent have lost a couple of early wickets. Both Moyeyi and Compton are out. Kent 42 for two in their second inning, still trailing Somerset by 77. And I'm afraid no play so far today up at Old Trafford. Surrey 15 without loss if they do get underway. And in fact, I can report that it looks like Sussex have declared on 478 for nine. That's a lead of 107. And we'll get a resumption here and see how things go this afternoon. Yep, indeed, it is the declaration. 478 for nine. So Sussex have a lead of 107. My goodness, that was a big hit from Jaden Seals. That went a long way. It did, didn't it? So 478 for nine. They've declared in the 100th over. And that is a very, very good morning for, or part of the morning so far for Sussex, who've added 127 runs this morning. Uh, for the loss of just the three wickets. Ollie Robinson finishing 32 not out off 29 balls with uh, three fours. And Jaden Seals, with the aid of that enormous blow over the pavilion, not out 11 from five balls. Sussex 478 for nine declared. And as I say, the declaration coming in the 100th over, 99.4 to be precise. For those who like to keep their scorecards up to date, there were 26 extras comprising two leg buys, six wides and 18 no balls. So nine no balls bowled by North Amplitude, which is not great. The principal culprit being Chris Tremaine, who bowled five to each for Sanderson and Fine. And so the bowling figures, Ben Sanderson, 22 overs, four maidens, two for 92. Michael Finan, nine overs, no maidens, naught for 72. Bit of a chastening start to his North Aperture career. Chris Tremaine, 19 overs, one maiden, one for 88. Then the spinners, Rob Keogh, 26 overs, one maiden, two for 95. We didn't see Rob Keogh bowl this morning. Safe Zabe, 15 overs and four balls, one maiden, four for 84. His best championship figures for eight years. Luke Proctor, six overs, one maiden, no wicket for 25. And last but not least, Justin Broad bowled a couple of overs last night, two overs for 20. So, 478 for nine 
declared. Sussex, they have a lead of 107. There are, I just want to work out how many overs left in the day, and of course the relevant information has now disappeared yes, off the scoreboard. Which is irritating. Well, we have some, uh, some adverts, but that's fine. Um, we'll work it out for you later. It would be around about 80 overs, probably 82 overs, something like that, in the day, but we'll confirm that, obviously. The heavy roller is going up and down at the moment, and yeah, the clouds just filling in a little bit. I wouldn't say it's it's particularly threatening. The, the light may be an issue later, as we've seen that on all the day's play so far. I'll just quickly canter through, uh, and you'll have heard it, obviously, with Adrian doing his update there for uh, his listeners in this part of the world, but just to update you uh, with what's happening right across the county championship in Division 1 at Chesterley Street, abandoned without a ball bowl, Durham against Hampshire. Did notice, incidentally, Adrian, that... Um, uh, Rob White, old chum of ours from Northamptonshire, uh, he's uh, he was up there for four days as one of the umpires and oh, uh, there's nothing doing, so I'm um, quite sure how Rob would have amused himself anyway. Uh, Kent against Somerset at Canterbury, uh, as Adrian mentioned, Kent 42 for two, so still 77 behind and Somerset will be thinking if they could get a full day in that... that that game's not uh, not dead and buried yet. And certainly where that is geographically east of here, I think that's yeah. probably got most chance of keeping... Uh, Absolutely, uh, yeah. Uh, ...of not being under by the weather. Uh, at Trent Bridge, this is interesting. We said this could be a really interesting last day. Um, Essex declared at 374 for nine. That left Nottinghamshire needing 335 to win. And they are 35 for three. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Sam Cook has picked up two wickets. Jamie Porter's got the other. Hamid, Duckett and Slater all out. Joe Clark, who made 100 in the first innings, is unbeaten on 15. But there's a bit left in that one. Again, if they can get a full day. Uh, still no play today at Old Trafford between Lancashire and Surrey or at Edgbaston between Warwickshire and Worcestershire. In Division 2, as we mentioned earlier, Derbyshire against Gloucestershire abandoned without a ball bowled. Middlesex now 530 for seven against Glamorgan at Lords. Ryan Higgins 161 not out. Uh, Middlesex, of course, will be Northamptonshire's opponents at Wantage Road starting on Friday. So there's still 90 runs behind. And uh, no play so far at Headingley today between Yorkshire and Leicestershire. Yorkshire still 72 for two, replying to Leicestershire's 354 all out. So that's where we are across the country. Uh, lunch today will be back at normal time today, aren't we? At one o'clock, I think. Yes, so, we are on the last day. Yeah. So I think North Amplitude are going to have about a quarter of an hour, so three, four overs maybe, if unless I, unless maybe they they think well, okay, let's let's give the spinners an early roll. Hmm. But uh, well, I, I, I'm pleased Sussex have declared, and I think it's as much about. Um, the Paul Farbrace way, I mean, I'm not advocating for one minute, it's Baz ball or anything like that, but, y you know, I, I think Paul Farbrace likes to play attacking cricket. Um, the feeling in Division 2 this year is if he can get promoted, that, that draws aren't going to be enough and he's going to have to win some games. And I think, you know, Farbrace is probably thinking, well, the bowlers could do some overs in their legs. We, we don't want to over bowl them, but let's just see. There's an opportunity and, you know, it's very likely Northamptonshire will bat out here and we'll, we'll shake hands at five o'clock if we get that far. For a draw, but you never know with this no, game. Absolutely you just not. You never There's know. All, with all things possible. Um, we've uh, just had a few more messages in this morning, one of which I, I, I ought to mention. Um, our friend William C. at Fourth Slip um, has been on to me and saying how many catches have gone down now in the, north, in the field for Northamptonshire. Painful memories of last season. Well, yes, I mean, Northamptonshire dropped a, a ridiculous number of catches last year across all formats. It was one of the. Um, the big issues last season in, in red ball and white ball I think they worked out that something like 50 catches had gone down even before the end of May across wow. all, all competitions so it wasn't good uh, yeah a few went down in this innings one or two very hard ones one or two yeah I've got four yeah rather less so but um, anyway disappointing uh, Finbar also has been on uh, Finbar Carroll who's a great supporter of, uh, of cricket in and around uh, Northamptonshire and, and he was said much the same thing really thank you for comments about the commentary um, glad you're enjoying it but uh, yes he made the point that uh, Northampton, especially the bowling without Jack White he was saying does look a, 
a little bit thin. I was saying when I was on with Bruce that North Hampshire would dearly love to have Jack White back on the park. Obviously finished with 50 wickets last season, um, taking his 50th wicket with the last ball, the last wicket of the season, which was uh, in that Essex match when North Hampshire won in three days up at Wantage Road, but he's not fit at the moment. So the last I heard was that they were thinking it unlikely he would be fit for the Middlesex game, but um, fingers crossed, hopefully he might be Ricardo Vasconcelos, of course the opening batter is another one who's on the injured list at the moment, so uh, shin problem I, I gather. Oh dear. So uh, yeah, we'll see what uh, happens later in the week. I mean, other than that, in terms of seam bowling, North Hampshire haven't got too many other uh, things really to any other options uh, unless they look at one or two of the very young bowlers on the staff the likes of uh, Rafi Weatherall and uh, George Gowler gather George Weldon's not sadly not fit at the moment um, so there's not too many other options which are presumably is why they've gone for, for Michael Finan at this stage but um, yeah, we'll see what happens later in the week because North Hampton are at home to Middlesex and uh, you've got the delights of Grace Road. We have. Looking forward to, looking forward to the lunches. Well, l- uh, l- lunch in the meat. Yes. Um, Kaz Wadley has been in touch and she says, I'm in the so legal area to your right with my husband Jay and friend Ian. Jay and I have become members this year and really looking forward to a wonderful summer of cricket. Fingers crossed. Would it be possible for Ian and I to wander up and say hello? Well, if you want, if you're listening... Kaz, and you want to wander up uh, when the players go off for lunch at one o'clock, I'm, I'm very happy to uh, say hello. So if you're listening and you'd like to do that, then um, yes, you'd be very be delighted to, to say hello. Um, so, um, and I'm sorry I didn't read your email out earlier, I've only just got round to reading it. So thank you for getting in touch. The Sussex lads are coming out onto the field. Um, I would imagine that Jaden Seals and Ollie Robinson will take the new ball, and there's just a you know, an awkward sort of 13 minutes or so, three overs maybe? Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, yes, it is. Um, 75 overs remaining, not quite as many as I as I thought, but it's still, it's still a, a lot of cricket. 75 overs, Northampton are 107 behind. Uh, so, yeah, you never know if, if Sussex with a new ball, it's going to be Ollie Robinson's bowl from the Cromwell Road end, so down the hill. If they could nip a couple out early on, just spread a little bit of anxiety in the Northamptonshire dressing room. Obviously, Emilio Gay will be looking to get a few runs. Was out cheaply in the first innings, albeit caught behind down the leg side. Justin Broad will be opening with him. Luke Proctor played, I thought, really nicely in in the first innings. Karen Nair, likewise, once he'd got himself in. But... uh, well, there's plenty of... I think, what's the thing they say now? They're looking for players to make a statement. Yes. So they need, you know, not from North Hampshire's point of view, a couple of the batters to get in and just make sure that this is, if you like, boring would do North Hampshire very nicely here, wouldn't it? Just just finish, you know, 150 for two or something. Everybody's, you know, everybody up, up uh, on top of the... Indoor school where the North Hampshire team are changing will be very happy. From Sussex's point of view, they'll still think they could win this game. Well, you never know, do you? It's um, it certainly made it interesting. We didn't think this would ha- happen really with the, 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 the delays on the first and second days. In comes Robinson around the wicket, bowls to uh, Emilio Gay, who lets that go through outside the off stump taken by. Simpson and there is no run and there's you know someone bowling here we've mentioned we talked about Ollie Robinson a lot in this game um, as someone who needs to bowl Bruce Talbot was saying that not only does he need to bowl he needs to take wickets so he'll be fired up here Ollie Robinson and he's going to get sort of a double hit with the new ball isn't he probably a couple of overs before lunch and then you know maybe half a dozen overs after so yeah, I still think we're very much odds on the draw um, but you never know Robinson runs down the hill and bowls and Gay picks up a boundary too wide outside the off stump and Gay rather helped himself clubbing the ball away through backward point for four runs. Nice looking shot and uh, Northamptonshire are on the way. Well as I, as I did say in reply to one of our correspondents earlier in the match I think it was uh, asking me about the players I'm particularly excited about this year um, 
when Emilio Gay is, is in form and going as he did a beautiful 100 he made at um, Old Trafford last year against Lancashire then, well, I would be slightly biased but I don't think there are many better players to watch around the circuit In comes Robinson Bowles to Gay who's forward and plays the ball down the offside of the track and there is no run Northampton will be hoping also. I mean, he had a bit of knee trouble last year. He had to have a knee operation, um, having just noticed a problem when he was in Aust in uh, Australia. I think it was it was a sort of going down and wrenching. He j it was just one of the things he noticed that it wasn't quite right, and uh, they, he did need surgery at the start of the season. Missed the beginning of the championship campaign and as I say unfortunately then I think just felt he had to play catch up a little bit and um, just took a while to get into his stride in comes Robinson Bowles Gay lets that one go outside the off stump and there is no run but the innings up at uh, Old Trafford obviously against a, a high quality attack on the on the test pitch as well but that had just been used for the um, the, the rain ruined Ashes test that North Africa, that um, England looked as though they were going to win yeah yeah until it until it rained they, they played the, they had four days of cricket on it in the test match basically and then another four days on it against um, Northamptonshire and, and it was still playing pretty well it turned a bit but it was still playing pretty well after eight days Robinson in and bowls and he's dropped he's dropped at leg slip the man was there for the catch and the chance has gone down and it's Jack Carson who put a chance down in the first innings as well well it, it was difficult, it was low to his left, but he got his hands to it, and I think he'll be very disappointed he didn't cling on. Well, and particularly because they just put the man there yeah. for that purpose, yeah. and they saw the way Emilio Gay got out in the first innings, caught behind down the leg side, just going across a little bit and looking to glance the ball. He did exactly the same then, and Carson diving to his left couldn't hang on. Robinson again. In and bowls, and Gay is hit on the pad. There's a loud appeal. Robinson reckons he's got his man. But umpire says no. Hands on heads all around. Um, good opening over by Ollie Robinson. He should have had a wicket. And just been one or two little butterflies in the North Hands dressing room. But, uh, but Amelia Gay has survived Northamptonshire four without loss. Very testing start. I'm just looking at that. It was round the wicket. Yeah, hit him, I should think, around about middle and leg. Possibly the umpire just thinking it may have may have been sliding down, given the angle. But certainly worth a shout. Was, we've, uh, we've had an LBW in the match so far. Uh, well, just in broad uh, was our Good LBW, spot. wasn't he? Yeah, that's the um, only one, I think. And Clark. Oh, and Clark. Was so LBW too. Yeah, sorry. To so, Keo, so, so. so we've had two out. We haven't had many. Uh, his seals. Jaden Seals is going to proceed to uh, begin proceedings from this C end. Flushed with success with the bat earlier on this morning. Huge six in his brief innings, and he's bowling to Broad. First ball finds Broad just pushing forward out into the onside, and there's no run. But uh, as you would expect, given the match situation, an attacking field in there, four slips in, and. Sussex really looking to make inroads here. They could nip. They'd dearly love to get a wicket before lunch. They've just got about six, seven minutes by by my watch. The uh, clock on the pavilion showing 12:54, so six minutes to go. Here's seals in. Bowls to Broad outside the off stump. Broad leaves well alone. Goes through to. John Simpson, you can see, and probably here on the effects mic as well, the, the breeze is just ruffling the, the players' trousers. Very noticeable out there at the moment, and the flags over on the clock tower scoreboard to our right are fluttering in the breeze. But hopefully, if there's a bit of breeze, it might keep the rain away. There's nothing imminent as far as I can see on the uh, on the radar that I was just having a little look at so I think we're okay certainly for a bit his seals in bowls to Broad who plays that solidly enough into the ground it bounces up for Carson to field at fourth slip and there's no run I'm going to say considering what's been happening elsewhere around the country and some of the awful weather I have to say, this morning I was um, sitting having my breakfast in, in my hotel 
Adrian, and the bus stop, there's a bus stop directly outside the, uh, the hotel, and it was a coastliner bus that goes along the, uh, the, goes along the coast, yep. I suppose, not, not surprisingly. <laughs> Clues in the, in the name. Edged and caught! James Coles. That was Coles at second slip, and Justin Broad fending at that one. It was full. It was, wasn't, I wouldn't say it was a drive, it was more a push away from his body, took an outside edge, fairly regulation chance to the slip cordon, it's been accepted, and having just said, Sussex would dearly love a wicket before lunch, they've got one. Broad goes for naught, and Northamptonshire a four for one. Well, it's just what Sussex would have hoped for, having taken the, having declared, uh, um, whilst they'll be glad to have got that wicket, I mean, they'll be ruining the fact that it could have been two um, before lunch. Emilio Gay leaning on his back, put down by Jack Carson. That went very quickly to James Coles, who's got a good pair of hands, and um, it always looked like it was going to be taken. So Justin Broad, who battled away uh, in the first innings for 27, the second time in the match that Jaden Sills has got him out. Yeah, and I think I said second slip, it was third slip, in fact, but it was, it was well taken. But, yeah, it was just a little bit of a, a tentative push from, from Justin Broad. To be, to be fair, I say this is his, the first time he's opened the batting in a in a championship match, uh, and did well in the first innings, but has gone cheaply in the second. And now the captain, Luke Proctor, comes out to the middle again. Played really well in the first innings for 92, which is his highest score as Northamptonshire's captain. Had a, an unbeaten 87 last year, but uh, still like looking for his first hundred as captain. Dearly love to to do it here and they need Northamptonshire a, a Proctor-esque innings here just to hang on in there and make sure that it doesn't get too nervy later in the day. Four for one Northamptonshire still 103 behind and there are still 73 overs left after the one in progress. Better fine at the moment Sunshine as Seals comes in bowls the first ball to Proctor outside the off stump to the left-hander who leaves it alone. There are four slips in place. Yes, I was saying about the, the bus this morning and, and you just look at all the places that you think, actually, I'd really like to go there. And I, um, unfortunately, you never get much of a chance when you're just down here for no. to work. But uh, I was seeing the Bogner Regis there. I don't think I've ever been to Bogner. And, uh, okay. Well, it's... It, there's a great lover of Eric Coates' music. There's the plaque at Selsey, isn't there, with um, the, the the view over the uh, over to, to Bognor Regis. I'll come back on that in a second. Here's Seals in bowls to Proctor drives nicely, and they're going to get runs here as it goes through the gap at extra cover. A chase back for Ollie Robinson, who's having a little look to see if they were going to come for two, and they were, and they did so comfortably. So Proctor is off the mark, and... Six for one at the end of the over. Successful one for Jaden Seals. And there's still going to be room or time, I think, for one, certainly one more over. And Ollie Robinson is going to bowl it. He's already taken his cap off. Yes, there's a, there's a plaque at Selsey because um, the, the, one of the most famous pieces of Eric Coates' music, and I'm a, a huge Eric Coates fan, is... Uh, uh, by the Sleepy Lagoon, that's the music for Desert Island Discs. Ah. And everybody thinks, because of the association with Desert Island Discs, that it was inspired by some tropical paradise, but it was actually inspired by the view from Selsey to Bognor Regis. Oh, interesting. And there is a plaque at Selsey, and I haven't, I've never seen it, never actually sort of visited it, so I'd, I'd, uh, I'd rather, rather fancy having a look at that, but you never knew that there was so much... Uh, no. So much exotica I, connected with the Sussex coast. But, uh, <laughs> well, I certainly had no idea that that's where the theme from Desert Island Disc came. In comes uh, Ollie Robinson. Last over before lunch, bowls to Emilio Gay, who fiddles with one outside the off stump. Um, I think he might have even got a little touch on that, you know. And it, I think he went to James Coles at third slip on the bounce. The, uh, the other thing I, I noticed is Worthing, um, which again is a place I... I don't think I've ever been to, but uh, Northamptonshire were at the centre of quite an, an amusing story about playing at Worthing in 1949, which was Freddie Brown's first year as captain. Come on to that in a second. Robinson is back to his mark. 
And on his way down the hill in bright sunshine, bowls and gate covers up place to point there is no run. And Worthing Town Council complained that they'd been given Northamptonshire for the fixture, because I mean, Northamptonshire weren't obviously particularly good in those days, uh, or certainly hadn't been in previous years. And um, Sussex sort of had to say to them, well, you know, everyone else has had it. They played at Eastbourne in um, 46. Um, Horsham had them in 48. So, uh, you know, it's your turn. You've, you've got no choice. You've got to have them. And... Um, Bo Brown, who was a former North Aperture captain, who was living down here then. Robinson in bowls, and Gay's going to get four runs. That's a nice shot, punches the ball through the covers. His second boundary, he goes to eight, and Northamptonshire to ten for one. Wrote to the uh, secretary of Northamptonshire, and it's in the, the club archive, saying it didn't seem the best of taste for yeah. one county to describe another as though it was a smallpox epidemic. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've, everybody else has had it, you've got to have them this time. But the, um, the good news for Northamptonshire was that they actually won. They did beat Sussex that year under, under Freddie Brown in 49. So <laughs> they were sort of saying, Yabu sucks to Worthing, which I'm sure is a lovely place. Robinson in again, goals. And he's at it again, and he's going to get four more. This one time going through backward point. And with every run that Emilio Gay scores and the, the nearer Northamptonshire get to safety in the game, the worse for old Jack Carson will feel because... It was a difficult chance, but it was, you know, you're in there for exactly that shot from Gay. The chance went down, and Northampton should go to 14 for one. So, uh, yes, it was Northampton you've played, obviously, I suppose, over the years, I'm sure, at pretty much all of the, the regular outgrounds that, uh, that Sussex have, have used, Hastings and Horsham and Eastbourne and... I used to love the Arundel. Saf Arundel. I used to love the Saffrons. Yeah, my favourite ground. Yeah, there's, there's been, been some one day played there. In comes Robinson Bowles and Gay's at it again, but this time he doesn't quite time it. It's fielded in the covers by Hudson Prince. There's no run. Yeah, spent the whole went sort of took some holiday and, and went um, and watched the whole game there in 1980 before I was obviously covering Northamptonshire professionally, and uh, um, that was a game. I think Gear Mendes got a double hundred and. Okay. Uh, Sussex got an awful lot of runs and Northamptonshire lost eventually, I think, on the third day. It was Jim Watts' last, one of my cricketing heroes, one of, I think it was his last first-class game. But uh, beautiful ground, Eastbourne. Robinson in bowls, gaze forward, plays down the onside of the track. There is no run, and that is going to be lunch with Northamptonshire 14 for one. Proctor on two, Gay is on 12. Uh, in terms of overs left in the day, 72 left. The weather actually, well, I mean, all around us here, I hope, we've got blue sky, which is extraordinary given the weather forecast. So um, we are going to get some more cricket after lunch. Um, Sussex may rue the fact they've dropped a medio gay just before the lunch break off the bowling of Ollie Robinson. Um, but for now, uh, Andrew and I are going to have a little break with Northamptonshire needing to get to 107 after which they'll be in positive territory and uh, we'll see how they go after lunch. But thank you for listening, thank you for all your emails and we'll be back with you in about 35 minutes time.
Well, good afternoon. Welcome back to Hove, where we're about to get underway on the second session of the final day's play between Sussex and Northamptonshire in Division 2 of the County Championship. Um, Northamptonshire resuming on 14 for 1 in their second innings, having lost the wicket of Justin Broad in that awkward little session before the break. Caught at third slip off Jaden Seals for Nort. Emilio Gay is on 12. Luke Proctor is 2. So Northamptonshire still trail by 93 runs after Sussex declared earlier on 478 for 9. I'm Andrew Rad from BBC Radio Northampton. Adrian Harms will be joining me uh, in just a few moments. And the other thing to tell you is that the weather is not looking terribly friendly at the moment. Uh, it was beautiful this morning. We had bright sunshine, uh, just the sort of weather that you want at the start of the cricket season. Now I'm afraid it's rather, a rather more familiar picture, which is cloudy and possibility of some rain coming in in the not too distant future. The ground staff already hovering close to the covers down in front of us here but hopefully it may miss us it may skirt around the downs as uh, Bruce Tolbert was saying a little bit earlier so we'll carry on for uh, as long as we have cricket of course it's going to be Jaden Sales to continue decent figures so far one over one for two he's going to be bowling from the C end so up the hill to Luke Proctor, the North Aperture captain, who's on two, played really well in the first innings for 92. And just needs to steady the ship here after the early loss of Justin Broad. Three slips and a gully in place. And a leg gully as Seals comes in. First ball of the afternoon, bowls down the leg side to Proctor, who shapes to try and tickle it down to fine leg. Doesn't make contact. And it's taken by... John Simpson down the leg side. Breeze is getting up a little bit as well, which may or may not be good news. You can see the flags over to our right on the clock tower scoreboard. The Northamptonshire Tudor Rose and the Sussex Martlets fluttering away on top of the scoreboard. The lights already starting to be seen visibly in the Members' pavilion over to our left as well. So it's getting just a little bit gloomy. Here's Seals in. Bowls outside the off stump to Proctor once again. Left alone, but as we've been saying throughout the morning, whatever the weather has in store for us today, we've at least seen some, some good cricket over the last three and a bit days, which is more than can be said at Durham and also at Derby. In both cases, matches those matches abandoned without a ball bowl. Durham against Hampshire in Division 1 and Derbyshire against Gloucestershire in Division 2. We'll keep you up to date, of course, with what's happening in the other matches in where there is some cricket. Also, please keep the messages coming in. Very good to hear from you as Seals comes in, bowls to Proctor full length, and Proctor is forward, pushing it out into the covers. And there's no run. Um, afternoon to Phil Hayes, who I hope is still with us. We were talking earlier about the various exotic locations that we've had people listening in on the match so far, Cambodia, the Bahamas, Macau, Florida, all points west really. But um, Phil says he can't, can't match the exotic locations of those listeners, but he has enjoyed tuning in from Dane Jimmy's End in Northampton. So very good to have you with us wherever you are. And Phil hoping, I'm sure, that Northampton have a decent afternoon with the bat outside the off stump. Goes Seals, left alone by... Proctor watches it into the gloves of John Simpson. Jimmy's end, of course, St James' end in Northampton, where the Saints rugby ground is, Franklin's Gardens. Would have been bouncing yesterday, by all accounts, when Northampton Saints beat Munster to reach the last eight of the European Champions Cup. To playing the Vodacom Bulls from South Africa this coming Saturday in the quarter-finals. Not sure there'll be too many visiting spectators coming up from Pretoria, but you never know. Here's Seals. Orange soles of his boots and bowls down the leg side and clipped away by Proctor for the first run of the afternoon down to deep backward square. Takes Proctor up to three and Northamptonshire to 15 for one. So the man out was just in broad. Caught by James Coles at third slip 
off Seals without scoring. Sussex batting themselves into a strong position really since tea time yesterday. They scored 175 runs in the last session and then another 127 in quick time this morning to earn themselves maximum batting points. Here's Seals round the wicket bowls to Gay who tries to I think he was aiming for square leg and it finished up going up to Robinson at mid on. They didn't quite time it and that's the end of the over. 15 for one at the end of it. Gay is 12, Proctor is 3 and Northamptonshire still trailing by 92 with 71 overs remaining in the day's play. So assuming we get through, get them all in. So there is still time for Sussex to win this match, but they would need to get amongst the wickets and we would need, I think, pretty much a full day. And as we've been saying in the last sort of little bit before lunch and afterwards, the forecast is not particularly encouraging for this afternoon. It's not. Uh, Ollie Robinson is going to come in, though, down the hill from the Cromwell Road end to bowl to Luke Proctor. And Proctor plays a nice-looking shot through the offside. It eludes the clutches of Jaden Seals, who dives at uh, mid-wicket that can't stop the ball. And Ollie Carter does the rest of the building. The, the light has suddenly got not very good at all, as Andrew was saying. Um, I went out at lunchtime, and the breeze has really picked up. It's actually quite chilly outside now. Um, I think Andrew was saying it was it's raining on the coast in Portsmouth. Um, I, I don't think it's forecast to be a deluge, but no. um, I, I think it's steadily getting worse throughout the afternoon. And the fact the ground staff are just perched down below us suggests that um, maybe rain is not far away. However, for the time being, it's Robinson down the hill bowls and Proctor defends down the onside of the track, and there is no run. According to my um, radar that I've got on here, it's just about starting to spit in Littlehampton. Right, OK. Which isn't that far along the coast. If anything, at this stage, it looks as if the light might be the problem. Mm, uh, that's uh, true. I, I can see a light on the, the uh, involuntary light, which is on the garage at the far end of the island. I can see it, and a couple of lights in the pavilion I can see are, are, are on as well. So the light is marginal at the moment. Three slips and a leg slip go down. Robinson bowls to Proctor. He's stuck on the pad. That wasn't as... Um, what's the word I'm looking for, Andrew? Concerted. Yes. Appeal as the one before lunch mm. when Robinson thought he had gay LBW. Uh, that really was an appeal where everybody was up. That was kind of um, not as vociferous. Robinson is still getting in the groove here. He's, he's well, well in this match, and as we keep on saying he's going to have to bowl a lot of overs. It's not a bad shout, no. just having watched the replay. Robinson again. In and bowls, and Proctor drives, not quite tying it to short extra cover foot by Haynes, and there is no run. If the blue sky is, uh, is now over to our... Right, so that's what the northeast. Yeah, trying to work out means. Yeah, it is. Compass yeah. points. Yeah, <coughs> that's yeah. where that's where the, the weather's going to. Yes. Rather than where, it, yes. where it's coming from is just starting to clouds started to go a bit lower, isn't it? Yes, over it, it is in the um, southwest. Yeah, we're sort of right on the edge of this sort of front, I think, which is coming in. Robinson, Proctor drop on his toes and just steers that into the covers, and there is no runs. Uh, yeah, the, the the likelihood. I think we've. You know, if, if Sussex could get the full 70 overs in, you never know what might happen, but certainly the odds are very much on a draw here. But Sussex will take, um, if it does finish in a draw, we worked out 15 points. I think North Hants will take 13. 13 yeah. Yes. So that, that seems a decent, a decent haul, considering we lost a day's cricket pretty much um, over a combination of days one and two. I think both sides would have settled for that before a ball was bowled. Definitely. Robinson in bowls. Proctor glances that one to mid-wicket. There is no run footed there by Ollie Carter. And it is the end of Ollie Robinson's over. Three overs, no maidens, naught for 14. North Abdichir are 17 for one. Gay is on 12. Proctor is on five. You're listening to live cricket on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. 
Um, thanks for your messages throughout the match. Please carry on sending them in. Sussex Cricket at BBC.co.uk. It's great to have your uh, company uh, over the last few days. And, um, well, who knows? We spend an awful lot of time talking about the weather. Who knows, this might blow through and we might still have an interesting afternoon. Well, let's hope so. Here's Jaden Seals, who uh, distinguished himself this morning with an enormous six over the pavilion when he was batting his Seals in bowls. No ball called by umpire Baldwin as that ball goes past the outside edge of Emilio Gay's bat. But no ball called, so two more of the total. 19 for one. Northamptonshire now, first extras of the innings. The ground staff certainly alert to the possibility. They, they're down here now and um, just getting ready. Uh, Dave Allen says, who's our sort of Hampshire correspondent. Hello, Dave. He says, I'm afraid that if my observation about the direction of travel of the weather two days ago was correct, it has started raining in Portsmouth. Mm. Hope it misses you. Well, let's hope so. His seal's in again. Bowls to Gay, who's nicely in behind that. Plays it up to mid on and there's no run. Yes, I, if I was thinking of having a little detour when we finish here and uh, going to Selsey to see the uh, the plaque, the Eric Coates plaque that we were talking about before lunch, I strongly suspect I wouldn't be able to see Bognor Regis at the moment because I think it's probably going to be raining. I think you're probably right. But uh, if it ever rains in Bognor, maybe, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> but, uh, here's Jaden Seals. Running away from us from the sea end. Bowls to Emilio Gay, who drives nicely and a very good bit of fielding at point. Cuts off any possibility of a single. That was right up in Emilio Gay's arc and he drove at it. Didn't manage to get it past the man there at point. So a dot ball goes in the book. 19 for one it is. Aeroplane flies overhead, which I must admit I didn't see, which, oh, there it is, over to our left. Heading out towards the west. Here's Seals. Bowls to Emilio Gay, tall figure, left-hander, outside the off stump, and Gay lets it go through. I was looking this morning at um, when Sussex were absolutely powering on with um, Finn Hudson Prentice and Jack Carson, looking at um, highest Sussex totals against Northamptonshire on this ground. Um, and uh, I realised at once that they had quite a long way to go because Sussex record against Northamptonshire at Hove, 670 for nine. Mm. Way back in 1921, <laughs> Ted Bowley made a double hundred, Morris Tate made a double hundred. Here's Seals in, bowls to Gay, plays that out into the covers, and there's no run. And um, James Cole's fielding there, and yes, it's um, it wasn't a very close game. Sussex made 563 for eight on the first day. Uh, went on and got 670 for nine, bowled North Aperture out twice, despite uh, Bob Haywood carrying his bat for 131 out of 251. And uh, following on all out for 128. Wow. Here's Seals. And again, ball short. Quick ball. That was a quick ball. Uh, I like Seals. He's, yes. He, I think Sussex have done a good bit of business there. He, does, he really does look the, the part, look the part doesn't, he? doesn't he? Yeah. And Gay just twitching his head out of the way. But that was a quick delivery. Yes, yeah, Sussex, Sussex won that match by an innings and 291 runs. Around about lunchtime on day three. So that's um, a comprehensive win, isn't well, it? Well, it is. So, as I always say, there's always you know, there's always something worse that could happen. Here's Seals in again, bowls to Gay on his hip, and he turns that out through square leg mm. for four. Times that beautifully. He did. And that, as I say about Emilio Gay, he is so easy on the eye when he's playing well. And he just leant on that, timed it beautifully away, really th rather through mid wicket than square leg. And it raced to the boundary in front of the pavilion. Nice way for him to end the over. 23 for one. 16 to Gay, 5 to Proctor. A couple of emails have come in on Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. Joe has been in touch. Joe Maskell. Hello, Joe. He says, great to have cricket back on the stream, making the working day that little easier. 
He says, as for rain, my non-expertise is saying a 15 minutes pour, then clear until 5.30. He says, a Sussex wind, no doubt. Actually, it's got a little lighter, Joe, to be it honest. It has. Yes, it has. Um, and the cloud, which was pretty forbidding, it's just got a little lighter away to the southwest as Robinson is in, bowls to Proctor, who defends. Back to Robinson, there is no run. And Jonathan, who got in touch yesterday, um, and he's going to have a personal tour of the museum with uh, John Philby. Uh, they've arranged their tour. And he says, when will we be getting the new CEO in, or have I missed it? No, I haven't spoken to the new CEO yet. Um, but I'm, um, we'll get that sorted out. We'll get the new CEO on the mic, hopefully in the, in the next home game, so people can find a little bit up, uh, about him. Here comes Robinson. Four slips go down. He's in and bowls, and Proctor, uh, or rather feeling missed out there, Nick was down the leg side, and he rehearses the shot, could take by Simpson, moving smartly to his right, and there is no run. At Canterbury, Kent 74 for three in their second innings against Somerset, so they're still 45 runs behind. Yes. And at Trent Bridge, uh, Nottinghamshire needing 335 to win against Essex, a 50 for five. Wow. So we could have a result in Division 1. Good side, Essex. You know, con consistently mm. a good side. Robinson. Bowles, Potter lets that go outside the off stump, taken by Simpson. There is no run. Danny Lamb is going through a... Oh, he's, he, well, that's nice. Danny Lamb has run across the outfield to sign a young lad's shirt. Brilliant. Good lad. Which is uh, very nice to see. Uh, nice to welcome Ian and Kaz to the... Uh, commentary box um, over the lunch break. I mean, uh, huddled up, I think, against the cold down there on the boundary edge. It was a little wave. Um, I didn't know how much play we'd get after lunch, but I bet they're pleased there is at least some for the time being as Robinson is in and bowls and Proctor is stoutly forward, right in behind that, plays it into the offside, and there is no run. Yes, that um, game at Trent Bridge, Sam Cook, who got a hat-trick in the first innings, three for nine. Wow. In his ninth over, wicket apiece for Porter and Shane Snater. Joe Clark, who got a hundred in the first innings, out for 19. Jamie Porter is just season after season, picks mm. up wickets for Essex. Uh, now, I think we're going to get a change in the field, and I think we're going to have a short leg. Tom Allsop is just um, changing things. He's given the helmet to... Um, Ollie Carter is going to go in at short leg and they've moved the mid wicket across to cover point so the slips are all Tom Oxford just breathing on his hands there it, it is quite cold out there now three slips go down and Robinson is on his way round the wicket bowls and oh, Proctor very nearly plays on he got himself in a bit of a tangle there did Luke Proctor and the ball just dribbled past the stumps there is uh, no run. He'll know the importance of Luke Proctor staying there. Just to steady any nerves there might be around the Northamptonshire dressing room. Yeah, absolutely right. As, as, as I've said a couple of times, boring will do absolutely fine for Northamptonshire today. Yeah. Um, excitement is probably not going to be what Northamptonshire want, because if it's excitement, then it's probably going to be Sussex chasing victory. 23 for one on Northamptonshire. Robinson in bowls to Proctor, who goes... Plays onto the leg side, past the sprawling, diving Carter at short leg. Seals runs back and retrieves the ball. But it's two more to Proctor. He goes to seven. Northampton's hit to 25 for one at the end of Ollie Robinson's fourth over. Four overs, no maidens, naught for uh, 16. Ollie Robinson having a long chat there with uh, John Simpson. I think he'll bowl a couple more overs in this spell, uh, Ollie Robinson. And we'll just... Um, just watching... Who's someone... Is that going off the field? Uh, there's obviously a, a substitute out there, which I hadn't noticed before. So we'll see who's gone off in a few moments' time. And I was going to say something else, and it's completely gone out of my mind, which is not <laughs> not, des not desperately Come, clever. Comes to us all. Well, um, they're, they're underway at, um, at Edgbaston, uh, uh, finally, today. Uh, Worcestershire 262 for three now against uh, Warwickshire, 289 ahead. So, again would think it's going to be very hard to get a result. Uh, Middlesex, I'm sure, would dearly love to go past Glamorgan, 6.20 for three, and they, they might do so. 5.57 for eight, Middlesex now at Lords. His seals round the wicket, bowls to Gay down the leg side, called a no ball by the umpire, and flicked away by Gay, 
for four. Rather the sort of delivery that got him out in the first innings when he just got a little feather through to John Simpson who took a very good catch down the leg side but on that occasion it was a no ball anyway but Gay okay, getting a bit more on it and it runs away down the hill for four, up the hill I should say. 20 to Gay and Northampton 31 for one. Six runs coming off that ball, two for the no ball and four for the stroke from Emilio Gay. Molly Robinson um, making a suggestion from it on to John Simpson. They need a change in the field and they've moved Carson into that leg slip position. He's, he's a little wide, almost a leg gully to be honest. I saw Jack Carson warming up just now as well. So I don't know whether we are going to see some early spin, perhaps while the ball is nice and hard. Yeah, I think that would be a, a good move. Here's Seals. In and bowls to Gay, who's, I think he was going to play at it, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I think he just pulled his bat inside the line. But a good line there from Jaden Seals. Yeah, I, the, the reason I think that's a very good idea, Adrian, is that talking to Rob Keogh last night, he was saying that, yes, it, it, it did feel nice in the hand and all this sort of, we were talking about earlier, mm. but he said the problem is when the ball gets old, it, it's for a spinner, it still doesn't bounce. Um, and then... You, in order to get anything out of it, you've really got to float it up. Um, so I think it would be a really good move to try and get the spinners on whether there is a little bit of hardness still in this ball. His seals in again, bowls to Gay, who's on the front foot, pushes out towards extra cover. Seals came across to field, but in the end leaves it to Ollie Carter, who's there with his shin pads on. Yes. And Does look very uncomfortable. I'm sure they're not. They're very lightweight, I'm sure, but... It would be odd to have something sort of un under your trousers. Well, it would, be, it would be difficult for you and I. I think they're probably maybe just a little bit more agile than yes. than we, or certainly than I am. No, 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 no. Um, You'd have seen me getting out of the car this morning. <laughs> there was a car fairly close to mine. I sort of squeezed out the oh car. Dear. I thought, oh, come on, Adrian. It's not what you want. Here's Seals running in again. Bowls, he's bowled him. Off stump, knocked out of the ground. Seals strikes. Emilio Gay trying to drive. Whether he may have got a little inside edge on that, I'm not sure. But Stump's gone for a walk. And Gay is out, bowled by Seals for 20. And Northamptonshire are 31 for two. That was quick. It was. It, that was a pacey delivery from Jaden Seals. And I think Emilio Gay was was probably beaten for pace. But what a great sight for a fast bowler to see the off stump cartwheeling out of the ground. Well, I, I still think the draw is the most likely result here. Like you never quite know. Jaden Sills has got his tail up here. And if John Simpson was thinking of changing the bowling, I mean, he, I, I, it's just I, I wonder whether he might take Ollie Robinson off. They had a long chat, but that might have been more about a, a fielding change, maybe. Uh, Jack Carson will feel better now that Emilio Gay is out. Yes. Because he was dropped yes. uh, when he'd made just four. Um, but I go back to what... John Sadler was saying, you know, last night that it's there's still a bit of work for Northamptonshire to do. It assume, you know, if Sussex went on and it panned out the way it did, in fact, this morning, which was Sussex going on and getting a, uh, you know, a decent lead, and then leaving Northamptonshire to basically bat out the day, and you know that that brings with its you know particular challenges, um, and certainly at the moment. Thanks to Jaden Seals, who is, as Adrian said, generating really impressive pace. He's in his fourth over, two for 15, having dismissed both openers, Broad and Gay. And Karen Nair, the Indian test player, comes to the wicket. Made 57 in the first innings. Looked pretty good, got out to not the best ball that Danny Lamb has probably ever bowled in his career, but it's a good catch by... James Coles in the covers. Nair took a long time to get off the mark in the first innings, but he seems fairly unflappable. Obviously, an experience of nearly 100 first-class games behind him and a test player, of course. Test triple hundred, to his credit. 31 for two. Here's Seals. First ball to Nair with four slips in place, and he bowls outside the off-stump, and Caron leaves it alone. Goes through to John Simpson. Still cloud around, but as Adrian was saying, it's, it's okay at the moment. 
Mentioned uh, Middlesex closing in on that Glamorgan total. 5.61 for eight. Now Ryan Higgins is still there. 174 not out. So there could be a double hundred there for him. They're also underway at Headingley, where Yorkshire now 132 for three against Leicestershire. Adam Lythe, 65 not out. Here's Seals in again outside the off stump, left alone by Karen Nair. And it's nice to see Harry Brook out on the park, batting for Yorkshire. 34 not out off 24 balls, including two sixes and four fours. So he's getting a wee bit of a move on. Mm, that's a, I, I was thinking, actually, I mean, Middlesex is massive score, but it's coming 185 overs. That must be a tough watch, that match over four. Yes. I mean, they've they played, well, pretty much through the whole four days, but that, that's... That's three and over for 185 overs. That's not, it. not to have lost another wicket as well, which I'll tell you about in a second. Here's Seals in bowls to Caroon, who just comes onto the front foot and pushes it out to the man sweeping on the cover boundary. And he's off the mark with a single, rather quicker than he was in the first innings. Kept the bowling as well. End of the over, and applause for Jaden Seals. Four overs, two for 16. And Northamptonshire, with eight overs gone in the innings, are 32 for two. Okay. Yeah, 50, sorry, I was going to mention that was like 57 for six. Now, Nottinghamshire. And I was going to see who's got the wicket, because Cook had got uh, three. Porter, Jamie Porter, has yeah. bowled. There you go. Um, Jack Haynes, who's making his Nottinghamshire debut, have made the move from Worcestershire. And he's gone for seven, LBW. 57 for six knots. Uh, further inspection at 2.15 at Old Trafford, the game between Lancashire and Surrey, but that game is uh, is destined for a draw. Four slips in place. Ollie Robinson is going to carry on bowling. There was a conversation between him and John Simpson. I did see Jack Carson warming up, but maybe that wicket... Zilstrick has just convinced Simpson to carry on with Ollie Robinson, who bowls to Karun Nair. Now, do you... Do you do you call him Karun in Karun. commentary? Yes, uh, I, I did. I did um, check this last season, and uh, it is uh, Karun. Right. Um, who plays it onto the leg side? There is no run. John Simpson is just discussing there with the slip cord and maybe another change in the field. But currently there are four slips who look a little chilly. Tom Allsop hands in pockets <laughs> at first slips. Robinson comes running in down the hill to bowl to. Karun, he's in and bowls, and lets that one go. That wasn't that far away. You've got to say good judgment by Karun, who let that one pass through to John Simpson, and there is no run. 32 for two. The magic figure, as far as Northamptonshire is concerned, is 107. Once they get there, they've... Um, they'll be in positive territory, and that will, of course, take more time out of the game as well. But at the minute, that's a little way away. Blue sky over to our uh, over to our left. There is, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Robinson racing in down the hill, bowls and Curry lets that one go, taken by Simpson, and there is no one. I mean, there are still another 66 overs. I mm. mean, it, it, it's highly unlikely we're going to get all those in, but from a Sussex point of view, I'm sure you know John Simpson is thinking, well, you know, you know a couple of wickets, you, you, you never know what's going to happen. It's been very positive actually since tea time yesterday. I mean, I think it's it, it's a welcome sort of change, and the, it, the way Hudson Prentice played, the way Carson played, just trying to get Sussex to a total, which would give them an outside chance. Robinson in bowls to Carew, who's forward, plays to midwicket, no run. Well, Bruce and I were saying on commentary this morning, you know, this is the Sussex batting lineup is extremely deep. They yeah. go the bat really all the way down, and we saw. Jaden Seals go in and thump, thump one over the over the pavilion for half a dozen, um, at number eleven. But we've got Ollie, Ollie Robinson at ten. Now, I know obviously he won't play every game, but you know he's he's got Test fifty and first class hundred, and Jack Carson batting at nine, uh, Danny Lamb at eight. It's a, it's a deep old batting lineup. Robinson again. In and bowls I just thought for a moment that had eluded the bat of Karun and it had struck the pad, in which case there'd have been an almighty shout. Just turned him round a little bit, didn't it? It did. Yeah, it did. Really good stuff. 
Sussex play the first three rounds and they have a, a game off, so I just wonder whether the likes of Robinson might play those three games. Bruce was speculating maybe Robinson might just play the first two matches and then not play against Gloucestershire. But with that sort of week off after that, in fact, it's almost a two-week break that Sussex get after the game against Gloucestershire. I don't know when North Hants miss around. After four. Right. Robinson in. Oh, and Karunas forward plays to mid on, footed by Jaden Sills. It's a maiden over from Ollie Robinson. Sussex so keeping the pressure on here. Five overs, one maiden, no wicket for 16. Northamptonshire are 62 for two, uh, with Gay for 20 and Broad without scoring. Both back in the pavilion, both of them victims of Jaden Seals, who's now taken six wickets in the match. Yes, after this game, Northamptonshire have then got two home matches. They're at home to uh, Middlesex, score starting on Friday, and after that, home to Glamorgan. Then make the, uh, the trip over the Great Divide from Montage Road to Grace Road for... Uh, mm. Match starting right at the end of April. Then they miss a round and um, are back on duty against uh, Gloucestershire at home on May the 10th. So here's Jaden Seals. Two wickets already under his belt. Bowls to the left-handed Proctor, who's solidly forward, pushing it out into the offside. And there's no run. I have to say recent years Northamptonshire and Gloucestershire have fought out some wonderful games of cricket in all in championship and in 50 over as well um, if it seems whenever Ed Seaborn and I are on together it's almost guaranteed to be a close finish or one that goes you know right to the distance so um, yeah, did, did, I hope that's the case yeah was I listening to you guys down at Cheltenham yes. a couple of years ago yes yeah. Yeah, we had a well, North Average had a wonderful championship win there two years ago in 2022, and then last year a very tight 50 over game, which Gloucestershire won. His seals in outside the off stump, left alone by Proctor, and the, the first championship match of 2022 with uh, Gloucestershire coming to Northampton, going into the last two or three overs, all results were possible, all four results. Um, it was a wonderful game of cricket. It was bitterly cold, more or less, throughout. But James Bracey made a super hundred for Gloucestershire. Rob Keogh responded with an equally good one for Northamptonshire. And then Ryan Higgins, playing the way Ryan Higgins does when Gloucestershire were in a lot of trouble, gave them a, a good chance of victory. Here's Seals in again. And, oh, my goodness, how did that miss the stumps? That was quick. It was full. It was quick. Proctor went to drive, missed, and I strongly suspect it didn't miss the off stump by very much. This is top class fast bowling from Jaden Seals. It is. Who, well, John Philby was singing his praises yesterday when he was up with us in the box and saying they th thought they got a good one. Well, I think he probably is absolutely right. Oh, my goodness, I've just seen that on the replay. That shaved the off stump. Here's Seals, running in again, away from us, bowls to Proctor, this time drives handsomely, well, that's a good response from Luke Proctor, he's running up towards the boundary, it's a long chase for Ollie Carter, but he's not going to cut it off, and it crosses the boundary rope just to our right, so good, re good reply from yes. Luke Proctor, 11 to him, 36 for two, good tussle this, and... One thing you say about Luke Proctor is he very rarely gives his wicket away. You usually have to earn it. Yeah. And so he played well in the first innings. He's got a chance to set out his stall and make another substantial contribution here. 36 for two, Northamptonshire still 71 behind. And weather at the moment is set fair. It's quite a lot of blue sky around, which is very good to see. Here's Seals in bowls. Again, full. He's, it's lovely to see him pitching it up as well. And yeah, it is. Just relying on, on pace, really. I think, I think you're right. I think that's what did for Emilio Gay. And Proctor on this occasion just driving it back to the bowler. And I suspect once there is a change in bowling, I, I think Simpson will probably turn to the spinners um, just to see if there is anything out there for them. You're right about the, the, the weather. I mean, it's a lot lighter than it was. And there's a lot more blue sky around, so maybe Bruce was right after all. We shouldn't doubt Bruce, the <laughs> meteorologist, should we? Bruce Talbot, who was with us earlier. The weather sage. Sage in many respects. Here's 
seals outside the off stump. His radar just um, lost it a little bit there, and it was very wide outside the off stump, and Proctor able to leave with impunity. End of the over, 36 for two. Proctor is 11, and Caronea is one. We didn't have to worry about this, you see, when Bruce and I were, uh, were sharing scoring PA in the real duty you can imagine in Grenada because I think we had I think it rained for about 30 seconds on that trip if I remember literally it, it we had a little sprinkle one morning that just left everything glistening and beautiful and then it stopped and I yeah. think it was we were there for the best part of two weeks and I think it rained for 30 seconds oh that sounds like tough work <laughs> Over in Grenada. <laughs> oh, lovely. Um, Johnson just went and had a word with Ollie Robinson. I mean, he's done that on a couple of occasions. Maybe it's a field placing. Maybe it's, you know, maybe this is your last one, Ollie. You're never, never, never quite sure. Um, but three slips go down and Robinson is on his way, racing in and bowls to Karunu. Let's that one go. He's Robinson and Seals look a, a, a pretty potent opening partnership. They do, don't they? Um... But, well, they have enough time, and indeed Luke Proctor, as you say, he's not going to give his wicket away, and Corinne there's a fine player. Jaden Sills is rehearsing his action at mid-on. It looks pretty cold out there, you know. Hudson Prentice has got his hands in his pockets at backward point. And Robinson is on his way. Bowls, and that's wide of the off stump, taken by Simpson. Perrin having absolutely nothing to do with that at all. And a dot goes into the scorer's um, score. I don't, know they, well, I don't know whether they still have sort of manual score, score books. I think they always used to be the case that you have one doing the computer mm. um, and one doing a paper so sort of back copy in case the system goes down, which yeah. things do occasionally. Whether that's still the case, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure, but I suspect it is. I have to ask Graham Irwin, the Sussex scorer, when I see him. In comes Robinson Bowles, Bruno lets that one go, and bat gloves high out of the way through to Simpson, no run. Yeah, Terry Owen, the Northamptonshire scorer, popped up to the box this morning and just came to say hello and uh, mm. see where we were located and what the view was like, and so, you know, which is, well, he couldn't really be much better than we are. Here, it's a magnificent view, this great, huge picture window that we've got. Yes, and we're, uh, we're very lucky. Yeah. But I have to say, we, we always miss, and we'll miss for a while, of course, uh, dear Tony Kingston, who was our scorer for many years, who we sadly lost last year. Robinson in bowls, Cohen is right in behind that, plays it down the offside of the track, Robinson Fields. And there is no run. Every time I get back from a, a day's play and make myself a cup of tea, I always think of uh, I always think of King Ode. Must have done quite a lot of miles to the gallon over the over the thirty what thirty odd years that he was uh, scoring for Northamptonshire. Just uh, awarded the British Empire Medal last year and uh, just received it very soon before he died. But uh, that's, that's good man, King Ode. We shall miss him. Robinson, but oh, crumbs for a moment. I thought that Karun had edged that. Well, he, he, he didn't come out in the middle of the bat, it flew into the covers. Hint of a leading he edge, wasn't it? I think yes, he was, was, he was, uh, he was uh, aiming uh, mid wicket. Yeah, just to say, um, uh, Nottinghamshire are now 59 for eight. Crumbs. And Sam Cook has taken five for nine. <laughs> so it, uh, that's looking like Essex. Um, but if, if the weather holds, are going to win that game. Indeed, they are. Crikey, yeah. He's in his 11th over, 5 for 9. Robinson in bowls to Karun, who's back defending plays into the offside. There is no run. So, another maiden over from Ollie Robinson, who's stacking up the maidens. Six overs, two maidens, no wicket for 16. Northamptonshire are 36 for 2. Proctor 11. Karun is on 1. And Jaden Seals is going to carry on from this, the um, C end of the ground. I mean, uh, that's a, a pretty strong Northamptonshire, sorry, Nottinghamshire side. It is. Well, just looking at the weather, I mean, there's there's some fairly foul stuff in the area around Nottingham. So, I mean, look um, at that, I mean that. Not Mr. Bracegird will be there, blowing hard to try and blow will. the clouds away. I mean, you know, Hasib, Duckett, Slater, Clark, Montgomery, Haynes, Lyndon James, Calvert Harrison, Hutton. Pennington and Patterson. I mean, batting-wise, that's a pretty strong lineup. 
Well, they've they've uh, recruited again, haven't they? So we shall see. Here's Seals in, starting a fresh over over the wicket to Proctor. It goes by outside the off stump. And they're running up Dylan Pennington and um, Jack Haynes, both making the winter move from uh, Worcestershire. And making their debuts for, for yeah. lots in this game. Actually, I, I didn't realise until you mentioned it, it was a signing that I'd missed. Jordan Cox moving to mm. Essex as well. Um, I'm a bit surprised at that. Yeah, I'm sure Kenderby supporters will be very disappointed uh, mm. about that. But again, very, very talented cricketer. Here's Jaden Seals, who's also a very talented cricketer. Balls oh. to Proctor and turns him round, beats the outside edge into the gloves of John Simpson. This is a really testing spell from Seals. And I suppose the question is, you know, how long is John Simpson going to want to keep him going? He's into his, he's only into his sixth over, but he is giving this everything. He is. And, well, for an, you know, an overseas, you want them to... To, we talked earlier on, didn't we, about making a statement, and Seals is making a very eloquent statement here to his new teammates. The sun's coming out. It is. The sun has got his hat on. Here's Seals in again and bowls to Proctor, who drives through mid-off, running out towards the boundary. Not sure if it's quite going to get there. Yes, it is. Just rolls over the rope down to our left. Went close to the ground staff. Tom Haynes putting in the chase, but couldn't reel it in. Four more to Proctor. He goes to 15. And Northamptonshire to 40 for two, as, as Adrian Harms said, we're starting to see a few shadows, which we haven't seen since much earlier on mm. in the day. Quite pleasant, now. At a time when, according to the radar, it should actually be raining here. So, <laughs> oh dear, the game's, game's gone mad. Here's Seals, bowls again outside the off stump of Proctor, who leaves alone, goes through to Simpson. You talk of Simpson, here's a lovely email from Jack Simpson, who is John Simpson's father. Thank you, Jack. He says, good afternoon from glorious Spain. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, the two captains in this match are both Lancastrian by birth and lifelong friends who played together in the Lancashire age groups from under 11 through to under 19 before embarking on professional careers with Lancashire... And Middlesex. That's great. Isn't yeah, it? Nice to, nice really to hear. Really good. Thank you so much, uh, Jack, from glorious Spain. <laughs> Seals runs in again and bowls outside the off stump, wide outside the off stump this time, and Proctor doesn't need to do anything other than watch it go past. We're seeing Jack Carson starting to mm. swing his arms in a way that suggests he may be into the attack in the not-too-distant future. Certainly think it's I'm with you entirely. I think you think it's worth giving the spinners a go while there's still a little bit of hardness in this Cookerborough ball. Yes. But I'm sure John Simpson will have his own thoughts and ideas. Here is Seals in again. Ball short. Quick bouncer and Proctor ducks underneath it. Slaps into Simpson's gloves and that's the end of the over. 40 for two. Proctor is 15. Karun has made a single. Say, uh, Jaden Seals now six overs, two for 24. And Northamptonshire still 67 runs behind. We have a result at Old Trafford where they haven't managed to get on again. And that's match drawn. Uh, Lancashire 202 all out. Surrey 15 for no wicket. But that has been a thoroughly miserable experience by the sound of it for most of the last four days yeah. up at Old Trafford. Although it's always an, an enjoyable place to go and an enjoyable place to work. It is. Um, yeah, just looking John Simpson, born in Berry. Here comes Robinson in bowls to Karun, who plays into the offside. There is no run. Uh, James Trollope has been in touch. Hello, James. He's enjoying the commentary. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, he says, how does Seal's pace compare to Robinson's? Well, occasionally, uh, sharper than Robinson. Yes, I would uh, say uh, so. I mean, he, uh, I, we don't have the benefit of a speed gun or anything like that for county cricket. But, I mean, you know, I, mean, I think Ollie Robinson you know, bowls around sort of the low 80s, I think. But it's been the occasional one for Seal's that's looked really... High, high 80s, I yeah, suspect. Yeah, really sharp. 
Robinson in again. Bowls and Croon is going to get runs here on probably four of them. The ball is racing towards the boundary. Tom Clark is in not pursuit and he gets there. Oh, well done, Tom. Lovely bit of fielding. And he actually has prevented a run because there's just a couple of runs taken. So Tom Clark diving away. He's left a bit of a scratch mark on the outfield, which will have to be repaired by Ben Gibson and his merry men at the close of play. Please replace all divots. Yes. And Caron goes to three. Northamptonshire 42 for two. Um, yes, so John Simpson born in Berry, 13th of July 1988. And comes Robinson and Bowles. Green covers up, plays out into the offside. And there is no run. And. Um, do, 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 do. Luke Proctor. Oldham boy. Yeah, you're quite right. 24th of June, 1988. So it's really good to hear from you, Jack. Thank you for getting in touch from Spain. As a glimmer of sunshine makes its way across Hove, we were not expecting this today. Robinson in. Bowls. Oh, John, what a catch! What a catch! That'll be one of the catches of the season. James Coles, that was absolutely magnificent. His 399 wickets for Ollie Robinson in first class cricket. That was tremendous. It was low to James Coles left and he grabbed it and held on. That was terrific. Karun is on his way and North Hans off 42 for three. Top quality stuff from James Coles. And didn't we have a good view of it here as well? Whoa. Because we were absolutely dead behind uh, James Coles there as he hung on. Karun, who had to work hard in the first innings, similarly in the second, three off 19 balls for the Indian Test player. But that was a good ball from Robinson. It just held its line, maybe bounced a touch. Karun committed to play at it, found the edge, it flew to third slip, and as you described, a wonderful catch from James Coles. And it's these sort of things, you look at the, the comparing the two sides, the performances of the two sides so far, one thing you can say is that Sussex, by and large, have caught the catches very well, and Northamptonshire, shall we say, less so. Mm. Well, that was tremendous. That's a big uh, wicket. Uh, yeah, and it went very, very quickly as well. Um, a really, really fine catch by James Coles. Well, that's the, you know, the old adage, isn't it? You know, catches win matches. Um, well, the, you know, there may not be enough time to win this match, but Sussex are giving themselves every chance. Here. I mean, we, I mean, if the weather holds, there's still 62 overs left in the day. And North Aperture are still 65 behind. So there's still a bit left in this, as we were saying at lunchtime, if the weather held. And so far, it is. Yes. Well, if, if 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 Dave Bracegirdle was um, is trying to blow the rain away from Trent Bridge, I might have to go out the back <laughs> if Northamptonshire lose any more wickets and start blowing the rain in. Um, George Bartlett is the new man, four slips and a short leg, um, and Robinson, whose tail is up, is in and bowled, and Bartlett's back and defending to Robinson, who feels of his own bowling as well. And once again, you can't keep. James Cole's out of the game. No, no. He seems to be. I mean, he's. You look at the, he's, this match. He's he scored 78 lovely runs with the bat. I mean, there was 100 there for him, and he got out to not one of Safe Zabe's finest deliveries. Bowled beautifully, picked up three wickets, and um, he's held. Now that's his third catch of the match, and that was the fourth catch of the match rather, and that was an absolute perler. Yeah, it was. Getting ready again as Robinson steams in, bowls to Bartlett, who lets that go outside the offstop. Good lead by George Bartlett. It's the end of another Robinson over. Just two runs coming off it, but the important wicket of Caroon now. And Northamptonshire are 42 for three. Robinson, seven overs, two maidens, one for 18. Jeff has been in touch uh, from Ohio, no, and he says... So excited the county championship season is underway. Thanks for keeping us company this morning before the solar eclipse will be passing overhead here around three o'clock this afternoon. Funny enough, Jeff, we were talking about that today. I was looking at the map and the line of that solar eclipse going sort of southwest to northeast uh, in the United States. And apparently um, 
in the west of uh, the British Isles, you may be able to get sort of a partial eclipse. So I hope you see the eclipse. I hope the weather... We had an eclipse here back, back in 1999. Mm, and, it was, and it was a horrible day down in Cornwall. It was meant to be the place to watch it, and it rained all day. Seals. His tail up too. Four slips in place. Bowls outside the off stump to Proctor, who lets that go through. North Hampshire's batting coach, Greg Smith, is having a, a little wander around the boundary. Now he's going anti-clockwise, so he obviously must believe that it's anti-clockwise for for runs and clockwise for wickets. Club cricket, they always do that, don't they? Which which way are we going? <laughs> I've not heard that. Oh yes. Which, which way do we have to go around to for for runs or for <laughs> or for wickets? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Bit like the M25, <laughs> except when you so walk. Around, except when you walk around the boundary, <laughs> yes, you can actually keep going for more than five minutes. Here's seals in again outside the off stump, left alone again by Proctor. Goes through to John Simpson. Um, Elsewhere, now well, Nottinghamshire clinging on at 68 for eight at Trent Bridge against uh, Essex. See who's in there, Lyndon James. And Dylan Pennington. Well, oh, Dylan Pennington being much of a batter, but anyway, yeah. he's in there at the moment. And Kent now 137 for three against Somerset, so they've wiped off the arrears, so they're now in in profit, and you would think they they ought to be safe, barring something fairly untoward. Daniel Bell Drummond 31 not out. Joe Denley on 40. He is. Seals in again, and once more, that's outside the off stump, quite wide outside the off stump, and left alone by Luke Proctor. Something's creaking, and it's not, it's not, for once, it's not my back. So apologies if that's a little distracting, but um, I'm quite sure what it is. Could be our effects mic, I think, maybe just uh, brushing against something outside. Anyway. All good, 42 for three. Sun just about breaking through the clouds. Round the wicket comes Jaden Seals and bowls a ball of full length to Proctor that he plays defensively up to. Ollie Robinson at mid on. And there's no run. A few spectators, hardy spectators, sitting out in the on the deck chairs at the far end of the ground, the Cromwell Road end. I can see Somebody down there with a very large flask. An old thermos flask. Never a great fan of tea from a thermos well, flask. It never seems to taste very nice, but coffee's all right. Soup. Here's Seals. Running in again. Bolt Proctor and he's hit him. It's a short ball. And he ducked into that. I think, well, he's saying he's OK. He's on his feet, but he's having a look at the helmet. The umpire signaled dead ball. Paul Baldwin. And, well, there's going to be a, inevitably going to be a delay now because they're going to have to do a concussion check on Proctor. It was another quick ball. It wasn't that short from Jaden Seals. But Proctor hit by it. And the may just have brushed off the shoulder on the way to the helmet. But... Uh, they're going to have to come and just check him out. So the Northamptonshire physio, Nick Allen, is out on the on the park going through the concussion protocol. They're just having a look at the helmet. Gus Miller is coming out of the pavilion with a drink for the captain. I think Nick Allen is just having a look to see if it's broken the skin at all. It's Where did it hit him? It hit him on the head. Well, as I say, it, it's a question of whether it just brushed off his shoulder, but it certainly hit him on the head. Um, and he's just having the physios out there now having a, a smile with him. If you're watching the, the stream, you can see Nick Allen in conversation with Luke Proctor. They're just looking over his uh, right eye to see if there's any cut there and whether he might need further attention. But that was another pacey delivery from Jaden Seals. Sun is now out brightly, but the umpire's just having a little chat with a couple of the Sussex players, and they just, well, they'll take as much time as it needs, I think, from just to make sure that Luke Proctor is okay. He's having a drink, and they just 
You see Nick Allen there just examining the helmet just to make sure there's nothing cracked, making sure that the grill is properly attached. And it looks as though it's okay. I don't think he needs a new one. Yeah, it's uh, back on his head and all being well, he'll be able to continue. He's Batting yes, partner George Bartlett now just comes down to have a little word with him and to say, are you feeling okay? And all is well, and we're going to continue the game, but that was... He's a tough Lancastrian, isn't well, he? Well, I breed him tough in Oldham, but yeah, he's... Uh, that was a nasty blow. Anyway, three slips in place, and his seals in again to Proctor, full-length ball, and Proctor is in behind it, plays it back up to mid-on. And there's no run. That's the end of the over. Another hostile, pacey over from Jaden Seals, which Proctor, in the middle of it, got sconned, as they say, down under. Mm. 15 to Proctor. George Bartlett yet to get off the mark. Northamptonshire, 42 for three. Still 65 behind. And there are still, just looking to the, the board, 61 overs left, weather permitting. Yeah, now there is a change in bowling. Ollie Robinson out of there. We've got something making a noise in our effects, Mike. It's, I was saying it's, it sounds it's, like a creaking it's, it door. It sounds it ought to be my back, and it, it's actually not on this occasion. No, it's, no so. I, I'm just going to do a, a sound check. I think it's our effects microphone. I just went out to have a look at it. It's sort of swinging around in the breeze, but it's like, it sounds like someone's opening a door. So I think we're going to have a double change here. Jack Carson is warming up. Um, and it's going to be Finn Hudson Prentice who's taking over from Ollie Robinson at the Cromwell Road end of the ground. Three slips, backward point, cover mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and a fine leg as Hudson Prentice makes his way in uh, down the hill. Comes in and bowls to uh, Bartlett, who just helps himself to four runs, short, pulled away, and the ball disappears into the pavilion. 46 for three. It has to be said in the first innings, I think we felt here that. Once Robinson and Seals were out of the attack, it, it, batting looked considerably easier. And, and I don't think John Simpson will let it drift here too long. And, I, 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 you know, he may well be looking at James Coles as well to come and bowl some yeah. overs. Well, I, I think that would be a good move, as I say. I think to try and get the spinners on when they're likely to derive the most benefit from, from this ball while there's still a little bit of hardness in it. Took a while to find, I think that he just, again, the ball had skipped over the boundary rope into the seating, the member's seating, and the, somebody had to sort of rummage around to try and find it, but um, it has been retrieved. Had but that was, a, that was a real Larry Loosener, wasn't it, from uh, was. Hudson Prentice? Don't need that, you need to keep the pressure on. The sun is out, hope looks glorious. Hudson Prentice is in, bold, and Bartlett drives to it off, that was better. Fielded there at mid off of by. Um, is it Ollie Robinson? I think there might be a sub on actually. I think I saw somebody trotting off and somebody trotting on. I think Ollie Robinson might have gone off. Mm. I can see. Where's that Ollie at mid off? He's a long way in the distance. Had some printers wheels around at the far end of the ground. No, I don't think that is Robinson. No, it's not. I'm sure he's, he looks. doesn't look. Like Kim has a British in bowls to Bartlett who eases that one through square leg and picks up a single. He goes to five and Northampton to 47 for three. No, it's not. You're quite right. So it's number 42. I'm going to ask the guys who it is. If they're listening on the stream, if they could let me know, that'll be great. But we do have a, a substitute fielder on. We think for Ollie Robinson. Some Prentice has switched to around the wicket. Comes in and bowls, and forward comes Proctor, and he just plays comfortably into the offside, no run. Just looking at a tweet from um, the editor of Wisdom, Lawrence Booth, who's down at uh, Lord's at the moment, because he was here on the, the first yes. day, and he's just said, the tension is unbearable at Lord's. Middlesex, 571 for eight, in reply to Glamorgan, 620 for three. Yeah. Not much else you'd expect Middlesex to do. He's got a bat 
for as long as they can and go past them will be something. Here comes uh, Atul Prentice again. Proctor lets it go outside the other. It's Henry Rogers. Thank you very much, Jake. He's the 12th man or the substitute fielder for Sussex. And he's fielding up there at mid off. Young opening bat. He played from memory. Did he play championship match last season? I haven't got my last season's note, which is a bit shoddy. But he's fielding up there at mid on. I'll have a look. I've got my thing open at the moment. In comes Hudson Prentice Bowles, and Proctor seems to have plenty of time just to play that down the offside of the track. And there is Dara. I'm going to say that he didn't play a championship match, but he might have played a 50 over last year. Let's have a look. Henry Rogers, 2023. 47 for three at the end of the over. Bart looked five, Proctor on 15. 60 overs left in the day, and Northamptonshire needing another. 60. 60. He has not played a first team game for Sussex in any competition. Oh, thank you. He's played under 19s cricket for England, second 11 championship, and Sussex Premier League cricket for Cuckfield. Yes, just up the road, near but, direct, uh, just on the doorstep of Haywards Heath. Yeah. Uh, he's just gone off the field, actually. <laughs> but, but, but thank you for your research. Ollie Robinson is back on, probably changed his boots, Ollie, I expect. Oh, um, we've, we've given Henry Rogers his moment in oh the yeah. sun. That's fine. Well, he's had a few moments in the sun because it's beautiful now. It is. It is. And we're going to see Jack Carson coming into the attack from the sea end. Very noisy aeroplane going over. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'd fancy being in that if it makes, <laughs> if it makes a noise like that. Sounds as if silence has gone or something, but anyway. 47 for three, 60 behind Northamptonshire, and 60 overs to go. Slipping a forward short leg as Carson comes in and bowls to Bartlett, who's forward, playing it back down the pitch. Carson fields off his own bowling. Apart from the slip and the forward short leg, he's got a backward point, a man sweeping on the extra cover boundary. Mid off fairly wide, mid on, mid wicket. Backward square, it's on the 45, saving one, and a man out at deep square. And that's turned away by Bartlett, and immediately the man at deep square is going to be in the action. James Coles sends in his return, and Bartlett goes to six, and Northamptonshire to 48 for three. I'm finding it very hard to work out this weather because it seems to... Just when, you, just when you think it's going to do one thing, it does something completely different. But it is lovely at the moment. There's lots of blue sky around. The sun is shining brightly. No eclipse here. Only possibly of Northamptonshire's top order. Oh, very good. <laughs> boom, boom. Here all week. 48 for three. And Carson will now bowl round the wicket to the left-handed Proctor with an extra close fielder in a slip and a second slip very close and a forward short leg and that's full length driven by Proctor out into the covers and there's no run just looking around to see if there's anybody in any of the flats around the ground here at Hove out watching and can't see there is actually it's a bit chilly well working day as well of course on Monday it's very rare you do get people it's it's most odd yes Oh my goodness, that's a beautiful ball from Carson that's turned. <laughs> Johnson and demolished the <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> you talk about the likes of. Well, I would think Johnson's a you know, marvellous cricketer, marvellous keeper, but it's quite funny. You talk about the likes of Keith Andrew and Bob Taylor, just used to sort of you know, flick yes. a bale off. And John Simpson, as indeed Lewis McManus did yesterday, I have to say, when he was um, stumping uh, Tom Allsop, wasn't he? Demolished the lot. Yes. Well, just. John Simpson's knocked a stump out of the ground, but it's not out. Good ball, though, as Carson is in bowls on the hip of Proctor, who plays it hard into the ground. It's smartly fielded by Ollie Carter, who's under the lid at short leg. Seagulls giving their opinion. And here's Carson in again. Bowls that a little bit short. And it gives Car uh, Proctor the opportunity to cut it away out to deep cover, where James Coles fields 
come through for a single and Proctor will keep the bowling. 16 to him, 6 to George Barlett and Northamptonshire 49 for 3, having lost just in broad for naught before lunch. And then since lunch, Emilio Gay bowled by Jaden Seals for 20, having his off stump not flying. And Karen Nayer superbly caught at third slip by James Coles off Oi Robinson for three. At that stage, 42 for three. It's now 49 for three. David is back in Hove today and absolutely loving this. I wonder where you're sitting, uh, David. Um, this lovely ground. I don't want to tempt fate, but I reckon the weather will hold off. And if the light stays good, Sussex are in with a decent shout here. Let's have a bit of positivity, says uh, David. Well, I mean, it's brightening up all the time. You're absolutely right. And there's lots and lots of blue sky around. 59 overs to be bowled in the day. As it comes, Finn Hudson Prentice around the wicket, bowling to Luke Proc. Two lets that go, taken by Simpson. And there is no run. So, Well, I have to say um, that looking at the radar, I think David might have a point because there's nothing um, that would suggest it's heading this way for a, for a while anyway. So yeah. I think we're, we're set fire for a little, little bit of uh, sunshine and, well, compelling cricket at the moment. Yes, it is. 58 still Northamptonshire need to make Sussex bat again. Um, Proctor, the skipper, is... Trying to steer them through a bit of a mini crisis. Hudson Prentice in bowls down the leg side, taken by Simpson. Uh, and there is Darren. Yeah, I, I have to say, we, we, we did say this yesterday as well. In fact, right through this game, the weather forecast has been incredibly inaccurate yes. over the four <laughs> days. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not a meteorologist. I have no idea how difficult a job that is. But it has been wrong um, pretty much throughout the match. Um, and certainly today, I mean, I turned up today thinking we'll be, we'll be sort of leaving here mm. at sort of two o'clock with the white, with the rain pouring down. Comes Hudson Prentice, bowls, Proctor is solidly forward, plays to the onside, then there is no run. I mean, I mean, Sussex obviously here need to need to take wickets, but at the same token, they're bowling very tightly because they know that, you know, if North Hands get themselves a bit bogged down here, it just, it makes life doubly difficult. North answer to get away and get a lead, then that's going to take a lot of time out of the game. But Luke Proctor is fighting hard, as he did in the first innings when he made 92. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls. Yeah, let go by Proctor. We're talking about the, uh, the, the tweet from Lawrence Booth um, saying about the unbearable tension at Lord's. Mm. He's just sent an extraordinary photograph over, which has um, the, the field that Glamorgan are now employing. They have eight fielders all in, a, in a, a ring, like the sort of the Carmody field, but instead of being behind the wicket, they're all in front of the wicket. So they've got four in front of square on the onside, four in front of square on the offside. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls to Proctor, who eases that through mid-wicket and picks up a single, the result of which, although that was a bit sloppy by Sussex, actually, not a very good throw that John Simpson does very well to take, and he has a look towards... Uh, Ollie Robinson was if to say, that wasn't a great throw, Ollie. But the 50 up for the Northamptonshire, 50 for three. Bartlett on six, Proctor battling away. The skipper of the side, he's on 17. And the arrears are still 57. And Nottinghamshire now nine down. Six wickets for Sam Cook. Wow. And Pennington, the last one to go, caught by Dean Elgar for seven. So Lyndon James and Dane Patterson standing between... Six and victory. Three slips in place here. Hudson Prentice in bowls to Bartlett. I just thought for a moment that Hudson Prentice had breached George Bartlett's defences, but I was wrong, and he played comfortably into the offside, and there is uh, no run. End of the over. I'm sure we're going to see Jack Carson carrying on. I can see John Simpson talking to Finn Hudson Prentice. I suspect it won't be long before we see James Coles into the attack, because he, of the two spinners... Yeah. Certainly based on the first innings, I, I thought he looked the more dangerous. Yes, I would uh, not disagree with that. I thought he bowled beautifully. Well, I say he's had, just had a good game, hasn't he, really? Well, James yes. Coles. Well, yes. Shining in every every department, really. Not sure if he makes the tea in the dressing room, but I'm sure it would be very good if he does. 
Two slips and a forward short leg. Carson round the wicket bowls to Proctor, who, let's remember, is, well, I'm sure, just slightly still feeling the effects of that clonk on the head from Jaden Seals, but on this occasion he plays the ball hard into the ground to the right hand of Ollie Carter at forward short leg. Carson in again, bowls short outside the off stump and cut away by Proctor, one of his trademark shots. And he goes down to deep point for a single. Proctor to 18, Northamptonshire to 51 for three. Still 56 runs behind. We have 57 overs remaining after this one. Just looking to see how Harry Brook was getting on because he was starting to tee off at Headingley. Carson in again, bowls to Bartlett, who's smashed that straight back over the bowler's head. And you probably heard it landed with a, a clatter over to our left. I don't think he's aiming for us. Well, it, well, it bounced back well, and almost hit a member of the ground staff. Yeah, well, the, the, the lads, the ground staff here, are, are clowning around now. <laughs> Six to Bartlett, he goes to 12, 57 yeah. for three. And then now, of course, they're having to have a look at the ball because it's they have got scuffed. But it's OK. Well, that's good from Bartlett, isn't he? he well, was. he's, yeah, he's uh, he's just going to try and be as positive as he can. Here's Carson in and bowls to Bartlett. Plays that past the left hand this time of Ollie Carter at forward short leg. Runs out to mid-wicket. And there's no run. Yeah, mentioned Harry Brook earlier. He's 75 not out off 51 balls. Ooh, well, that's entertaining. At Headingley. Two sixes, 11 fours. Carson flights that one right up to Bartlett, who's caught it slip, is he? He's yes, out, he he's gone, Carson has done the trick, flighted that one up, inviting the drive, Bartlett did drive, it took the outside edge, he's caught at slip. I think that's Tom Clark who took the catch very nonchalantly. And Sussex have a fourth wicket, and well, we said about getting the spinners on while there's maybe a little bit of hardness in the ball, John Simpson, the moment, Everything he's touching is turning to gold. Bartlett goes for 12. Court Clark, it was Tom Clark in there. Bold Jack Carson, 12 off 11 balls. Northamptonshire, 57 for four. And they are still 50 runs behind. Well, it looked as if George Bartlett was determined to come in and be positive. And in this situation, that's, that's not a bad thing to try and, and, and take the game to Sussex. But... Um, he's been done there by Jack Carson and a good catch by Tom Clark. And you've made the point a couple of times, Andrew. Uh, Sussex have caught well in this match. And in fact, here's another good sign for Sussex because the ground staff have clearly decided there's no rain imminent for the time being. And they're now wandering away back up to the far end of the ground, which is their normal perch to... Um, the covers are at this end of the ground, I should explain to us. Do you know why I think they're doing that? Because I think their lunch has just arrived. You oh, see, right, they've, they've okay. got, you see, they've got the boxes. Yes, they have. But in any case, yeah, but no, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's no, there's no yeah. rain imminent of that, I'm, I'm quite sure. But, well, this has been really good stuff from, from Sussex. They've set the game up by the way that they batted in the last session last night and first thing this morning. And they've now got themselves in a very, very strong position to possibly force a win. Who knows? Northampton needs somebody to dig in with the captain, who is, well, as Luke Proctor is routinely entrenched. 18 not out of 51 balls. Rob Keogh, senior pro, comes to the crease. Made nine in the first innings before he was caught at slip off Ollie Robinson. And he's now about to face his first ball with a slip, a leg slip, and a forward short leg. Carson over the wicket. First ball to Keogh, who sweeps. Doesn't really get hold of it. It goes out just in front of square on the leg side. And they come through for a single. James Coles flicks the ball towards the stumps. Doesn't hit them. And it's a single to take Keogh off the mark. 58 for four. That's the end of the over. And applause for Jack Carson, who's struck straight away after being brought into the attack. Two overs, one for ten for Carson, and Northamptonshire 58 for four. Yeah.
Um, at the end of the next step, I'm going to go down to my effects micro because something is making a, door, a sound like a door that's <laughs> o- opening. It's very irritating. Um, so we'll see if we can get that sorted out. And uh, Essex have beaten Nottinghamshire by 254 runs. Nottinghamshire all out for 80. Six for Sam Cook, three for Jamie Porter, one for Shane Snater. Well, that will not please those at Trent Bridge. That's a pretty comprehensive beating, isn't it? Hudson Prentice is on his way down the hill in bright sunshine, bowls to Keo, who's forward. Um, you would feel here from, I mean, there's still batting to come. As they've said, of course, and Lewis McManus have had a very good 50 in the first innings. But these two are the experienced campaigners here for Northampton. You'd, you'd feel that, you know, you, that one of these two is going to have to bat through and yeah, a substantial port- amount of overs here. Absolutely important partnership, this. Uh, Sussex have just called a fourth slip in. So Allsop at first, Clark second, Coles third, Carson at fourth. Hudson Prentice back to his mark at the Cromwell Road end and is on his way, racing in down the hill, bowls and Kerry's back and flicks this one down towards fine leg. He's run the first one very, very quickly. Uh, Danny Lamb gets the throw in from fine leg, preventing more than run. He's looked very positive, Rob Keo. The minute he's walked in, he's, he's looked positive. Um, and I suppose in some ways, Andrew, you should say there's not a lot of point just blocking here. It's a long time to block, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. And so, you know, Northamptonshire, I think, will be keen to pick up the runs where they can. Yeah, they'll also be keen, as you, as you made the point earlier, Adrian, just to make sure that they, you know, clear these arrears and make it so that they're taking a bit more time out of the game. Had some apprentice in bowls to Proctor. Play to uh, mid on by props to the howl from the Sussex lads is because they a they're getting very excited but b I think that was right on the money from Hudson Prentice. You see, I was just watching the um, the clouds moving. There's a sort of you know very high fair weather cloud, and it looks to be moving from the east, from the southeast. If you look just up uh, ahead of us, which is not where it was supposed to be no. coming from, but anyway, um, baffling. Right. Randy Baldwin's been in touch. Hi, Randy. As in comes Hudson Prentice bowls to Proctor. Plays to mid on. There is no run. He says it's a forecast. It changes constantly, especially here as we're in Ireland. Thought the forecast for the first three days was pretty accurate. Well, yes and no, Randy. I mean, certainly on the... What day was it they were predicting it was going to be a bit of a hoolie in 50-mile-an-hour winds? That's right. It well, was, that didn't um, happen. It was, well, it was, a, it was basically 24 hours out because that was forecast for Saturday. And it's what we got on Sunday. Yeah, it was, it, yeah. So I don't think, it, yeah. All the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. In comes uh, Hudson Prentice and Bowles. Proctor lets that go outside the off stump. There is no run. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't mean to be overly critical, but, it's, but certainly today, the weather forecast I heard, um, which was actually on Radio 4 this morning, driving down, was that, you know, showers into the southeast. Early afternoon, some heavy showers, potential flooding. It was a bit Armageddon, to be honest. Well, maybe it is in other parts of the southeast, but not here. On the south coast, and Finn Hudson Prentice is going to come in again. To bowl to Luke Proctor, he's in and bowls, and Proctor uh, stabs that one onto the leg side. They've taken one, they'll look for two, but Jack Carson is very quickly in. Every run is being fought over here. And it is the end of another over. 60 for four on Northamptonshire. Keogh is on two, Proctor is on 19. I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes seeing if I can see why our effects microphone is making a sound like a creaky door. And I'll be back. <laughs> Adrian Harms, our resident boffin, is going to go and try and sort out uh, the mystery of the squeak. Sounds like it ought to be an Arthur Conan Doyle short story. But anyway, um, back in the real world, 60 for four it is here and Northamptonshire perilously placed they need a partnership if they are to head up the M23 out of Brighton later this afternoon early this evening with a draw Proctor the captain facing Jack Carson and Proctor plays it back down the pitch very calmly for Carson to field off his own bowling. Still a slip and a sort of second slip come gully, but very close in. And the forward short leg, Ollie Carter under the helmet. Carson round the wicket, bowls to Proctor, aims a big sweep, appeal and not out, says umpire Baldwin. 
Proctor going to sweep. Carson thought he got him. They've come through for a run, and it is a leg by, so there's no bat on it. But, well, that was a very, very confident appeal by Jack Carson. And the Sussex fielders generally. I'm just going to have a little look on the replay. 61 for four with that leg by. It was one of those, it was flighted. It may just have been going down the leg side. Might have been in the umpire's mind, I think. But worth a shout. Brings Rob Keogh on to strike. Carson in bowls to him. He goes on to the back foot using his height. Plays it hard into the ground. Fielded by Carter at short leg. 61 for four. Still 46 runs behind. 55 overs to go after this one. Here's Carson in again. Bowls to Keogh. Turns it just behind square. James Coles is hurtling in. Stops it but doesn't pick it up. First time at any rate. So they're able to come through for the single. 62 for four. Coles was back on the boundary and saw they were going to go through for a single and came absolutely herring in to make sure they couldn't get two. Carson around the wicket to Proctor and Proctor is forward playing it back down the pitch and there's no run. So Essex the first team to win a county championship match in 2024 in Division 1 beating Nottinghamshire by 254 runs at Trent Bridge. Carson in again. Slightly quicker ball, a little bit shorter and cut away by Proctor. But that man Coles is patrolling out in the covers and keeps it to one. Spoils it slightly by sending in a rather erratic throw, which he's holding up his hand to apologise. It's about the only thing he's done in this game that is um, less than excellent. Bruce. Nevertheless, it's a run, 63 for four, with Proctor on 20, Keogh on three, Northamptonshire still 44 runs behind. And the batters have a mid-wicket conference. Cloud still high, blue sky visible, sun out. And at the moment, we are set fair for what could be a very, very interesting 55 overs. It's going to be Hudson Prentice to continue, bowling his medium pace from the Cromwell Road end. Down the hill, bowling round the wicket to Luke Proctor. And Proctor is coming right across his stumps. And <laughs> Hudson Prentice thought he might be through, but Proctor playing it out into the onside for Tom Haynes to field. And there's no run. Three slips in. And a backward point. Extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket. And Jack Carson fielding down below us, just to our right, at long leg. Hudson Prentice in, bowls to Proctor, and that's outside the off stump. Doesn't need to play it, and doesn't. Elsewhere in Division 2, it looks as though Middlesex may well claim a first innings lead against Glamorgan. 620 for three, of course, Glamorgan made Middlesex now. 613 for eight. And they're taking drinks with Ryan Higgins, 195 not out. I wonder if he's enjoying his orange squash. Here's Hudson Prentice in, bowls to Proctor, who drives nicely up to mid-off. It's fielded there by Jaden Seals. And there's no run. Tom Helm going in at number 10 is 49 not out off 98 balls. So Middlesex just seven runs behind. Here's Hudson Prentice bustling in again. The ball to Luke Proctor outside the off stump left. Quite a tight leave judging by the reaction from the bowler in particular but Left-handers, amazing how often they seem to have a very good judgment of where their off stump is. You think of the batters like John Edrich of an earlier generation who seem to have this wonderful sort of intuition of where the off stump is, what to play, what to leave. Proctor getting it right that time. 
20 not out off 63 balls for the Northamptonshire captain. Here's Hudson Prentice in. Again, outside the off stump. Easier leave this time for Luke Proctor. It goes through to the keeper, John Simpson. Adrian, having come back in from his mission to eliminate the squeak, has realised that the squeak is still with us. And um, has gone out to try and try other methods to try and get rid of the squeak. Apologies for that. Here's Hudson Prentice, bowls to Proctor, who comes across his stumps. It's a full-length ball, and I think it's fair to say if Proctor hadn't have got bat on that, there might have been a question asked. Fortunately for him, he did. Apologies for the bumping and banging on the, uh, on the microphone. Just trying to get this sorted out. But at the end of the over, it's 63 for four, with 20 to Luke Proctor, three to Rob Keogh, Northamptonshire, Still trailing by 44 runs. We've lost the sun at the moment. Cloud has come across the ground, but I don't think it's anything particularly threatening. And it's going to be Jack Carson. Three overs, one for 12. He's going to bowl to Rob Keogh. Still the field as before, with a leg slip, a slip, and a forward short leg for the right-hander. And here's Carson in bowls to Keogh, who sweeps, which is very much his go-to against the spinners, and he really does nail that one. And it races away just in front of square for four. Crosses the rope quite close to the clock tower scoreboard. Keogh goes to seven, and Northamptonshire to 67 for four. Harry Brook, meanwhile, 95 not out off 62 balls. That's worth watching. So... It would be interesting if the fastest 100 of the season was in the first round of matches. It but, would. Uh, it would. That's, um, well, he's going, so making up for lost time, I think you call that. But My uh, efforts to, to sort out the effects, Mike, have miserably failed, haven't they? Um, I've, I've tried all sorts. They've been a partial success. <laughs> yeah. I, I should have been in the diplomatic corps. Yes, you should. In other but words. it's it's OK. 67 for four, 40 behind. And here's... Carson, round the wicket again, bowls to Keogh, who sweeps again, identical result, identical place, four more. Keogh to 11, Northampton just 71 for four. Well, he's been very positive. I thought when he walked out, Rob Keogh had a bit of intent about him, saying, I'm not going to get myself tied down here. Ollie Robinson is now coming across, having a chat to Jack Carson, maybe about a possible field change. Tom Haynes joining in as well. Ollie Robinson was also warming up, so I don't know if we can get a bit of Ollie. I think we have a set tea time today. It will be at 20 to 4. I think so, yes. Uh, and I have to say, um, there is some heavy cloud around to the east of the ground now, mm. which isn't the direction that I thought the weather was coming from. I don't think it's, it's where I thought it was coming from, but anyway. But it's, it's, uh, it's certainly drifting across there. It looks quite threatening. Yeah, it's, it we'll, we'll, it's, it's, we'll say we've lost the sunshine at the moment. That we do know. Well, a little bit of moral victory for Rob Keogh in that one of the close catches has now moved out. The leg slip's gone, so a slip and a forward short leg. Carson in again, bowls. And this time it's the reverse sweep, and it goes for four. So three balls, three fours for Rob Keogh. Two orthodox sweeps, one reverse sweep. Not a shot he plays an awful lot, the reverse sweep, Rob Keogh, but he middled that one nicely. It races away for four, catching his captain up. 15 to Keogh and Northamptonshire 75 for four. I think that's good cricket. Well, it, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, as we said, Northamptonshire do need to get past this 107 so that anything they get then is, is puts them in the black and they're actually going to be able to take a little bit of time, more time out of the game. But it's, um, it's certainly been a positive start for Rob Keogh, who played magnificent innings against Essex last year when he played a few shots I don't think I've ever seen him play before he's Carson in again, bowls to Keogh defensively this time, pushing into the offside calls through for a quick single, Proctor responds Jaden seals fields, but there's an easy single there in the end, Proctor is, is uh, now on strike, Keogh 16, 76 for four, 
you just sensed with that 100 against 160 odd against Essex last year that it was all the frustrations of the season just pouring out in the way he played. It was an extraordinary innings and, well, set up a North Amateur victory, albeit too late to make any difference to the, the outcome of the season. Short, pulled away by Luke Proctor for four. Well, this is an expensive over, isn't it? So that's the fourth boundary in five balls. That was that was a little bit of a of a long hop, and Proctor's not going to pass that over. And pulled it away for four, particularly as there's actually there are actually only two fielders on the, or three on the leg side, including the short leg. But there's a deep backward square, and a mid wicket. So it was a bit of a free hit for Proctor. He goes to 24, and Northamptonshire to 80, for four. Here's Carson to finish the over. That's flighted up and nudged into the onside by Keogh. They've come through for one, and they're going to jog through for two. So from Northampton's point of view, a very productive over. 19 runs off it. Mm. Proctor is 26. Keogh is 16. Northamptonshire are 82 for four, and they are 25 runs behind with 53 overs remaining. And Ollie Robinson is going to return to the uh, Sussex attack. I don't think that's anything to do with what happened in that over from Jack Carson. Nice to see there John Simpson, actually. That's where experience comes in. He's just run across the field. He's probably run a good 30 yards. And he's just tapped Jack Carson on the back. And I suspect, although I don't know, that conversation was probably the lines of, don't worry, Jack, but just, just take a break. And I suspect we'll see a change at this uh, C end of the ground. Uh, but it is going to be Ollie Robinson. I think that's a good move. Um, Robinson with one of the wickets, Seals with two of the four. And we've got, what, 25 minutes to go until T. 27, 28 minutes to be factually correct. Ooh, well, there's a noisy scene. <laughs> um, and Robinson is on his way. Three slips go down. Robinson in, bold, and Keo is forward and plays straight to Seals, and there is... You know, on the leg side field is interesting. There's a, a short leg who's forward short leg. There's another fielder in a very short, close mid-wicket. Um, we heard the cry there, come on, Robbo. Oh, there's another, there's another come on, Robbo. <laughs> right on cue. They're all at it, aren't they? Oh, and there's the howling wind. Oh, that sounds vicious, doesn't it? Mm. I've talked about Arthur, and Co Arthur Conan Doyle's short stories. It sounds about that might be a soundtrack to The Hound of the Baskervilles. Nick Hudson Prentice bowls. Keo defends. Uh, the substitute is on, who I think is Archie Ledham on this occasion, in its short extra cover. I think Finn Hudson Prentice may have gone off. I can see Danny Lamb warming up down at fine leg. Hasn't bowled in this inning so far. Yes, I saw a bowl at lunchtime out on the uh, one of the pitches on the edge of the square. Yeah, sort of burst onto the scene, Archie. T20 two or three years ago, picked up quite a few wickets. Um, has it had quite such a good time of it since then? Robinson in bowls. Keo forward played as far as Archie Lennon, who races round from short extra and fields. He's the latest in a long line of Lenhams. I was going to say, if you're, if you're a Lenham, you're Sussex cricket royalty. Aren't yes, you, you really? are. Les Lenham, his grandfather, Neil Lenham, his dad. Archie bowls leg spin. He's a very competent bat as well. But he's struggling to get in this side at the minute. I, I suspect we may not see an awful lot of Archie until the T20s come around. Am I imagining things? Or Neil Lenham? Did he not wear a yellow helmet? I think. I, I Quite possibly. Recollection of. of, of Neil Lennon batting for Sussex in a very bright coloured helmet. The days when you know they weren't necessarily in, in team mm, colours. Yes. I may be completely wrong, but I'm sure somebody will know. Yes, someone will know. Let us know. Sussex cricket at bbc.co.uk. Did Neil Lennon wear a yellow helmet? In comes Robinson round the wicket. Balls to Brox. Oh my word. Well, he was he was neither forward nor back there, Luke Proctor. And I thought for a moment I was going to see his off stump coming out of the ground. But he survives, the skipper, he's doing a good job for his county. 26 off 68 balls, he top scored with 92 in the first innings. 
and he'll be desperate to keep there. Talking of um, letting us know, it's a lovely message from uh, Ollie Helfrick on the Isle of Man, who, who's been in touch with us during this game. He picked up on the reference when I said about another partial success when we were talking about the, trying to eliminate the squeak. Come back to that. Robinson in bowls, got to defenders and there's no run. And he said it reminded him, and it's exactly what it reminded me of as well, which is why I said it. Um, those of us of a certain age that remember the, the comic Viz that was always yes. a little bit near the knuckle in yes, at times, but they had a character called Professor Piehead. Do you remember Professor Piehead? It was always saying... <laughs> If things went, you know, catastrophically wrong, it was always another partial success. And it's, it's one of those, it's all a sort of running joke in the family. And, um, yeah, absolutely. So great minds thinking alike there, Ollie. Or, well, one great mind and one lesser mind. But uh, you're right on with the uh, the reference. Robinson in bowls to Proctor, who lets that go outside the off stump. There is no run. Ollie Robinson's disappointed with that last delivery. He makes a sort of sign with his hands. If that one it to go the other way. End of the over. Only one run coming off of it, though. Robinson, eight overs, two maidens, one for 19. 83 for four. Um, now, let's see what's going to happen from this C end. I wondered if it might be going to be Danny Lamb. In fact, it's not. It's a return for Jaden Seals. I think that's a good bit of captaincy as well. Um, you well know, get your quick back on. You've yeah. got a couple of wickets. No, bit of a blast before tea. Absolutely right. And, he, you know, he might also just be having a little look at the skies and thinking, well, you know, if there is... If there is going to be some rain around later, so there's no particular sign of it at the moment. But uh, you know, you don't want the game to drift, do you? You don't no. want these two to put on 30 or 40, knock off the arrears, and then um, Sussex are, you know, going to have to try and think about containing as well as attacking, and uh, becomes a little more difficult. But if they could knock one of these two over quickly. If this new ball pair and now back in the attack could do so before T, then Sussex are still in with a, a chance. Four slips as Seals comes in, bowls to Keogh, who drives up to mid off, and there's no run. The, the game just has a different feel, doesn't it? The minute that Robinson yeah. and Seals come back on, and you know these two will be well aware that, that you know this is the threat now. That, that might be the only... I mean, it's, it's been a terrific performance by Sussex in this game. That might be the only thing that, you know, outside of these two, you know, they've, mm. look, they've looked like taking the wickets. Um, and James Coles did in the first innings. I'm a little surprised James hasn't bowled, but maybe that's to come a little later. Here's Seals. For now, running in and bowls to Keogh outside the off stump, left alone He's by quick. Rob Keogh. And already, I mean, after it's not as though he needs... To build up to it, he's just come on. The second ball is sharp. He's into his eighth over, two for 24. Picked up the wicket of Justin Broad just before lunch. Caught at third slip by James Coles. And then immediately after lunch, knocking out Emilio Gaze off stump. So two wickets for Seals, one for Robinson, one for Carson so far. 80 Three for four, 24 behind. Here's Seals. In again, bowls to Keogh, who's pushing that up past mid on. And having seen it elude the fielder, they're now running. They're going to get two. I think that's all they're going to get. Ollie Robinson chasing back to complete the fielding and almost sort of daring them to have another go and try for three. But um, they decided not to. Two to Keogh, he's 19. And Northamptonshire, 85 for four these two coming together with a total 57 for four so they've put on what, 26, 28 just steadied things a little but still some work to do here's Seals running away from us bowls to Keogh outside the off stump Keogh just lets it go through to the keeper John Simpson Harry Brook, 99 not out off 65 wow. at Headingley against Leicestershire. Ben Mike, you were talking about yesterday, yes, weren't we? Were. As, uh, being a, a very, very handy all-round cricketer. He's picked up four wickets there for for Leicestershire. Four for 42. And I think he made 90. Yeah, got runs as well, yes. He's, uh, I'm sure they're delighted to have him back at uh, Yes, that was pretty Grace short, Road. wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Season? Here's Seals in again, bowls short, Keogh ducks underneath it, it goes through to 
John Simpson. Yes, it wasn't a, it wasn't a long move, was it? But uh, so it'll be interesting when Northampton should play Leicestershire in about three weeks' time. I'm rather hoping from purely selfish point of view that Josh Hull will be fit and playing in that one being from my club in Northamptonshire playing for Leicestershire almost be divided loyalties there won't they? his uh, seals in bowls to Keo drives nicely but seals does well but he's in his follow through just managed to get a hand to it took some of the way off the ball and it just rolls up to Mid-off where Robinson completes the fielding, and that's the end of the over. 19 to Keogh, 26 to Proctor, 85 for four, Northamptonshire. You're listening to live cricket from Hove on the BBC. Every ball of every match, of course, throughout the county season. Andrew Radden, Adrian Harms, thoroughly enjoying ourselves down here. And I was going to say in the sunshine, but actually the sun is not shining hmm. at the moment. But it's it's shining in our hearts, Adrian. And it that's is. all that matters. It is. And the good news is that the, I mean, the ground staff have not made a reappearance at this end of the ground, which suggests if there's any rain around, it's it's not going to arrive for a while. You were talking about Neil Lennon and wearing a yellow helmet. I'm addicted to Jamie Spears, who has sent a photograph of said Mr. Ah, Lennon in yes. his yellow helmet. Good. So well done you. I was just starting to Yes, thank you very much. I was just, he you, says, here's the proof. Well, you, you sort of, what, you, can these things come to mind and then you think, am I imagining it? But Ollie Robinson in again bowls to Proctor, who's right in behind this, plays it back down the track. Robinson fills up his own bowling and there is no run. I, I, you just sort of suspect here that if, if, if North Hans can get themselves to tea, Andrew, I'm not saying they'll feel it's, I mean, it's nothing like job done because we've still got... 50 overs, we are not going to get 50 overs in here. No, I don't think so. I, I mean, that's, you know, I don't think that is going to happen. You know, we've got tea in 20 minutes, so after 4 o'clock they'll be back out, you know, probably sort of 45 overs to bowl. I just can't see that happening. Robinson, around the wicket, bowls, Proctor defends into the offside. By the same token, I guess, tea gives... You know, so it's a chance to regroup, to decide what the tactics are. Yeah, they, and it's very important from looking at it from a Northamptonshire point of view. Um, you know, two years ago, when they were in Division 1 and stayed up, which was the first time Northamptonshire had, had managed to do, to avoid relegation after one year in Division 1, um, part of the key to that was making themselves hard to beat. And they, you know, battled for a very good draw against Yorkshire, similarly against Surrey. And with eight points for a draw, it helped keep them up. Robinson, bowls to Proctor, who defends into the offside, no run. Now, last year, in contrast, um, they were not a difficult side to beat. They were rolling over um, with alacrity on some occasions and, and leaving us all of the Northamptonshire persuasion somewhat dispirited. Um, so they need to say right from the start, OK, we're going back to being, you know, if... We want to win, we want to be positive, we want to win matches, but if we're in a position where we can't win the match, and that, that this is clearly one of those, then we need to make sure that we're hard to beat and that we, we battle through and we've got the resilience to get the draw. Robinson on his way, bowls, he's on 399 wickets for Sussex, is Ollie Robinson. Come on Ollie, they say, it's changed from, come on Robbo. Robinson wanders back to his mark. Luke Proctor goes down and does some gardening. He's done well here, Luke Proctor. Throughout the match, 92 in the first innings. 26 off 74 balls, second time around. Three slips, point cover mid off. Mid on short leg. And a fine leg, Jack Carson down in front of us. Ollie Robinson is on his way. Bowls. Oh, lets that go, but the howl you can hear is from mainly the slip cordon, who clearly felt that didn't miss the off stump by very much. In which case, you have to see that's a good leave by Luke Proctor. <laughs> Funny game, isn't it? Really, that's a good leave. It, it, if he misjudges it, and you say, What a dreadful error of judgment! Yes, it's, it, you know, it's just you know, it's probably inches between either of those bits of commentary, really. John Simpson claps his gloves together. Hugh, how much he would like to start his Sussex career with a win? 
He waits. Robinson in bowls and Proctor is stoutly, steadfastly forward. Thou shalt not pass. From Luke Proctor, his back must look very wide to Sussex at the moment. And the skipper is doing what skippers do. He's battling away for his side. He's setting the example. Ollie Robinson has bowled nine overs, three maidens, taken one for 19. Northamptonshire are 85 for four. Keogh on 19. Proctor is on 26. A couple of milestones to tell you about. Harry Brook has reached 100 for Yorkshire off 69 balls against Leicestershire. Two sixes, 14 fours, so he hasn't a lot of running. Uh, and Yorkshire declared, as soon as he got his 100, 264 for six up at uh, Headingley. And um, at Lords, the fun just never stops. Middlesex now 645 for eight. Ryan Higgins, 221 not out. Here's Seals in, starting a fresh over to Rob Keogh. Plays that out into the covers and there's no run. Still a attacking field, as you would expect from Sussex. Three slips in and a forward short leg. Then nice inviting gap through the sort of the backward point region. There's a cover, extra cover, mid off, mid on. Another inviting gap through the onside and a long leg down on the boundary at the Cromwell Road end. A bit more cloud around than there was sort of 10, 15 minutes ago, but still fairly high. And here's Seals steaming in. Bowls to Keogh goes for a big firm-footed whoosh through the covers rather similar to the stroke that he got out to in the first innings this time he doesn't make contact but Sussex players I'm sure with the odd observation to make from the slip cordon now James Coles is warming up at third slip so I think Adrian may get his desire which is to get him into the attack and it seems it would seem to make sense based on how well he bowled in the first innings is Seals in again bowling to Rob Keogh this time he's nicely in behind that solidly in behind that plays it out into the covers and there's no run Ryan Higgins is out stumped off Kieran Carlson for 221 Middlesex batting on 645 for 9 Tom Helm at number 10 55 not out off for rain again at Edgbaston Worcestershire 295 for three. They've played there for, what, about 45 minutes today? Yeah. But they're off. Kent 217 for three against Somerset. So that's a nailed-on draw at Canterbury. Daniel Bell Drummond 68 not out. Seals in bowls to Keogh. Cracks that through the covers for four. That's a lovely shot. It was just a little bit of width. And Keogh latching onto it. And plays it away through the covers for four to the front of the members' pavilion. Takes Rob Keogh into the 20s, 23 to him. And Northamptonshire to 89 for four. And Joe Denley, one of the senior county cricketers around these days, 78 not out off 88, so he's enjoying himself this afternoon. Again, Somerset at Canterbury. Here's Seals running in again to Keogh, who's in behind that, playing it down to backward point. And there's no run. So Kent Somerset is now the only match actually in play at the moment in Division 1. Durham Hampshire abandoned without a ball. Bold Lancashire Surrey is also off. And Nottinghamshire losing heavily to Essex at Trent Bridge. And they're off for rain at Edgbaston between Warwickshire and Worcestershire. In Division 2, I mentioned Middlesex. 6.47 for 9 against Glamorgan. So 27 runs ahead. And Yorkshire just declared against Leicestershire 90 runs behind after Harry Brook got his 100. Seals bowls to Keogh down the leg side, trying to pick that up over towards what will be the new ladies' pavilion. But didn't make contact. Goes into the gloves of John Simpson, and that's the end of another over. Another one ticks by for Northamptonshire. 49 remaining now. It's 89 for four, 23 to Keogh, 26 to Proctor. As the wind howls around, it does, it? the that gables of that sounds more like November, doesn't it? Of stately Harms Manor. Mm. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James Coles is into the attack, as predicted by 
Radders, get the lottery numbers for Radders for this weekend. Um, I can see it when somebody's swinging their arms around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so James Coles, who bowled very well in the first innings and picked up three wickets, three for 45, and seemed to get more bounce um, than perhaps Jack Carson did. And he was talking, uh, James, about his trip to India with the England Lions over the winter, working alongside the likes of Graham Swan and Sang. You know, how that, that, that was one of the um, aspects of his game that was picked up on, that he, he can get a bit more bounce, James Coles. He's come over the wicket to Luke Proctor. We've got nine minutes to go until T. As in comes Coles. Coles, Proctor. Oh, well, that was just wide of first slip. I mean, I, I, it wasn't a chance, but it wasn't that far away from first slip. That's... Uh, I think Tom will stop in there. No, it's Tom Clark. Well, he's a brilliant fielder, Tom Clark. So I'm fairly certain that didn't go to hand. He was slightly behind Clark, but certainly it was an, an involuntary shot, I think, by Proctor. But nonetheless, goes to 30. North Ants are closing in steadily now on this lead of 107. 93 for four, led by these two experienced campaigners. Coles in. Oh, it was Proctor turns that to... Square leg filled it by Carson. And we welcome again listeners to Five Sports Extra to Hove. With the news that James Coles is bowling from the Cromwell Road in his left arm spin to the Northamptonshire skipper, Luke Proctor. And Proctor has a big swing at that, looking to dispatch that away on the leg side. The ball hits the thigh pad and bounces in front of him. Not out is the decision. Northamptonshire 93 for four. Kier on 23, Proctor on 30. Northamptonshire needing to get to 107 to make Sussex bat again. Coles in again, that's too short and played on the bounce into the gloves of Ollie Carter at short leg. They were in a good deal of trouble on 57 for four. Two wickets for Jaden Seals, one for Ollie Robinson, and one for Jack Carson. But these two experienced pros are just dragging Things back for Northamptonshire as Coles is in again and Proctor drives down the offside of the track and there is no run. A punch of a 39 between these two has steadied the Northamptonshire ship but there are still 48 overs remaining to be bowled today. Coles in again, bowls let go outside the off stump by Proctor and there is no run. So we've got seven minutes to go here until T. Northamptonshire 93 for four. We're listening to Five Sports Extra, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton, myself, Adrian Harms, alongside Andrew Rad. And you have to say that Sussex have really played most of the cricket in this match since sort of tea yesterday when they had that wonderful final session, basically doubling the score from uh, 176 for three to 351 for six at the close, carried on in similar vein this morning. And we're able to declare at 478 for nine. With Finn Hudson Prentice, 73 off 60. Danny Lamb, a quick 41. Jack Carson, 61 off 53. Ollie Robinson, 32, not out off 29. North Aperture attack made to look a bit ordinary. So the declaration coming just before lunch. And Sussex managing to nip out just in broad before lunch. Emilio Gay straight afterwards, brought out for naught. Gay for 20. Since then, North Aperture have lost Karen Nea for three, George Bartlett for 12. And as Adrian was saying, it's now been left to the, the, the captain, Luke Proctor, and the senior pro, Rob Keogh, to try and drag North Aperture out of this hole. Here's Jack Carson back into the attack, bowling his off spin round the wicket from this C end. And the first ball of the over is nudged away onto the leg side by... Rob Keogh for a single, 24 to him, 94 for four. Carson going for, was it 19 in an over, yes, conceding four boundaries. Yeah. Three to Keogh, one to Proctor, but you feel with this Kookaburra ball that the spinners need to be bowling when there's still a little bit of hardness in the ball. Round the wicket he comes again outside the off stump, left alone by the ever watchful Luke Proctor, slip in. Forward short leg, backward point, man sweeping on the cover boundary in front of the clock tower scoreboard. Extra cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and a deep backward square. Carson round the wicket, bowls to Proctor, who drives pleasantly. 
out into the covers, but straight to the man at extra cover. And there's no run. The blue sky over to our right, over towards the east. The forecast wasn't particularly optimistic for this afternoon, but we've got through so far. That ball's just a little bit shorter, a little bit quicker, and Proctor trying to run it down. Just manages to find the man at backward point, James Coles. In the sun hat, and there's no run. What a game James Coles has had here. Bat ball and in the field. Carlson in again, bowls to Proctor, who drives out into the covers. Once again, there's no run to be had. Coles making 78 with the bat in the Sussex innings. Picked up three wickets in the first innings. He's taken four catches, including an absolute screamer to get Karen Nea off the bowling of Ollie Robinson earlier this afternoon. He's had a steady game. He's been excellent, hasn't he? Here's Carson in again, flights that one up, brings Proctor forward, pushes to Silly Point, where it's fielded by Ollie Carter, and that is the end of another over. So 47 overs remaining now in the day. 94 for four, Northamptonshire. Still 13 behind. Keogh is 24, Proctor is 30, and as we've been saying for much of the afternoon, the first objective for Northamptonshire here is to, to wipe off the arrears, and then, of course... Whatever they make, Sussex have got to make, and then that's taking a bit more time out of the game. Yes, I can just see Proctor and Keogh just taking their time in the middle because the digital clock on the clock tower scoreboard away to our right hand side is showing 15.37, so three minutes to go until tea, and Rob Keogh is going to take a little bit more of that time by retaking his guard. There's a slip of a gully, a short leg, Backward point, sweeper on the cover boundary, short extra cover and a mid-off. And just two, sorry, three fielders on the leg side, a mid-on, a short leg, and a backward square leg. As in comes the left arm of James Coles, 20-year-old. He was 20 earlier on this month. As um, Radders was saying, batted beautifully yesterday before he well, they gave his wicket away for 78, hitting a long hop down the throat of mid-on. But he's in now, bowls and... Keo defends out in the offside. There is no run. He does rattle through his overs, James Cole. So there's an outside chance we might get another over in before T. Boot place. <laughs> Boot place time. Coles. That's a quick dig. Oh, has he bowled him? Hit it. He, there were well, well, I thought for a moment he bowled him, but then like, clearly the appeal was for LBW. It was a yeah, quick delivery. It was. It, it, it deceived Rob Keo. I think he just... What saved him there was I think he just got an inside edge on it, but it was... Oh dear, that was tight. Anxious moment. Coles again in bright sunshine. That short hammered away by Keo. That's a good shot. It's going to go away to the backward point boundary for four runs. There was too much whip there from James Coles. And Rob Keo has been very positive since he came in. Difficult situation in which to come in, but he now goes to 28 off 29 balls. In complete comparison to his skipper Luke Proctor, who's 30 off 87 balls. But both of them are very valuable innings as far as Northamptonshire are concerned. So the light aircraft makes it somewhere across the ground. Coles in again, and that probably ensures that boundary that we won't get another over before T. Clock showing 15.39. Rob Keogh passed 9,000 runs across all formats for Northamptonshire. That's a terrific effort. Coles in bowls to Keogh, who's forward, plays it straight back down the track. Sussex are going to try and get another over in here. Umpire Baldwin is making his way in at his normal speed. It says 15.39, and we are indeed going to get uh, another over before tea. So 46 overs left to be dull, but dulled, bold. I think almost inconceivable we're going to get all of those. The light here has gone very quickly um, in the evenings. Uh, but Sussex will still feel they're in with a shout. That being said, these two, Kyo and Proctor, have batted really well, adding 41 valuable runs for North Hands. Oh, it's cracking the flags at the moment. Beautiful sunny afternoon as the first ball of Carson's over. Finds Proctor playing off the back foot, just plays it into the ground in front of Slip, and there's no run. Yeah, if Rob Keogh can have a, a good year across all formats, go past 10,000 in all formats, then that is seriously something he then I think it's been like only 30 players I think it'd be the 31st to do it for Northamptonshire forward goes Proctor the next ball from Carson as the 
the wind howling around our effects, Mike. It needs private Fraser, really, doesn't it, to be saying we're doomed. <laughs> well, Northamptonshire not quite, but um, another couple of wickets might make uh, might make it interesting. Now, Jaden Seals just placing him with some care, just behind square on the leg side. Here's Carson in again. Ball short, pulled by Proctor for four. Just had to get past the man at mid-wicket. It's the shorter boundary out towards the members' pavilion, and that was short, and Proctor latched onto it, pulled it for four, 34 to him, and Northamptonshire to 102 for five behind. It's almost, um, Radders, as if Northamptonshire are targeted Jack Carson here. He's in, he's in his sixth over, he's gone for 36, he's going, you know, going over six and over. Here's Carson in again, with a slip and a silly point, bowls to Proctor, who nurdles that round the corner. Thinks about a single. There's a bit of hesitation. Kia was just waiting to see if it had gone past the man. Going to come back for two. And after wondering if there was a single there, in fact, as I say, they get two. Seals just treading water a little bit, running back towards the boundary at the Cromwell Road end, up the hill, of course. Two more to Proctor, who goes to 36. Made 92 in the first innings, of course. 104 for four. So Northamptonshire three runs behind. Here's Carson, and again flights that up and brings Proctor forward, plays it back down the pitch for Carson to field off his own bowling. Now, field changes again, and I think they're going to have another close catcher in for this last couple of balls of the over. They are indeed. So they now have a forward short leg, a slip and a silly point crowding Luke Proctor as Carson comes in and bowls to him and he goes off a thick outside edge it's running down towards the boundary at the Cromwell Road end but they'll only get a single James Coles comes round to field Proctor goes to 37 Northamptonshire to 105 for four and that is T T on the fourth and final day of this division two match between Sussex and Northamptonshire. Northamptonshire 105 for four at the break, so just two runs behind, four wickets down. We have, in theory at least, 45 overs to go if the weather and the light are kind. It's absolutely glorious at the moment, no problems at all. Lovely sunny afternoon. Sussex have bossed the session, but Northamptonshire still afloat. 105 for four, they trail by two. Andrew, thank you very much indeed. So there we are, the players make their way off to the pavilion in the corner of the ground. The weather has defied... The
Well, welcome back to Hove for the final session of the match here between Northamptonshire and Sussex. If you've uh, not been following the game throughout the day, Northamptonshire 105 for four. It means they trail Sussex by just two runs. We've got 45 overs left to be bowled today. In all reality, with the time now four o'clock, that would seem unlikely. That being said, yesterday we eventually called off at 10 to 7, so you never know. Um, but there's a lot of very dark cloud around Hove at the moment. We haven't had an interruption so far today, and let's hope it stays that way. But certainly to the north and east of the ground, the, 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 the sky does look very threatening. However, we're going to start after tea, and it's going to start with James Coles, who's running around the wicket and comes in and bowls to Luke Proctor, the Northamptonshire skipper who is playing a captain's innings and some. He's 37 not out of 94 balls. And he and Rob Keir came together when the score's 57 for four and are just sort of steering Northamptonshire towards safety. It's not job done yet, as in comes uh, Coles and Proctor plays this one away through uh, mid-wicket for a single. He goes to uh, 38 the total to 106 for four. It brings Rob Keogh on strike. Whereas Luke Proctor has taken 95 balls to get his 38. Rob Keogh has been uh, very adventurous since he came in. 28 of just 31 balls. Tried to wrestle the initiative away from Sussex. Coles is in. Keogh is full to a ball of good length and plays it onto the onside. And there is no run. There's an ooh and an ah. That delivery is bowled by James Coles. Two slips and a short leg in place. Coles in again, bowls. Flighted nicely, clipped by Keogh through uh, mid-wicket. Pick up a single, and that means that effectively Northamptonshire are now naught for four. <laughs> Put that way. Yes, yes, it, yes Sussex will have, to, will have to bat again, whatever happens. They will, and that will take time out of the game. A couple of overs, um, if we get to that eventuality. From here, I, I think Northamptonshire will continue in the same vein because the more runs they score, the longer it's going to take Sussex to get them. And so we go. In comes Coles, bowls to Proctor. Proctor plays that too short, fine leg. Certainly, the two bowlers who have caused a lot of problems have been Jaden Seals in particular, 
who's taken six in the match and two in this innings. Uh, and Ollie Robinson, who's only taken one in this innings. But when those two have been on it, it has looked a different game. Coles in again, bowls, and Proctor steers to short leg on the bounce. I hasten to add, there is no run at the end of the opening over after tea. It's another one ticked off as far as Northamptonshire are concerned. You are 107 for four. Rob Keogh is on 29. Luke Proctor is on 38. And James Coles figures three overs, no maidens, no wicket for 10. And it looks like we're going to get Danny Lamb. Middlesex, 655 all out at Lords. Middlesex's highest total at Lords. Um, and Glamorgan have just gone in again. For what must be one of, I would have thought, the less relevant little sessions of cricket of the season. Um, trailing by 35, two for no wicket in their second innings. But all sorts of records. You can imagine the uh, press box and the media centre at, uh, at Lords will be a buzz with all the different stats and factoids flying around. Rather less so here, so far. But 107 for four. So Northamptonshire level pegging at the moment. And Keogh, his first ball from Lamb, he plays it defensively back down the pitch. Bright sunshine now and is a quite a striking image because there's not a dark cloud over to the north, which I don't think is going to bother us because that will have gone. But the contrast between the bright sunshine here and the dark cloud over the other side of the flats, the other side of Cromwell Road, is uh, it's quite striking, rather beautiful as well. Two slips in, and two in front of Square on the leg side, as down the leg side, and Keogh has... Let me see if he's got any bat on that. No, he hasn't, but he's gone down for four leg buys, just clipped off the pad. They've, got, they've obviously got a plan to rob Keogh, um, and I've seen one or two other counties do this as well. Got players in front of Square on the onside. He just sometimes falls over a little bit and can play the ball in the air through there so that's obviously what they're thinking but in this case the leg side ball has just clipped off the pad and gone down for four leg buys and Northamptonshire are in the black 111 for four so they're four ahead mind you Nelson's had a, a good game so far so they're trying to get off that is Lamb in again bowls to Keogh on drives up to Seals at mid on and there's no run Yes, in the um, is it in the uh, the partnership, the Proctor Nayer partnership ended at 111 in the Northamptonshire first innings, and then wicket fell at 222 in that innings as well. So Nelson's having a decent game. Here's Lamb, bowls to Keogh defensively back down the pitch. No run. Lamb just loops the ball up to Jaden Seals. Uh, Chris Hutchins has been in touch on the Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. He says, he's enjoying the commentary and chat. He says, your effects Mike squeak reminds me a lot of sooty and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a little like that. That's a good observation, Chris. Oh, sooty, takes, takes us back a few years. Sooty Braden show band. Here comes Danny Lamb. Bowls to Rob Keogh. Pushes it out into the covers. And there's no run. Keogh now 29 off. 30 odd balls Luke Proctor coming up to 100 balls for his 38 but another valuable innings by Proctor I'm wondering if John Simpson's going to stand up to the stumps he just signalled towards the dressing room for something mm. we shall see maybe for the helmet yeah here's Lamb in bowls to Keogh turns that away just behind square on the leg side there's certainly one I think they'll come back for two yes they will Keogh will just have to get the hammer down a little bit, but he does so, and they complete two fairly comfortably. Takes Rob Keogh into the 30s, 31 off 39 balls, and at the end of the over, 113 for four Northamptonshire. So they are six runs ahead. We still have 43 overs remaining. Plenty of cloud around, but the weather fine at the moment. Yes, I'm just seeing who's not out on the field for Sussex, and I think it might be... It's the only Robinson out there because um, Archie Lenham huh? is back oh, yes. out after tea on 12th man duties. Uh, now, a helmet is being brought out for uh, John Simpson. Um, or a different helmet, maybe? I shall see. Because in fact, I've had a helmet on for James Coles. Oh, it's a helmet for someone else. It's a helmet for uh, Tom Haynes, who's very unusually um, in a slip. So there's... 
a ring of three men on the offside. There's sort of, in fact, there's four. There's Tom Clark at first slip, Tom Haynes at third slip, Tom Alsop at second, and there's a gully as well. And now Sean Hunter's come running out. He's come running out to take something else off. I don't know what that's about. That's taking a long time, isn't it? Sussex were really guilty of that last year. It takes an inordinate amount of time to bring out helmets and things, and in the end, they ended up losing points. I don't think John Simpson will let that happen. So they're all crouched around the batter. Then comes calls to Simpson, and is that a stumping? Simpson thought he'd got his man. Umpire Baldwin is unmoved. Smart bit of work. Very good bit of work. In fact, so that, that field for the left-hander is a slip, and then on the leg side, there's a leg slip, sort of a leg gully, and a short leg, and that was a short delivery by James Coles, and they were all looking to take evasive action. As Luke Proctor was swinging away on the leg side, but in the end didn't connect. Coles again. In and bowls, quick delivery, and Proctor helps that around the corner. They've taken one, they'll look for two. Archie Lenham, Lenham is racing in, and fields well, gets in a good throw, right over the top of the stumps to Simpson, and just keeps Luke Proctor to a single. He goes to 39. 114 for four. If it gets to half past four, I'm not dialing on my phone, Andrew. Will you give me a nudge? Because um, <laughs> I missed the half past three update. So well, I've got one to do at 22 minutes past oh, four. Not, twen not 21 or 23. Don't be late. 22 minutes past four. Coles again in and bowl. Short and punched away by Keo uh, through the covers. Finds Archie Lennon, who's been kept busy. You won't mind about that because it's a chilly out there at the moment. Uh, Keogh goes to 32, 115 for four. I can reveal exclusively that the only matches in which play is now taking place are Canterbury, here and Lords. So the south-east corner is doing all right, but yes. uh, no play anywhere else at the moment. Coles in again. Bowls. Proctor smothers the spin and plays onto the onside. No run. You can't account enough for how well Luke Proctor has played in this match. You know, Skipper's lead from the front, and he led it in the front in the first innings, making 92. And this 39 has come in exactly 100 balls, but it's the balls he's chewing up which are important here for Northamptonshire. Coles again in the bowls and turned onto the leg side. Well, if you think about it, a single. It's, a, it's a very good point you make. Um, he faced 225 balls in the first innings. He's played 101 here so far 326 so he's he's faced the equivalent of what 50 overs yeah. thereabouts James Coles in bowls to Keo. there's a loud appeal not quite sure what for the ball has ended up off the pad and ends up at short fine leg fielded by Jack Carson but the um, Luke Prots a call, Rob Keogh through for a leg by. That is the end of the over. 117 for four, 32 to Keogh, 40 to Proctor. So um, the Northamptonshire lead is 10, effectively 10 for four, with 42 overs left in the match. I mean, if it was a bright, sunny day, we'd be thinking, well, you know, we were going to get all 42 overs. This is far from done, but I, I rather suspect we're not going to get the full... 42 overs because you know a couple of wickets now and you know oh, who yeah. knows I mean Sussex will not have given this up nor should no 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 absolutely not no quite right but it's going to be Danny Lamb to continue from the C end at 117 for four two slips in place still a couple of men in front of square on the leg side on the driver that's a lovely stroke through the offside by Rob Keogh just stood tall punched it away again a bit of a trademark Keogh stroke and that races away to the boundary in front of the pavilion for four. Takes Rob Keogh to 36 and Northamptonshire to 121 for four. I know, you know, we, we all love a, love a stat, but it is interesting when you think, as say, Rob Keogh, you know, climbing up towards 10,000 runs, gone through past 9,000 in this innings across all formats for Northamptonshire. Here's Lamb in bowls to Keogh, plays it up to silly mid on. And uh, there's no run. James Cole's fielding there. Uh, you know, he's just sort of moving up past some of the players that a lot of supporters would say are the you know, all-time greats of the club. And he's, he's in fairly illustrious company being up there with some of the players that have gone past 10,000 for Northamptonshire. Still a long way to go before he reaches the likes of Bailey and Lamb and Larkins and Cook. It's again on the back foot. Keogh plays it up to mid-off and there's no run. But nevertheless, 
he's climbing up that list. And he's a player who I think one of those that probably, in retrospect, will look back and think of as a, as a real Northamptonshire stalwart. Say his 15th season as a first team cricketer with the same club. Wow. That's turned away by Keogh. That's a lovely shot away through mid wicket. Might scatter a few of the pigeons who are enjoying a bit of uh, tea on the outfield there. But that's raced away for four. And beautiful timing from Keogh. He goes up into the. Well, within reach of a half century. He's up into the 40s. And Northampton should have won 25 for four. 18 runs ahead. I think I put in his uh, piece I wrote for his testimonial brochure that these days, if somebody spends three years at the same county, they get a parchment scroll and a, a gold watch. So, yeah. to have been there for as long as, as Rob has. Turned away by Keo. More runs for him here as it goes down to long leg. They're going to come back for two. Again, positive stuff. Positive running from Rob Keo, who overtakes his captain. He's 42 now. Proctor 40. And uh, Northamptonshire won 20 Seven for four. And he's uh, not of the players that say, oh, I don't, I don't know. And if statistics aren't important, records aren't important, but they all love it, really. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. Absolutely. And, uh, they do. Rob's always very interested in the, uh, in the facts and figures. That's next ball from Lamb. Last ball of the over finds Keogh playing defensively up on the bounds to Coles at... Silly mid on, that's the end of the over. 127 for four, 42 to Keo, 40 to Proctor. I think I shall nip off if that's all right, Adrian, and do sure. my uh, do your bit. piece for uh, the afternoon show with Roberto, and uh, I'll be back with you presently. No problem at all. Uh, that's Andrew Wright from BBC Radio Northampton, and Andrew will be with us um, shortly. So the overs are just ticking by here. The lead is now 20. James Coles is going to carry on. In terms of a weather update, that really rather threatening crowd has sort of disappeared uh, uh, over the North Downs in the distance. We've now got a glimmer of sunshine across home. A very good afternoon and welcome to our listeners on Five Sports Extra. There's James Coles bowling his left arm spinners into the Northamptonshire skipper Luke Proctor, who plays straight back down the track. And there is no run. Northamptonshire here are 127 for four. It means they lead by 20, effectively 20 for four. 40 overs left in the day after this one from James Coles. As North Hans inch towards safety. Coles in again and Proctor is forward, playing down the onside of the track. Coles fields there is no run. There's a slip, um, almost a leg slip, a short leg. A backward square leg, mid wicket, mid on, deep mid wicket. As in comes Coles. Oh, there's a loud appeal. James Coles thinks he's got his man. Luke Proctor wanders away towards square leg. And then stands looking at James Coles. The offside field, there's the slip, short extra cover, and a backward point. Coles in his fifth over. In and bowls. And Proctor attempts to pull that one away on the leg side. Doesn't time it at all. And the ball ends up with Jack Carson just in front of us at backward square leg. There is no run. Give you the story of the day um, in a couple of moments' time as in comes Coles again. Bowles and uh, Proctor is forward, just plays down the offside of the track. There is no run. One more ball to go in this over. A maiden over so far by Coles. In fact, there's going to be a change in the field. The leg slip who is Tom Alsop, has now come in to silly mid-off as John Simpson, the Sussex skipper, puts the pressure on. Coles in again, that's short, and Proctor turns that to backward square leg, fielded by Jack Carson, and there is no run. Carson takes off his glasses, if to suggest he's going to bowl the next over from this, the C end of the ground. So Northampton, 127 for four. Rob Keogh on 42 of 47 balls. Luke Proctor on 40 off 107 balls. These two coming together when North Hants were in real trouble. 57 for four. Two wickets for Jaden Seals, taking him to six in the match. A most impressive debut 
Well, one for Ollie Robinson, his 399th first-class wicket for Sussex. The other taken by Jack Carlson, who indeed is going to bowl from the C end of the ground here at Hove, bowling up the slope. At, so at that stage, North Hans 57 for four and in real trouble. But these two experience campaigners have really steadied the ship as far as Northamptonshire are concerned. But still 40 overs to go in the match and Sussex won't be giving this up just yet. Um, earlier on today, Sussex really got a move on this morning. Finn Hudson Prentice 73, Jack Carson 61 in just 60, in, sorry, just 53 balls with three enormous sixes. And Sussex raced to 478 for nine, declared to give them a lead of 107. In comes Carson, bowls to Keo, who helps that ball around the corner down to uh, deep backward square. And Keo picks up a single. That's his 43rd run, 128 for four. Lots of cloud around Hove, but it's also very ble breezy. You can see the flags billowing away on the clock tower scoreboard away to our right-hand side. And as a result, the cloud is moving pretty quickly across the county ground here at Hove. Carson in again. Bowles, Proctor prods forward, plays to mid-wicket. And there is no run. Luke Proctor, who made 92 in the first innings for Northamptonshire, and a total of 371. Bob Haynes, the only centurion of the match so far, he made 133 in Sussex's first innings. As in comes Carson, bowls to Proctor, who's back and plays firmly into the covers, fielded by James Coles, who took the most brilliant catch at third slip uh, to dismiss uh, Karun Nair off the bowling of Ollie Robinson. It was one-handed. Carson again bowls, and Proctor hammers that out into the offside, picks up a single fielded on the cover boundary by Finn Hudson Prentice. One more to the total. Proctor goes to 41. Northamptonshire 129 for four, effectively at 22 for four. Yeah, it was a brilliant catch by Coles, low down to his left. Carson in again. Oh, it's a horrible ball. It's a full toss, and it very nearly deceived uh, Rob Keogh, and it, it suddenly deceived John Simpson behind the stumps because the ball has gone behind for a bye. One more to the total, 130 for four. That could be the first buy of the match, I think. Well, it's certainly deceived everybody. As Carson is coming around the wicket to uh, John Simpson. He's in and bowls. And there's a loud appeal and he's gone. And Luke Proctor is LBW to Jack Carson. Paul Baldwin's finger is up. And the stout, steady resistance of the Northamptonshire skipper, he's over. He's out for 41 in 111 balls. Northamptonshire, 130 for five, or put another way, effectively 23 for five, with 39 overs remaining in the match. Well, I was just saying in uh, my update next door that uh, if Northamptonshire has lost a couple of quick wickets, then Sussex are still going to think they're in business, and that's absolutely the case. There's still a lot of time left in this game. Northamptonshire are in front now, which of course means that you're going to lose a bit between innings. Uh, but if, if Sussex could make quick work of the rest of this Northamptonshire order, Lewis McManus uh, is still to come. Of course, he played well in the first inning, safe Zabe who also batted nicely for 35. So there's a bit of batting to come, but that's a big wicket, and it's broken a partnership that uh, Northamptonshire were hoping would just see them into calm waters. Um, but it proves again, you see, that Northamptonshire, as far as Nelson is concerned, we laugh at these cricketing superstitions, but um, they had a 111-run partnership, so in the first innings, broken at Nelson. The wicket fell at 2.22, and now Proctor's gone after... Facing 111 balls, so go. Nelson is doing the stuff for um, Sussex at the moment. But yeah, I mean Northamptonshire still—they just need to bat for another what 20 overs. Yes, and it, it's job done. But they've Actually, still got—they've still got to do it. Yeah, and a bit of credit to John Simpson. It's his first game in charge of Sussex. I think he's juggled the bowling around well, and he t he's brought back Jack Carson, who before T went for 18 in sorry 19 in an over. So. Brave to begin back, and he's got the wicket. And Luke Proctor having faced, what, 336 balls in the match. Which just goes to underline his vital importance to this Northamptonshire side. 
And he certainly started off the season well. Uh, Coles is in bowling to Rob Keogh, who plays on the bounce to second slip, fielded by Tom Allsop. There are two slips in place, a short leg. The coast fielders, as Simpson puts the pressure on, Coles in again. Bowls to Keo, who plays firmly down the track. James Coles, just 20 years of age, went away with the England Lions in the winter. Spoken already in this match about working with Graham Swan and how much it's helped develop his bowling. Oh, that's a horrible ball. That's short and thumped away by Keo, but straight to Lamb at short extra cover. There is no run. And he's turning himself into a very accomplished all rounder, James Coles. He made 78 very attractive looking runs in the Sussex innings. Coles in again, bowls Keo prods forward, plays to uh, mid on, where it was going to be fielded by Ollie Robinson, but Ollie Carter got there ahead of him. Interesting that Robinson's back on the pitch because he was off for a while and he's bowled in bursts together with Jade and Seals, and I suspect we'll see those two again if the light holds. Coles in again, bowls to Keo, that's down the leg side, clipped away nicely by uh, Rob Keo, and that's going to run away. For four runs and Keogh goes to 47 and Northamptonshire to 134 for five. So Luke Proctor has basically soaked up 56 overs yep, in this match which is pretty darn good when it comes to setting the tone for the season. Yeah, absolutely. Coles, final ball of the over. Short, hammered, oh, hammered to short X recover, and he's been put down. Rob Keogh has been given a life. It was driven very hard by Rob Keogh. That's Danny Lamb in there at short X recover. He rings his right hand. It was going like a rocket, but it was a chance. It's gone down. Danny Lamb has clearly hurt his hand. Um, it looks like he's almost hurt his wrist, actually. It did go very, very fast, but it's a chance. You probably heard the cry of catch. And if another wicket had gone there, North Ants really would have been in trouble. Oh, Keogh yes. survives on 47, but he's had a life. And the slightly ironic thing there is that we were making the observation earlier that one of the differences between the sides in this match is that Sussex have caught very, very well um, across the, the first four or well, first three and a bit days of this match. They put very little down. North Hampshire were somewhat fallible in the field and uh, the coaching staff will be hoping it's not a repeat of last season when North just catching was was frankly poor in all the competitions but uh, yeah that could be a costly one got to be Carson to continue from this C end with a slip forward short leg and a silly point bowls to the left-handed Zabe who chops that away past silly point uh, to the man sweeping on the cover boundary and Safe Zabe is off the mark. 135 for five. North Aperture leading by 28 with 37 overs to go after this one in progress. The sky's getting darker. Lost the sunshine at least for now. Here's Carson bowls to Keo, who had got into the stance to play the reverse sweep and seeing this, Carson didn't let go of the ball. So signalled as a dead ball by umpire Baldwin. Carson has another go. Comes in and Keogh still goes for the reverse sweep. It's looped up and he's been caught as he... There's an appeal. Not out, says umpire Baldwin. They're appealing for the catch. And, yeah, Rob Keogh's rubbing his arm to suggest that that's what it came off. But, well, the ball before, he was obviously was attempting the premeditated reverse sweep to the extent that the bowler pulled out. He still played the shot and it could easily have cost him his wicket as it just looped up, was caught at slip. Big appeal, but not out, says umpire Baldwin. Nervy times for Northamptonshire as Carson trots in again. Bowls to Keogh, sweeps, orthodox sweep this time and it goes down to backward square for a single. Takes Keogh to 48 and Northamptonshire to 136 for five. Rob Keogh in his testimonial year. Obviously keen to have a big year for 
the county for which he's played now for 15 years. And here's Carson. Round the wicket to the left-handed Zabe. And Zabe pushing forward out to the man at Silly Point. Understandably, Sussex just putting a little bit of pressure on the new batter. They've got a slip of Silly Point. Forward short leg. The Seagulls wheeling overhead here on the Sussex coast. And here's Carson in bowls. Flights that one up to safe Zabe. He has a little fiddle at it outside the off stump. Simpson, for once, doesn't take it cleanly. Bowlers that we've spoken to, the spinners in this match, say with the Cookerborough ball, it's, it's fine bowling spin with it when it's still got a bit of hardness. And that's short, and it's cut away by Zabe, and he's going to get another run as it goes out to the man sweeping on the cover boundary. One more to save Zabe, who pinches the bowling as well. That's two to Zabe, 48 to Keogh and Northamptonshire, 137 for five at the end of the over, so 30 runs ahead with 37 overs remaining. And there, well, just a quick look at what's happening in the very few other games still going on as well. At Lords, Glamorgan are 10 for one in their second innings after Middlesex were finally dismissed for 655. And um, Ethan Bamber has picked up an early wicket there for Middlesex as that one obviously goes to a draw. And at Canterbury, Kent 279 for three against Somerset. So Kent 160 runs ahead. And that one will clearly be drawn up at the St. Lawrence ground. Centuries for both Daniel Bell Drummond and Joe Denley. 102 not out and 106 not out respectively. Zabe is going to be facing the left arm spin of James Coles. Four men round the bat plus the keeper. That's short. It's swept by Zabe. It's going down to the boundary. A deep backward square. And it crosses the rope just in front of our commentary position. Hits the white picket fence around the ground as substitute fielder Archie Lenham runs down to retrieve. And that's four to Zabe. He goes to six and Northamptonshire to 141 for five for Zabe facing the left arm spin of James Coles Sussex have a slip silly point a forward short leg and a backward short leg so four fielders around the bat plus keeper John Simpson over the wicket comes Coles bowls short and caught brilliantly caught at slip as Zabe attempts to run that one down towards third man, Tom Clark, who is a terrific slip fielder, took a reflex catch away to his left. That is an excellent catch. It's not a great shot, and I think Zabe Zabe knows that. By the way, he slapped his pads with his bat, but Zabe has gone. Sussex still in with a chance here. Zabe goes for six, and Northamptonshire, well, they're still in strife here and they just need a little bit of calmness they're 141 for six so they're only 34 runs ahead four wickets standing and there are still 36 overs remaining after this if of course the light holds and the rain stays away Lewis McManus will be the next man in and McManus was excellent in the first innings having had a, an awful 2023 and uh, went away to, to India at his own initiative and his own expense during the winter to get his game back in working order again. Played very well for 50 in the first innings. He's vice captain of this Red Bull side and Northamptonshire needs something from him now. But that was a terrific catch by Tom Clark. And again, we make the point, as Adrian Harms rejoins me, that Sussex have caught generally really well in this match and rather better than Northamptonshire and there's a great example of it there that said in the circumstances I'm sure Safe Sable will think that probably wasn't the wisest stroke to play no I would agree and James Coles picking up his fourth wicket of the match um, the young all-rounder I'm just looking at the weather here Andrew I mean the, the cloud is lower and grayer than it's been for much of the day and just hearing the weather forecast um, it does seem as if some uh, some rain may... I mean, certainly I don't think Sussex could bowl the quicks here because I think we'll be off for bad light. Uh, Paul Farbrace, the Sussex head coach, is making his way around the boundary. And he's very brave, Paul. He's got a pair of shorts on. Because <laughs> uh, it is chilly. 
Now Sussex have got three, four men around the bat. There's uh, two slips, um, a silly mid-off and a short leg. Lewis McManus, who batted really well in the first innings for his 50. 141 for six. Coles around the wicket. In and bowls to McManus, who plays onto the onside. They've gone through for a very sharp single, fielded there by Jaden Seals, who gets in the throw. But Rob Keogh running to the danger end is safely home. Manus is on his way. Rob Keogh, old pro that he is, might just be having a little word in the ear of uh, Suri Shanmugam and uh, Paul Baldwin. It's getting a bit Noah's Ark, isn't it? Yes. Well, it's certainly. He'll, he will be saying. It is, it, it is gloomy, there's no question about that. But it's been a terrific effort by Sussex here this afternoon to take this game as deep as they have. In comes Coles in again and bowls and Keo defends down the offside of the track, fielded right in close by Tom Haynes. Well, since T yesterday, Sussex have bossed this game, haven't they? Really? Yes, they have. They, they have. Coles in again. Keo plays again, fielded in there by Tom Haynes. Yes, Sussex have been very positive since T yesterday. Coles in again. Bowles forward comes Keo. Plays to short leg, fielded there by Ollie Carter. You and ours will tell you that Sussex are thinking every ball they might get a wicket here. Yeah, just to sort of pick up on that, yesterday evening, Sussex scored 175 in 31 overs. Um, and really put themselves in a position whereby they could accelerate again this morning. They closed on 478 for nine. It just took 99 overs for them to get those runs this morning. Jack Carson, 61 of 53 balls with three sixes. And Finn Hudson Prentice making 73, which gave Sussex this lead of 107. And they've sort of worked their way through the Northamptonshire order. Whether they'll have enough time or not, and whether the weather will relent long enough, We'll have to wait and see, but it certainly is a final day that I don't think we were really expecting. No, absolutely not. Certainly not the amount of cricket that we've had, as you say, given the uh, given the weather forecast. It's got the radar on it. There is rain around, but it's quite a long way away to the west, and I'm not entirely sure it's coming in this direction. I think Portsmouth's getting a bit of a soaking at the moment, but um, it's OK here. It is, however, a bit gloomy. But Manus is going to be facing the offspin of Jack Carson with a forward short leg, backward short leg and a slip. Here's Carson over the wicket to McManus who gets on top of the bounce, plays it hard into the ground, bounces up nicely for man under the lid at forward short leg to field. But the cloud has now come in, quite low cloud, it was a bit hazy early, the breeze has gone up as well. Here's Carson bowling to McManus who again turns it past short leg. This time he's going to get certainly one run if I think he's going to get a couple as it goes out towards deep mid wicket and it's fielded out there by who's it out there um, um, let's I think that is young Henry Rogers I yes, think he's on the field he's so I've got a couple of substitutes on the field it's very gloomy now it is 144 for six Carson in Bowls to McManus, who plays it again past the man at short leg up to Coles at mid wicket. And there's no run, so Northampton just lead is 37, 35 overs to go after this one. But it is starting to get a bit murky. Here's Carson in bowls, a little bit short of a length, and McManus nudging it round the corner between the two short legs. Picks up a single down to deep backward square. McManus to four. And Northamptonshire to 145 for six. Northamptonshire have had the better of recent championship encounters between these two. They've won five of the last six going back to 2017, but not going to win this one. Sussex still with a chance, but a lot depends, well, an awful lot depends on the weather. And also on Rob Keogh and Lewis McManus. Keogh sweeps, appeal for a stumping as it goes down the leg side, not out, says umpire Suri Shambagam. John Simpson and the close field is obligingly remaking the wicket, so the umpire doesn't have to. Saves a second or two. Here's Carson. 
in again. Bowls to Keogh, who sweeps, heading down towards deep backward square. And he's going to pick up another single. Takes Keogh to 49. That's the end of the over. Another one ticks by. Keogh to 49. But Manus is four. And Northamptonshire 146 for six. So they lead by 39. 35 overs to go. The umpires are having a chat. Yes, they are. Um, uh, they will presumably have a look at the the meter because they will have taken a reading. Batters are having a little consultation. They're now looking at the light at the other end, at the far end, the Cromwell Road end, and just having a look at what it tells them. We're staying on, I think. Yeah, it, uh, to, to me it doesn't look quite as dark as it was when we came off certainly the first couple of days, but... I don't necessarily trust my, <laughs> trust my no. eyesight above the the technology, but it it it, it's, it's, it is murky though, and, and I don't think it's going to take much of a deterioration before we're marching off, and um, that will be just about that because it's probably unlikely that it's going to get any better. James Coles is coming in in the meantime around the wicket. He bowls to uh, Keo, who plays this nicely through backward point. He's going to pick up a couple of runs. Danny Lamb comes chasing down to the. Um, third man boundary that prevents anything more than a couple of runs and that's a half century for Rob Keir and I can see the Northamptonshire players on the balcony up in the distance applauding because it's potentially a match saving half century from Rob Keir 51 off 63 balls in 88 minutes with eight boundaries for Keo. Must be something about the first championship match of the season he made a hundred two years ago in the first match and a hundred last year in the first match and a 50 here. Yeah. Coles. Coles, that's down the leg side. That's going to be four runs. It was a loose delivery by James Coles, who scratches away at the crease with his boot. It was down the leg side, and it's just clipped away for four by Rob Keogh. Northamptonshire to 152 for six. And what that does do, of course, every run is vital here because they're runs that Sussex have got to get, and Sussex running out of time. The lead is 45. Still 34 overs left in the match after this one, although I doubt with the light we're going to get near that. Coles in again. Bowles, Keogh is forward, plays to the offside. No run. Just to give you an idea this morning of Sussex and the progress they made. Uh, 127 in 19 overs. They scored as Sussex set up a declaration on 478 for nine. In comes Coles. Keogh drives into the covers fielded by Ollie Robinson. I think certainly there is no run. I certainly think, Andrew, if, if Sussex turn to the quicks, uh, we will go off. We'll be off, there's, yeah. there's, there's yeah. no way you can face Seals and Robinson in this light. Coles again around the wicket in the bowls and Keogh is out. He's LBW and James Coles clenches his fists and Sussex have taken a seventh wicket and James Coles Picks up his fifth wicket of the match. Rob Keogh is on his way for 55. Northamptonshire, 152 for seven. They lead by 45, but they've only got three wickets remaining. Well, if the weather holds, <laughs> that's the big question here on... Well, isn't it just... I just watched the replay of that, and Keogh was hit on the front pad. He was pushing forward. It's the sort of one that, you know, years ago, you didn't necessarily... C given, but in these days of DRS, and, and to be honest, he didn't get that much of a stride in, uh, and it looked it looked pretty straight. Having watched the uh, the replay, I don't think Rob Keogh has got too much to complain about there. If anything, he didn't seem particularly mithered. I think that's just a good bit of bowling. And now, well, all things are possible, Adrian. And well, yeah, I was just looking at the tail. I mean, the tail did wag for Northamptonshire in the first innings. Uh, ben Sanderson made 27 and Chris Tremaine 22, but it was a slightly different situation then. But, I, I, Joe, I just wonder whether the tail enders might decide to play the way they played in the first innings, which yeah. was attacking because, um, as I say, every run is more runs Sussex will need to get. It's going to take more time out of the game. Well, what a finish we've got here at Hove on Five Sports Extra, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton, Adrian Harms and Andrew Rad here in the gloom. Although, having said that, I'm looking away to the west. And although it's still cloudy, the skies are a little brighter 
Um, and it would be a shame if the rain were to intervene as we've reached at such an exciting part of the match. James Coles in his eighth over. Two for 28, you heard the, the, the cry there, come on Colsey. James Coles who was away with, um, the, as I say, the lines in the winter worked very hard with Graham Swan on his bowling. He made 78 very impressive runs and his bowling has been terrific in this match. He's now coming into bowl to the new man, who is uh, Michael Finan, who was out for just a single in the first innings. Coles in and bowls, and Finan lets that one go outside the off stump. Taken by the new Sussex skipper, John Simpson. And Paul Farbrace, who's uh, doing his little lap of the ground, joining the applause there. He and, can't sit and, still, and, Paul Farbrace. Well, why he? not? This is boiled up into a fascinating final day, final session. And, well, we've seen... Essex see off Nottinghamshire today in Division 1. Can Sussex claim what will be their first championship win over Northamptonshire for 10 years? Since 2014 here at Hove, which was a very bad season for Northamptonshire. That was in Division 1, of course. And uh, Northamptonshire went through the season without winning a game. And they lost here down at Hove. Can they dig deep and dig themselves out of this hole? Here's Carson. In and bowls to McManus, who's stretching forward, playing it defensively out into the offside. The noise level, and no surprise, has built appreciably out of the middle. You can hear on our effects, Mike, there's lots of bubble out in the middle, and why not? Sussex are on top. Can they finish the job? Here's Carson in again, bowls quicker ball, and McManus turns it on the bounce to forward short leg. No run, 152 for seven. Northamptonshire 45 runs ahead. And they're just tweaking the field here, I think, to give McManus the single if he wants it. They're putting mid-wicket right back, but they've still got three up round the bat. Forward short leg, backward short leg and slippers. Quicker ball from Carson. McManus playing slightly half cock. Pushes it again to Ollie Carter under the lid at forward short leg. 160 all out is the cry from the field. Well, who knows? It might be. 152 for seven at the moment is Carson in again. Oh. Who the ball is rolling out towards mid wicket, and in fact, it's been fielded at mid wicket without any intervention from the batter. It's just slipped out of Jack Carson's hand. <laughs> dead, dead ball signalled by umpire Baldwin. And here's Carson. In again, bowls and back defensive goes the resolute Lewis McManus. And, well, how many balls in the over? We've had four now, so the field suddenly converging. Though everybody wants to make friends with Lewis McManus, try and stop the single, so they have a go at Finan at the other end. Finan on debut for North Amplitude. Didn't shine with the ball. Can he shine with the bat? Here's Carson. In again, quicker ball again. And McManus playing back defensively up to mid on and there's no run in Finn Hudson Prentice fielding there and quickly getting the ball back to Jack Carson they know there's a bit of time pressure on this potentially not least because of the light and they're just trying to get as many balls in as they can here's Carson in again bowls to McManus turns it on the bounce to forward short leg another over negotiated by Northamptonshire by Lewis McManus he's four fine and yet to get off the mark 152 for seven Northamptonshire are 45 runs ahead. We have 33 overs remaining. And interestingly, Adrian, we can't see, obviously, behind us in our commentary position, but the glass of the block of flats opposite is quite, it's suddenly started to get a little bit brighter, which yes, would suggest has. that the weather behind us, which I think is where it's coming from, yeah, it's coming from the southwest, maybe yeah. is getting a wee bit brighter. James Coles comes in from the Cromwell Road end, down the hill for Sussex Fielders, and he's out, he's caught a slip, that's a terrific catch by uh, Tom Allsop. Michael Finan driving away, not to the pitch of the ball, thick outside edge, it went very quickly to Tom Allsop, who did the rest, and Northampton now 152 for 8. They lead by 45. James Coles picks up his third wicket of the innings, his sixth of the match. 
And to make Sussex Day even more complete, it is definitely getting a little brighter here it is. at Hove. Well, I, I, they don't do the they don't have man of the match in these championship matches, but I think James Coles will be no, I agree. pretty much nailed on. What a match he's had. He, he's batted well, he's bowled well, he's caught well, exceptionally well. In fact, the catch to get Karen Nair, which is obviously a, a big, big wicket. And, well, you, I mean, you called it, Adrian, because you did say you thought he probably may even have come into the attack a little bit earlier than he did. Bowled very well in the first innings. But John Simpson bringing him into the attack. He's now picked up three in the innings, three for 28 in his ninth over. And uh, 45 is the lead. Yeah, and I think credit to John Simpson, who I think has done very well throughout the match. The new Sussex skipper signed from Middlesex in the winter. Uh, Paul Brace, Paul Farbrace, giving him the opportunity to skip at the side, and he's juggled the bowling, the bowling around really well. And re referring to James Coles, he went away, as I say, with the England Lions. Was talk about how the bounce was something that Graham Swan spotted that he had a little different. And um, well, as you say, he's bowled really well here. Six wickets in the match. The new man coming out is Ben Sanderson, who, um, well, he likes to get on with it, and with a lead of just 45 I wonder whether that might not be a bad tactic he made 27 in the first innings uh, but if the weather holds here Sussex will really fancy their chances 152 for eight four Sussex fielders around the bat Coles is in around the wicket bowls to Sanderson who's forward and I think every ball now is going to be followed by an ooh and an ah <laughs> from the <laughs> from the Sussex field really is county cricket at its best He's definitely getting lighter. Coles is in. Bowles, Sanderson forward, plays on the bounce to Sinny Bidoff, fielded there by Tom Haynes, who made 133 for Sussex in the Sussex innings of 478 for nine declared. Coles again, off half a dozen paces in Bowles. Sanderson plays that carefully uh, to cover point where it's fielded by Jack Carson. Coles very quickly back to his mark. Now there's a change in the field as Sussex are looking to give Ben Sanderson uh, the single. The number 10, Lewis McManus at the other end, can only watch as Coles is in again and Sanderson is calmly forward, plays it down the onside of the track and there is no run. Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk if you'd like to join our cricket conversation as McManus and Sanderson have a little chat in the middle of the wicket. Live cricket on the BBC, BBC Five Sports Extra, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Every ball, every game, every county from now until the end of the season. As James Coles comes in and then goes back again. And it gets lighter still. Coles in and bowls. Sanderson is up to the task and is placed in front of him. There is no run. End of the over. 152 for eight. 32 overs remaining in the day. We will lose two of those overs if we get to the stage of a change in innings. Very quickly uh, elsewhere. Uh, no play at all in the matches at Durham or Derbyshire. Both of those matches abandoned without a ball being bowled. Um, down at Canterbury, just across the border from here, the match has been drawn between Kent and Somerset. Kent finishing 290 for four, a century there for Joe Denley. No play today at Old Trafford in the game between Lancashire and Surrey. That ends in a draw. Terrific win for Essex at Trentbridge, uh, thrashing Nottinghamshire by 254. And it finished in a draw at Edgbaston, the game between Warwickshire and Worcestershire. And much the same, I suspect, coming up at Lords in the game between Middlesex and Glamorgan. Here's Carson starting another over two. Lewis McManus, who blocks the first ball out into the offside. John Simpson comes round from behind the stumps to retrieve. And there is a very welcome sight for Sussex out there at the moment, which is shadows. Mm. It's almost the sun out now. And the cloud is just skirting around to the north of us. And here's Carson in again. Bowls to McManus. Stretches right forward to smother the spin. Goes out into the offside. And there's no run. Hayden Spencer has been in touch who is the chaplain to Northampton Town Football Club, loves his cricket as well, and saying hasn't been able to listen all day, but should he switch off now? Well, <laughs> it depends what you want to hear, but um, a bit of divine intervention for Northamptonshire probably wouldn't go amiss at the moment. As Carson comes in, flights that one up, and McManus is equal to it. 
pushing back up the pitch for Carson to field. Joe, you know, the light is almost such that Sussex could bowl the quicks here. Yeah, they could. I think they would. They would get certainly get away with it now. Three balls gone in the over. Uh, field is changing around. They may just be going to bring another close catcher in. Uh, field are going across from the offside onto the onside, out to deep mid wicket. And yes, they're going to have bring in another close fielder. So Sussex now with slip, silly point, forward short leg, backward short leg. Four up round the bat, plus the keeper. Here's Carson. In and bowls. Quicker ball left alone by McManus. And I suspect that didn't miss the off stump by a great deal. McManus at least showing a bit of judgment there and suddenly four balls gone. The field comes he suddenly in. got all his friends back again. All of the Sussex fielders, those that are not certainly in the close catching cordon, are now in looking to save one and keep Lewis McManus at this end and have a go at Ben Sanders from the start of the next over. The next ball is punched up to mid on off the back foot by McManus. Fielded by Hudson Prentice. And there's no run, so one ball left in the over. McManus would love a single. Mm. There's clearly some chatter going on out there. John Simpson is just rearranging the field, and Lewis McManus quite within his rights just to walk away and look exactly where this field is being placed. I have to say also, in, in passing, you have to spare a thought for Michael Fine. And, um, this is his North Aperture debut, and it, it hasn't been a, a great game for him, sadly. That's the game. That's cricket can do. Next ball to McManus is turned away on the onside, but there's not a single to be had. Fielded by Ollie Robinson, and that's the end of another Jack Carson over, who's bowled now. 11 overs, one maiden, two for 42, having picked up the wickets of Luke Proctor, which was a vital one, and George Bartlett, 152 for eight. But Manus is four, Sanderson yet to get off the mark. The most relevant statistic on the board to our right is that there are 31 overs remaining. And you're listening to live cricket on Five Sports Extra, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Myself, Adrian Harms, alongside Andrew Rad. Um, and not an outcome that we foresaw this morning, particularly with a very inclement weather forecast. But so far, the rain has stayed away. Coles comes in, bowls to Sanderson, whose forward plays into the offside. There is no run. Four men around the bat. Mindful of people joining us all the time and. The story of the day, Sussex declaring on 478 for nine. As James Coles is in, Bowles Sanderson is forward. Plays onto the onside, there is no run. Sussex scoring 127 this morning in 19 overs. Led by Jack Carson, who made 61 in 53 balls with three sixes. Uh, Coles again, quicker delivery. Sanderson plays on the bounce to Haynes, who's in there at silly mid-off, and there is no run. Sussex declaring with a lead of 107 and they've slowly worked their way through the Northamptonshire order. Coles, and again, a little bit of an extra bounce from James Coles. Sanderson plays it well, he played it with soft hands. Desperately trying to avoid one of those four men who are encamped around the bat. Coles. Oh, Sanderson drives, it's in the air, but he's going to get a single. Sussex won't mind too much about that because it means that Ben Sanderson is now, um, well, he's at the non-striker's end, but there's only one ball left in the over, 153 for eight. I don't think Sussex will mind in the slightest. It's yeah. a slightly interesting decision, that one, I think. Take the run. The lead is 46 for Northamptonshire. Coles again. Bowls and right behind that is McManus, plays it back to James Coles. There is no run. Another over slips by. 30 overs remaining in the match. Just to finish up with those scores elsewhere, uh, the match is drawn at Headingley. A century for Harry Brook in very quick time today. Uh, Leicestershire finishing their second innings 26 without loss. So a draw there. Uh, it's heading for a draw at Lords where uh, Glamorgan are 28 for two in their second innings, uh, trailing Middlesex by seven runs. Uh, Sam Northeast 14 not out, having made 330 of the highest first-class score at, uh, in the first innings. But really, it's all about this game at Hove. And Ollie Robinson has just trotted off the field. He's now up yeah. in the changing room, so one imagines that may be bowling boots time for 
Ollie Robinson before coming back into the attack. Ben Sanderson on strike to Jack Carson. And there's a big appeal for LBW as Sanderson pushes half forward. I think, and we're not directly behind the line, my feeling was he might just have got himself outside the line there. It was worth a shout. But not out, says umpire Baldwin. 153 for eight. 46 runs is the lead. But still a lot of time to go. Here's Carson in bowls to Sanderson again. He's hit on the pad this time. The appeal was not as vociferous, convinced or convincing. But Sanderson with plenty of company. Four fielders plus the keeper around the bat. There's Jack Carson in his 12th over in bowls to Sanderson. This time the ball finds the middle of the bat, plays it back down the pitch. Carson fields. Messages starting to come in from Northamptonshire supporters who are somewhat exercised by what's been going on. Here's Carson in again. Bowls to Sanderson who jabs down on that. Such a hurried little defensive stroke. Carson firing that one in. And Sanderson was on the back foot. And my goodness, that almost got through. Inside edge saved him. Can't take your eyes off this one. Here's Carson. In again, bowls to Sanderson, who pushes forward this time, and it goes to short leg, and there's no run. Now, with one ball to go in the over, John Simpson dispatches his fielders out and give Ben Sanderson the single. Surely, surely they won't, surely take, it. They won't take it. But you never know. <laughs> We'd have said that uh, at the back end of the previous over, but... Uh, Anyhow, Sanderson made a mark with the bat in the first innings with a quick 27. He needs to play a, probably a rather different innings this time. Here's Carson. In and bowls to Sanderson, who drives pleasantly. It, it goes out to deep extra cover, who's sort of tracking back, thinking, come on, Ben, have a go. But he's not. He's not going to run. End of the over. So McManus will have the strike for the start of the next one. A maiden to Carson, uh, who's now picked up three. Sorry, two for 48 off 12. James Cole's about to start his 11th over. It's 153 for eight. The lead is 46. Uh, good afternoon to Peter Short, who's listening to us at Northants Legend. He says, I've not missed these nerves, but you haven't. Um, us on the screen with the stream listening and the weather minute by minute update on the other screen. I don't think the weather at the moment is going to be an issue. James Coles is coming in from the Cromwell Road end. He's bowling down the slope to Lewis McManus, the Northamptonshire wicketkeeper who plays solidly straight back down the track. Coles fills off his own bowling, and there is no run. He's in his 11th over, James Coles. Figures of 3 for 29. Four men crowded around the bat. Coles is in again. Forward comes McManus, plays into the hands of Haynes, who's in there very short, very tight, at silly mid-off. And again, there is no run. Ollie Robinson is back on the field, we suspect, with his bowling boots on, and he's doing a couple of warm-ups at the far end of the ground. Coles again. Oh, he beats McManus outside the off stump. That was the quicker one. And it thumped into the gloves of John Simpson. McManus wanders away in the direction of square leg. He could cut the tension with a knife here at Hove. Coles. In again, bowls and turned onto the leg side by McManus. Jaden Seals, who's had a terrific debut for Sussex, has to run to deep mid wicket, picks up the ball, throws in. Two more to the total. McManus goes to six, 155 for eight. The lead is 48 for Northamptonshire. Jaden Seals, who's picked up six wickets in the match, and bowled with great pace. And if it were lighter, um, I suspect that John Simpson will be thinking or giving careful consideration I think, he, bowling. I think he might well be you know Adrian, I don't think the light's that bad at the moment. Coles in again bowls and that's going to run away I think for four byes and all runs gratefully received here by Northampton let's wait for the umpire's signal they are leg byes trying to spear that one in down the leg side was James Coles his run away for four, total goes to 159 for eight 
It's a little Brucey bonus, isn't it, for it Northamptonshire? Is. It just yeah. pushes. These are all runs Sussex will need to make if indeed they could take these final two wickets. 28 overs remaining after this one. We would lose two for the change in between innings. Coles in again, short, hammered away, threw a bit off. That's going to race all the way up to the far end of the ground at the Cromwell Road end for a boundary. The ball goes over the ropes. Good shot by Lewis McManus. He goes to 10. Northamptonshire to 163 for eight, which means the lead now is 56. And I've They can pick up these last two wickets. That's played defensively by Sanderson. Just runs down off thick outside edge perfectly safely into the slip cordon. Five round the bat now. Slip, forward short leg, silly point, leg slip, leg gully. And that's turned away by Sanderson. That was a little bit short. And worked away into the onside by Ben Sanderson. 167 for eight, 60 runs. The lead now, 27 overs to go after the one in progress. The batters have a, a chat in mid-pitch. Come on, Jackie, is the cry. Well, he's picked up two wickets so far, Jack Carson. He's in his 13th over, two for 52. Sanderson will not be rushed, that is for sure. Just taking his time and settles into his stance. As Carson Bowles flights that one right up, driven again by Sanderson. This time doesn't miss the man at mid-off. So that's four balls gone in the over. There's Carson. And again, Bowles to Sanderson once again flights it up, this time... Sanderson drives straight back down the pitch. Fielded by Carson. And now one assumes they will be quite happy to give Sanderson the single. One ball to go in the over. Here's Carson. It's short. And Sanderson on the back foot. Plays it back down the pitch. Carson fields. End of the over. 167 for 8. McManus is 10. Sanderson is 5. The lead is 60. There are 27 overs to go. The light is OK. Yeah, it's not great. I don't, it's, I don't. it's not wonderful, but it's. I think at the moment it's, uh, it's certainly playable. Weather, I was just sort of thinking that probably in the previous couple of overs it might just be good enough if they wanted to bring the seamers back. Now, I'm not sure. It's marginal. Live cricket here on Five Sports Extra, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Northampton. In comes Coles. Oh, that kept low, and it was well kept out by Lewis McManus, who plays the ball to mid on, fielded by Jaden Sills. Adrian Harms and Andrew Rad on commentary duty. What a cliffhanger of a game in this first round of county championship matches. Four men around the back. Bat Coles in McManus's forward strokes carefully into the covers, picked up by Robinson. And there is no run, but Manus on 10, Sanderson on 5. 26 overs remaining in the match after this one. Coles again, around the wicket. <sighs> Sanderson is forward, sorry, but Manus is forward, plays it into the offside and picks up a single. Was in the air momentarily, but it completely bisected the fielder 
in the gully and the fielder at City mid off. And Sanderson takes guard. I, I mean, a couple of lusty blows here from Sanderson. A, a, a worth awaiting gold for Northamptonshire. Coles in. Well, Sanderson, though, defends stoutly right in behind that place into the offside. Fielded at City mid off by Tom Haynes. And there is no run. Two more balls remaining in the over. Sussex spread the field a little. In fact, quite a lot now. Three fielders have gone back towards the rope, allowing Sanderson the single. As in comes James Coles. Sanderson is forward, plays it back down the track. Coles fields of his own bowling, and there is no run. This situation really set up by Sussex from tea time onwards yesterday. They, they were very positive the way they went about their business. Coles in bowls, Sanderson plays on the bounce to Ollie Carter. There is no run, it's the end of the but now I can see Jaden Seals is warming up at Mon and I think that Sussex are going to turn to the quick style. This is obviously a, a risk as far as John Simpson is concerned because this is, I think, a, all I would say from the middle, they can see the weather that's coming from behind yes. where Andrew and I are sitting. They can see out to sea to the English Channel, which is about 400 yards behind the commentary box and it's possible that John Simpson can see some clearer weather coming in. Yeah, I think this is a calculated risk, and I, I, I think it's it's worth a go. I, I really do, um, from the point of view of trying to force a win. It's a question of whether Jaden Seals, who's, well, he's had a really good first game for Sussex, hasn't he? A couple of wickets in this innings. Wonderful sight for him earlier on, just after lunch, when he knocked the off stump of Emilio Gay flying out of the ground it's pretty i mean that 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 we can see coming over the back of our commentary position coming up from the south is is fairly bright oh, it is. i think we're okay at least as i say for the time being 26 overs remaining and Jaden seals back into the attack nine overs one maiden two for 38 he's going to be bowling from the cn three slips in and he's bowling to lewis mcmanus north aperture's vice captain and Seals is in, outside the off stump, and that bounces horribly mm. for John Simpson, who sort of took it on the half volley and took it very well. That was a difficult take, and he made it look very easy. As far as what's happening elsewhere is concerned, match drawn at Canterbury. Kent, 290 for four declared, with Daniel Bell Drummond, 107 not out. Joe Denley made 110. So that is a draw at Canterbury. Here, Sussex win still possible. Next ball from Seals is played defensively by McManus out into the covers. There would have been an easy single had they wanted it. They don't. The field now, three slips in place. They have a deep point on the boundary in front of the members' pavilion. An extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, deep square just in front about five yards in from the boundary in front of the clock tower scoreboard and a long leg down in the northeast corner of the ground Cromwell Road end of the ground so there would be a single pretty much anywhere if McManus wanted it which at the moment he doesn't his seals in bowls to McManus outside the off stump doesn't need to play it just, and doesn't I just wonder Andrew sometimes in this situation I can't believe McManus is going to take a single to Jaden Seals. So I just wonder whether you're better in having everybody around the bat, really. Yeah. You know, try and put some pressure on McManus, because at the minute he's got a free reign. There's no one in front of the batting close at all. In fact, now, with three balls gone, John Simpson is bringing in the field, certainly on the offside. Well, we are now the only championship match in progress. And what a cracker we've got yeah. here. Great start to uh, the season. Well, wonderful start to the season. We've been saying how lucky we've been to get so much cricket. Um, a round of matches that's obviously been fairly depressing for spectators in some parts of the country. And this boiling up to what could be a fascinating finish is Seals in bowls and McManus running it down into the slip cordon. And there's no run. And the umpire, sorry, Shunmagam, is going across. I'm not quite sure why to point, whether it's 
I don't know, maybe he's just distracted by... The, there's no fielder in his, no. in his way, but he's decided to go across. I can, see, now, um, I can see Ollie Robinson warming up as well, Andrew. Yeah. I think we're going to get pace from both ends. Well, I think yeah. we are now. They are just changing the field. <laughs> Lewis McManus is now waving to the dressing room. And what are we going to have? A forward short leg is going to go in, I think, for McManus. There's, um, there's a pile of helmets behind yes, John Simpson. It's like a sort of a helmet depot immediately behind the Sussex captain in there. They've got a couple of them out, throwing them around like rugby balls at the moment, at the end of which we have two slips, a leg slip, and a forward short leg. Yes. And Ollie Robinson is helping Jade Seal set the field and is moving the man that was at cover round to backward point. With two balls left in the over, but Manus on strike and seals round the wicket to him, short, Ooh, that and quick. that was a quick bouncer from Jaden Seals, and McManus played it well, swayed out of harm's way, and the great thing is there's not a, let's be honest, there's not a huge crowd in here, but those that are here mm. are really getting into this, yeah. and there's a few in particular in the main stand over to our left who are muffled up against the chill, but they are really enjoying this. There's nothing like the sight of a genuinely quick bowler. That's no. tremendous stuff from Jaden Sills. Orange soles of his boots visible as he runs in bowls. Another short ball to McManus, who I think he wore one for the team there. Just took it somewhere on the body. But that's the end of another over. And McManus survives it. 11 to him, 5 to Sanderson. 1 6 8 for 8. Northamptonshire are 61 runs ahead. There are 25 overs now remaining. And um, just a hint of are you being served? Glass of water for Mr. Granger. Glass of water for Mr. McManus. James Sales is out there on the field at the moment, just um, offering a, a glass of water to the vice captain. And it is indeed going to be Ollie Robinson coming back into the attack from the Cromwell Road end. And he's going to be running down the hill. Ollie Robinson, nine overs, three maidens, one for 19. He's taken 399 first-class wickets, all of those uh, for Sussex. Um, and a message on Twitter. Good evening, Adrian and Andrew. It's a nail-biting match at home. I'm watching on the live stream. Thanks, says Philip Gabbage in Wolverton in Milton Keynes. Thank you, uh, Philip, for getting in touch. You can email us, sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk. You can tweet at Old Man Rad, R A Double D, or at BBC uh, Sussex Sport. Ollie Robinson running down the hill from the Cromwell Road end bowls to Ben Sanderson, who's forward. And the ooh in the R was because the ball was in the air for a little while as it found its way towards short leg, but it bounced. And there is no run. You're listening to live cricket on the BBC from Five Sports Extra, BBC Radio Sussex, and BBC Radio Northampton. Every ball, every game right through the season. And now Paul Baldwin has gone from the, the other side yes. across to point. May have been, I think, possibly the man at forward short leg would be obscuring his uh, his view partially. Robinson. It, oh, he bowls him! Middle stump knocked out of the ground. 400 first-class wickets for Ollie Robinson. And what a sight that is. Ben Sanderson, middle stump is out of the ground, a ninth wicket goes down for Northamptonshire, 168 for nine, it means the lead is 61, and if the light holds, and that is the big if, Sussex could be closing in on a quite extraordinary victory here at the county ground. Well, I'll tell you what, there's absolutely no doubt about that. When the middle pole goes for a walk, you've got to go, and that's a cracking bit of bowling from... Ollie Robinson and Ben Sanderson's resistance. He was there for about half an hour, faced 27 balls for his five runs, but his middle stump not flying by Ollie Robinson. And now Chris Tremaine, the Australian, coming out to join Vice-Captain Lewis McManus. The lead, 61. Where are we now? 24 overs to go after this, so we've always got to be knocking two off. But at the moment... If this last wicket falls quickly, then Sussex will have, on the face of it, a fairly straightforward chase if 
the light holds. Yeah, definitely. A lot of questions asked about Ollie Robinson. We spoke to Ollie last week in the press conference. The media were here in force because he's had a difficult time over the last year, but he's come back in this game, he's running hard, and the longer this game has gone, the more it's looked like the old Ollie Robinson. With due respect to Ben Sanderson, uh, clearly he was a tail ender, but you know, he, he just looked to be something back to his best. And he was saying, Ollie Robinson, how he, you know, he was glad to be back at home. He just wants to play cricket. And that's his 400th first class wicket. So, Chris Tremaine is the last man in. Three slips, a leg slip, a short leg. Robinson on his way down the hill from the Cromwell Road end. He bowls and Tremaine places firmly on the leg side, fielded by the athletic Jaden Seals, the tall Trinidadian. And there is no run. I was trying to work out what the time will be in Sydney at the moment because uh, yeah. Chris Tremaine's Uncle Mark has been on to us yes. various times throughout the match and has been following proceedings back home in Sydney. I don't know if he's still listening now, but... Uh, well, he's got a chance to make a name for himself here, Chris Tremaine. Robinson is back to his mark and already running in. Bowls to Tremaine, who digs a good delivery out for Molly Robinson. It was a Yorker right up in the block hole, and there is no one. What a start to the county championship season this is. Whether if Sussex win, if it's a draw, whatever, it's been a terrific advert for the game, and it's... It's been a wonderful four days entertainment, despite losing pretty much a day's play with rain on days one and two. Two slips, silly mid off, short leg, leg slip, Robinson down the hill, bowls to Tremaine, who lets the ball go by outside of the off stump. But we've also had listeners, Andrew, from literally around the world. We've had well, we've in China, in Australia, Cambodia, Laos, Bahamas, <laughs> yes, we do. Florida. Um, we've had Joff Archer's stepdad listening over in Barbados. Yes. We've had listeners in Berlin. Eastbourne. <laughs> yeah, Banks Hill, <laughs> Milton Keynes. <laughs> I think we've even had Cornwall. All these, all these exotic locations. Yeah, that's right. But it's, uh, well, it proves that the county championship matters, doesn't it? It does. To an awful lot of people around the world. Robinson in again, bowls to Tremaine, who's right in behind that. Credit there to Chris Tremaine because a fired up Holly Robinson down the hill at Hove is not easy to face, but he sees out the over, which he does 168 for nine. As the score goes off of the main scoreboard, they're just showing that wicket taken by uh, Ollie Robinson. That's a, that's a great sight as a I bet Ollie Robinson's there. quite happy to have that one on, on repeat. Just put that one on loop. Yeah, particularly but, when it's your 400th. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's an important milestone. So, weather update. Um, we've almost given up with this today. I mean, there is some heavy cloud drifting across over behind it. It looks like there's some brighter, lighter skies. But can Jaden Seals finish off this Northamptonshire readings? If you're Brooke Yannis here, do you think to yourself, do you think, you know, a quick 15, 20 runs, or is it about chewing? I think it's probably still about chewing up overs at I this stage. I think it is. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really difficult call now for, for Lewis McManus, but it's, is it worth the it's risk and reward again, isn't it? Is it worth the risk? I, I don't know. I just feel he's probably got to trust... Chris Tremaine is a very experienced first-class cricketer. He's got a first-class 100. Here's Jaden Seals. Round the wicket, bowls to McManus. In behind that, plays it up on the onside, and there's no run. Ollie Carter, who's under the the shin, under the, the helmet and with the shin pads on at forward short leg, retrieves. I'm just wondering how many North Aptitude supporters are going to be thinking about Southampton 2022, right at the back end of the 2022 campaign, when Northamptonshire were trying to hang on for the draw against Hampshire and we knew the rain was coming and it was coming over Telegraph Wood and you could see it and we got it on the radar come back to that in a second as Seals runs in and bowls to McManus who plays that nicely down to backward point and there's no run to be had and North Aperture probably realistically had to face another three, four balls at the most to hang on because the rain was already starting to to spit um, and Jack White was bowled and Northamptonshire lost and by the time the players got back to the pavilion it was siling down <laughs> and was still siling down an hour and a half later when I left the ground but um, exciting stuff likewise here is Seals in bowl short and McManus ducks underneath it 
goes through again on the half volley to John Simpson and takes it very well. It just occurs to me, Andrew, we were speaking to John Philby, the Sussex chair yesterday. Sussex have decided this season that they will not use floodlights in county championship cricket. Several reasons, I won't go through them all, but one of those, it's cost something like £150 an hour to keep these lights on. But also Sussex feel that the game should be played in the light with red ball cricket. So there will be no floodlights here at Hove this season. Here's Seals in bowls again to McManus, sure. who tucks that away past mid wickets. A long, long chase for two fielders, one from mid off and Ollie Cox from forward short leg, but they're going to settle for two. Two more to McManus. He's 13. Northamptonshire 170 for nine. The lead now 63. 22 overs to go after this one in progress. So it, it would be ironic yes, if, it, 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 if, if, if suddenly the players come off for bad light and, and the lights can't be used because once that decision has been made, they cannot be used for the whole season. That, let's, <laughs> from a Sussex point of view, let's hope that isn't the case. I was going to say the natives might might get decidedly restless if they're denied. Sussex are denied victory here anyway. Long way off. Here's Seals in bowls. And McManus ducked underneath that. It was a short ball, but it didn't get up very much. No, and... Didn't. McManus was, I would suggest, almost below the height of the stumps. It was almost like a sort of limbo dancer job. But he managed to get everything out of danger. And there's now one ball to go in the over. So he would dearly love the single. Certainly, you would think one possibly on the leg side. But Seals, now he's switching his line of attack, having challenged... But Manus from around the wicket, he's now switching to over the wicket. And here he is, running in away from us from the sea end. Balls to McManus outside the off stump. McManus leaves it alone. That's the end of another over. He's 13. Chris Tremaine yet to get off the mark. Northamptonshire are 170 for nine. And as the scoreboard very helpfully tells us, Northamptonshire lead by 63. One wicket in hand. 22 overs to go. Where's your money? <laughs> We're listening to County Cricket here on Five Sports Extra, BBC Radio Sussex and BBC Radio Northampton. Adrian Harms and Andrew Rad. What a start to the County Championship season. People joining us all the time just want to keep you right up to date. No play at all um, over the four days in the game that's at Durham and Derbyshire in this round of matches. I'll give you the other results in a moment, but James Coles is back into the attack, bowling his spin. Ollie Robinson out of the attack as forward comes Tremaine. Plays oh. onto the leg side. There is no run. Is that a sign that the light is fading again? I, or, yeah, maybe swap the, the seamers over, get seals down the hill. Not sure. Coles. Three wickets to his name. Six in the match bowls to Tremaine, who's forward. Punches into the covers, fielded by Robinson. Or maybe they feel that Tremaine, against the seam, is more likely to just put a big front dog down there and block it. And you've actually got to think about it a little bit more with the, with the spinner on. Coles. And again, Tremaine forward. Plays it straight back down the track. Coles fields off his own bowling. Actually, and I know you'll, I should be accused of wishful thinking, but it, it is actually getting a wee bit darker. Yeah, again. it is. It is which could be that John Simpson saw that coming in from his position on the field. Coles again, Tremaine is forward, plays it down the offside of the track. Two balls remaining in the over. 170 for nine, yes, you can see the numbers on the scoreboard are just getting a little, a little dimmer as the... In comes Coles, and Tremaine plays that to Tom Wallstop on the bounce in the gully. There is no run, five balls gone in the over. I fancy a quicker one here from James Coles. Let's see. Comes in off half a dozen paces. Bowls. Oh, and a bit more bounce. It was the quicker one past the outside edge taken by Simpson. There is no run. A very quick over from James Coles. 170 for nine. 22 overs remaining. We will lose two of those for a change of innings. Let's just rattle through these other results. Uh, the game between Kent and Somerset at Canterbury was drawn centuries there for Joe Denley and Daniel Bell Drummond. No play at all at Old Trafford today. That game between Lancashire and Surrey drawn. Terrific win for Essex by 254 runs at Trent Bridge. Six wickets there for Sam Cook. Uh, Essex go top of the county championship and a draw at Edgbaston in the game between Warwickshire and Worcestershire.
Uh, the game at Lords inevitably ending in a draw, Glamorgan finishing 31 for two um, after Middlesex fall out for 655. A double century there for Ryan Higgins and a wonderful century um, up at um, Headingley today for Harry Brook, uh, but in a drawn game. You Yorkshire against Leicestershire. Now this is interesting because Jack Carson is back into the attack. The light has definitely got worse again in the last five minutes and I think this is really good captaincy by John Simpson. He's, you know, he's trying to juggle taking a wicket with looking at the conditions and... Um, it's not, it's no, no, nobody ever said it was an easy job did they? <laughs> Captaining in, no. in county cricket in this sort of situation it's just fascinating. The permutations are almost endless which is one of the joys of this great game of ours. Why we keep coming back for more. Here's Carson in bowls. Turned away through the short legs by Lewis McManus. It was in the air for a second or two. There are two men in there at short leg. And it just, just managed to bisect them. Crumbs. There's one in front of square, two behind square, and a slip, and a silly point. Carson in bowls to McManus, who plays back. Up on the onside again, it's fielded by Ollie Carter at forward short leg. Other than that, it's a deep backward point on the boundary. Long, well, mid on, deep mid off really, about 10 yards in from the fence. Similarly mid on and a mid wicket. Carson in, bowls to McManus, who blocks another one. Drops it down at his feet. Carter retrieves. Got a message through from... Um, Philip Doyle, which I'll um, share with you in a moment. Here's Carson in bowls, and he plays back McManus. Very solid. Face now, what, 43 balls for his 13 runs. North Aperture's vice captain made 50 in the first innings. And now, with four balls gone, the field closes in to try and stop the single. So they can have a go at Chris Tremaine at the start of the next over. Carson from the CN, bowls short McManus plays back punches it back down the pitch, Carson fields off his own bowling and it is getting a little bit gloomier no it is, most definitely and well the, the start of this over the North Aperture 12th man Gus Miller came out with um, with drinks for the two batters just mm. to try and waste a bit more time and Chris Tremaine obviously gasping for a drink after facing 10 balls, but um, there we go. But Manus is not going to be hurried. And here's Carson. In again, bowls to McManus, who stretches right forward, gets to the pitch of the ball, smothers the spin, opens the face, runs it down to seals at backward point. Another over, ticks by. 170 for nine. The lead is still... 63 and there are now 21 overs remaining Philip says he is currently praying and I hope I get this pronunciation right to Tlaloc Ooh. the Aztec rain god <laughs> I, I'm just watching here because mm -hmm. the umpires have conferred in the middle of the pitch uh, we are staying on for the time being which is good news as far as um, Sussex are concerned but it is very gloomy and last night, we, we were here till 10 to 7 last night, but it really did get very gloomy yes, very quickly. James Coles, around the wicket, comes in and bowls. Oh, that was a, I don't know if that was a chance. I don't know if you got a hand to it. Tom Haynes in there at silly mid-off. It was a leading edge. Haynes threw himself, goalkeeper style at that. Couldn't get a hand to it. It was in the air, wasn't it? It was. Not easy for the fielders to pick up at the moment, to be fair. Coles again. In and bowls, and forward comes Tremaine. That's the other thing, often when you are in the field in light like this, you don't know where the ball is coming from, so it can be very tricky. The light is poor now. We are on the cusp, I think. Coles again, around the wicket, bowls, and forward comes Tremaine. Coles solidly. trotting back to his mark, isn't he? They've got to tr they're conscious they need to try and get every ball in that they can. In comes... Coles again, Tremaine drives into the covers. There is no run. We've got a lot of messages have come in. Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. Jane in Shoreham says, thanks to everyone for the commentary. What an exciting finish. Come on, Sussex. 
Coles in bowls to Tremaine plays into the offside there is no run Callum says absolutely glued to this online quickly it's best well it certainly is and Ollie on the Isle of Man says come on umps because <laughs> he's of course a Northamptonshire supporter <laughs> We've, we must say thank you to all the inter all the interaction we've had in this match. It's been brilliant. Yes, There's yes. so much contact and people being kind and getting in touch with us and raising talking points. It's absolutely brilliant. Coles in again. Bowls played by Tremaine down the track. There is no run. It's a maiden over, which is almost irrelevant in the scheme of things. 170 for nine. We're sort of slightly struggling. Well, I so say looking at the scoreboard, the lights ought to be quite bright. Strangely, they're not. They're a little dim, but, I mean, it is definitely, definitely very gloomy here. The umpires are having another look, and I think they're taking another metre reading. Yes, they are. The metres are and out. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't go off, which would be a dreadful shame at such an important juncture in the match. And... They'll, they'll, they'll be getting people to... Um, it was cars are parked at the far end of the Cromwell Road ground to put, put the headlights on. Oh, we're going off. Yeah. We're going off. Well, I, to be fair, it was as dark as this yesterday when we went off. I'm not surprised the Sussex lads, you can almost see their shoulders slump as they make their way off the ground. Um, there are some brighter skies away to the west. The problem where we're sitting in our commentary box here, we don't know what's drifting in from the English Channel, which is behind us. But, um, well, we'll have to see how things pan out over the next... Yeah, I don't think this is necessarily the end. Um, I was going to say it, it is perhaps the beginning of the end, but that's, uh, that's quoting yes. a, a rather different occasion. Um, 20 overs, so... We'll start to lose them We'll from start now. to lose them from now, um, as it's now, what, 5.35 local time. And I mentioned that for our listeners in Cambodia, Macau and all points west. So, uh, yeah, we can't... You would feel that, especially with Northamptonshire still with a wicket to fall, we can't afford Sussex to lose that many overs. But to be, fond, you know, to be honest, if they find themselves saying, well, right, we've got to try and chase 70 in eight overs, they're going to go for it, aren't they? Yeah, uh, totally. It's funny, isn't it? We said earlier on today that if Sussex needed to get 100 in 10 overs, they'll, they'll give it the charge. Well, the players are making their way off. A couple of other emails have come in, which I will read. David's been in touch. He says, a fantastic start to the season, but a bit unfortunate that we aren't using the floodlights for county matches this season. He says in uh, brackets, so I do understand the decision, by the way. Um, Jason says, hi, could you tell me why we can't have a reserve day in the county championship? Well, I think because of the schedule, to be honest, uh, Jason, Sussex uh, got to Leicester on Friday, so, you know, there just isn't room in the schedule to build in an extra day. Uh, Jackie Pelling says, been listening and half watching the feed from my home office all day today. It's good to see the boys playing so well. And huge congratulations to Ollie Robinson for his 400th wicket. Looking very much to the season. Uh, says Jackie, thank you, Jackie, who's in sunny Polgate, which is just down the coast from here. Uh, Martin in a cloudy high wickham. Congratulations to Ollie. The county championship is alive and well. Uh, Paul Gid says, if we don't win, no floodlight. <laughs> says, <laughs> says Paul. <laughs> um, well, the umps, to be fair, are, are staying out there. There's no question of them coming off the, the field. They're out there with the, uh, the ground staff. And I think, you know, it's probably not a bad moment to say that I think um, the, the two umpires, Paul Baldwin and Sorry, Sean McGann have, have actually had no, they have. pretty good games, um, both in terms of um, decisions, but I think generally their willingness to play as much as is possible given the conditions and the, and the requirements, to be fair to both sides. I think they've got the game on when possible, um, and they've only come off when it, when it really is no yeah. longer fit. I think, I think they've, they've done pretty well, because this hasn't, this sort of game is just not easy is it no. anybody that's done any umpiring at any level will know even a club match it's difficult when you've got the light not great and rain around and but they've, they've done a really good job and again you have to say how well the you know the job that the ground staff did to actually get us any play on the first no, day i would agree uh, bob pook has been in touch he says what a good finish to the game and thank um well he, he says thank you well it's, it's just a pleasure to do this job um, for the commentary, whatever happens, Sussex are top of the division. Well, that's correct. Sussex will take 15 points from this game if we do finish like this. 
They would take 24, 23 if they were to win it. Northamptonshire will take 13. 13. Um, uh, slightly worryingly, the ground staff are making their way down to is this end of the ground, which is where the covers are. Um, and they don't usually do that unless there is rain around. What would happen if suddenly Sussex took a wicket yep. uh, and were left 70 to win in I don't know, 12 overs? But the light wasn't good. I guess you know it's the umpire's call, and Sussex wanted well, to stay is, on. Well, it is now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so they would, they would. They would I mean, my that. understanding is that it, it's it's down to the reading, isn't it? They've yes, they, they've taken, taken the, reading. the reading. So it doesn't matter what the situation is, if the light isn't playable, um, the light isn't playable. That said, certainly a couple of years ago, and we actually we touched on it earlier in the commentary today, Adrian, about Northamptonshire's match at uh, Cheltenham. Uh, two years ago, which, which boiled up into a fascinating finish. Um, both sides in with a good chance. Northampton got there in the end by a couple of wickets, thanks to a fantastic innings from Ryan Rickleton, who was uh, with Northampton at the time. But Gloucestershire had the chance to win it as well. And the light wasn't great in that last afternoon, but the, the umpires just sort of got on with it, um, which, was ev which everyone was more than happy about, because both teams are in with a a shout. Now, it's going to be a bit different here. Um, Actually, I'm just looking at the, for pretty much the first time in the match, the flags on the clock tower scoreboard are pretty much limp to their masts. And, you know, that means that we just haven't got any wind now to blow this heavy cloud away. Well, I have a funny feeling, uh, Adrian, that in fact the North Amplature flag has been has been taken down. I think you're right. Well, the Sussex flag is listed to them. You're um, right, it has gone. Yeah, I would imagine it, it, it's probably to allow the, the score of Terry Owen to make a, 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 speedy, a, a speedy getaway if, if we don't get back on. Um, another reading being taken. Fair, I, I agree with you, Andrew. I think fair play to the umpires here. They're, they're giving this every chance. And on the first time, I, I went out for the, uh, for the toss and I was actually really surprised how wet it was. So the umpires have, have given this game every chance, and I think they deserve a good deal of credit. Well, I mean, you look at, just looked when we were here on that first morning at the amount of water that was being deposited over the boundary line by the blotter in, uh, in the charge of uh, Ben Gibson and his, and his team, um, and the amount of, you know, of, of water that was being taken off the playing area um, was extraordinary. Um, it looked... With, you know, from the naked eye, the spectators would say, well, it's all right, you know, there's no pools of standing water, but you could see the amount of moisture and how high the water table is. So to get play on on the first day, as I say, I think reflected great credit on, on all concerned. Um, but unfortunately, you know, ultimately, we're in the hands of, um, um, I don't wish to sort of reopen another argument that we've had, or discussion that we've had at various points during this game, as to whether with having you know, lost time we should be starting earlier totally because if we'd started at 10.30 yesterday and 10.30 this morning when conditions were ideal we'd have had an extra hour's cricket another 16, 17 overs and we may be looking at rather a different scenario to, to where we are that's, at the moment that's a great point and it was a point John Philby made when he was here yesterday the Sussex chair and I think we all totally endorse that it does seem ludicrous that we're adding on additional time and overs at the end of a day's play and you know, let's face it we've only just gone the clocks have only just gone forward well and, and the other issue of course is is the fact that and then you know again this is one that um, you could discuss uh, for the rest of the evening but uh, you know playing county championship cricket uh, in the beginning of april before the uh, before the masters has even been played <laughs> which starts on Thursday, I think. Thursday, yes. um, Neil's been in touch. Neil Monham's been in touch. This is a really gripping match. Great advert for county cricket. Hope they get on again, uh, says Neil. Well, so do we all. Uh, Michael's been in touch. Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. He says, I'm cynical about early season starts, but what a start. Um, I don't like the artificiality of floodlights and the way it causes an imbalance stroke distortion in the game. No research carried out on this, effects of swing, etc., etc. Interesting point that, Michael, because that was a point that mm. John Philby was making as well yesterday. I mean, there is a cost implication. Um, 150 pounds an hour here, the lights are on. And what the problem is, when the lights come on, they have to, the, the, the bulbs go out if the light gets better, but the lights have to stay on because they take a while to warm up. And John was explaining if you, the only way to get over that is to have LED lights 
and that will cost a million pounds to happen here at Hove. So that's clearly out the question. And he did make the point as well that there's a feeling that maybe it slightly does distort uh, things. Uh, the Sussex lads are now making their way up the pavilion steps, which doesn't seem that encouraging. I mean, they'll be able to see what's coming in weather-wise. Yeah, they were just kicking a ball around, weren't they, just in front of the, the pavilion. And, and that's great. You know, they, they, they were there showing that they wanted to get out there and, uh, and, and play the game. But, you know, they have now ventured up the steps well of course there was yeah because there was this um, discussion and, and it certainly did did the you know did the rounds and the circuit a couple of years ago about um, why batting under floodlights is so difficult against a red ball and I heard all sorts of uh, suggestions being put forward about the fact that the, the floodlights warm the air and so it uh, it makes the ball swing more and for every person that you had putting that forward, you had somebody else saying this is absolute balderdash, mm. um, and the, you know there's there's nothing to it at all. It is purely an issue with the fact that it's it's dark. Um, so I I don't know, but I think it will be very interesting as we go around the circuit, as as we're saying in, in the fortunate position of doing, to see how many counties. Uh, I've decided to do that. I mean, I, I don't know what, what the decision has been at Northampton. Just say we haven't played a home game yet. That'll be starting on uh, on Friday at, at Montage Road against Middlesex. But um, I know last year there were certainly comments about putting the lights on for half an hour and the amount of um, time and energy it was and cost, of course, as you, as you mentioned already. And that was being talked about last year. Um, so I wouldn't be at all surprised if a number of counties didn't decide to go down that particular route. The umps are still out there. We, you know, I think it's important that we keep you up to date with what's happening. Um, the umpires are there. The ground staff are poised. The players have now gone inside. We've been off for 12 minutes by my reckoning. So we are starting to lose overs. But as I say, we're not at the point yet where the game has, has gone, the chance of a result has gone, if it suddenly brightened up and we were able to get back on. That said, looking over to our left, which is where I think the, the weather's coming from, and you know this ground a mm. hundred times better than I do, Adrian, I th it does look a bit murky. Yeah, it does. And I, I, and I think the trouble is here, we saw this even on the day when there was good light during the day, that once we got to around about six o'clock, quarter past six, the, the, the light really did start to deteriorate. Yeah, yeah. And, and Andrew's just showing me his his um, map here of the um, the radar, and it is there is there is rain around rain around. Uh, it's still to, it's to the west of us. It's more towards Portsmouth and yeah. Chichester, but it's sort of starting to it's starting to inch its way towards Brighton. But and that's that's probably going to take a little while to to get so. here. But um, but if it is rain and it's low cloud, it's it's not going to help the light. The the flag has just picked up a bit. It's just billowing a little now, but. Um, I, I rather fear that we may not get back on here. I mean, it's been a terrific day's cricket. It, I mean, it really has with you know, Sussex this morning really going about their business in a very positive way. They added 127 in 19 overs. Jack Carson making 61 in 53 balls um, really led the charge and set Sussex up with a lead of 107. Sussex declaring on 478 for nine. Um, and then slowly working their way through this uh, Northamptonshire order. Uh, Luke Proctor resisted. Um, he made 41. Rob Keogh with a half century. Um, but Jaden Sills with two wickets. Uh, Ollie Robinson with two. James Coles with three. Uh, 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 kept us on the edge of our seats. And now with nine wickets down. Um, I mean, Sussex will still need to score the runs, and that's the issue now for Sussex, because overs will be drifting away. It is. I was just thinking, um, years ago uh, at Northampton, we used to have uh, what we called the Ted Rogers Trophy, um, named after the uh, the comedian who hosted that baffling game show, 3 2 oh, yes, yes. yeah, yeah. where the clues were totally incomprehensible unless you happened to work for MI6 or something. And... Uh, the, the reason it was called the Ted Rogers Trophy is that we used to uh, award points at the end of every match, uh, like a sort of a merit table. Three points for the most valuable uh, contribution, the most valuable player in the match, two and one and so on, with a bit of latitude. If somebody had played an absolute you know, match-winning innings like Alan Lamb in the 
B and H semi final at Canterbury in eighty seven, then we could we could up it to a four, you know, if, if it was a, a real match winner. And then we totaled you know, topped them all up and at the end of uh, the end of the month there'd be a little prize, and then at the end of the season they would they would be a winner. I was just thinking, I think James Coles might be on for the three. Yeah, well I agree. Um if, yes. or even or even four. Um but there have been the thing is with from Sussex point of view, there have been some terrific performances I mean that, that century from Tom Haynes again has been sort of slightly overlooked because of what's happened since and yes. that, no, I would that agree. Uh, wonderful batting from Hudson Prentice and Lamb and, and Carson and Ollie Robinson today but Tom Haynes laid the foundations with, with that century 133 um, no, so you're right he, you, you, you're right it has almost got forgotten so he might uh, he might nip in for the two, and I don't know. Jaden Jaden Seals maybe has made a very promising debut. Jack Carson made sixty one off fifty three, and he's he's picked up some some valuable wickets. I don't think it would be, I think it would, would take a little bit of thinking about from the Northamptonshire point of view. Now the umpires heading off. Yes, I think I think he's got a little lie track. In fact, Neil's been back in touch, and he says, "Hi again, Adrian. The law states bad light comes under if it's dangerous. Is it dangerous with spinners?" Well, I think I think the law says dangerous or unreasonable. Right. Um, I, I think it has got marginally lighter, but it's. I mean, it's marginal. It, 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 um, it is marginal. I mean, the, the the fact the ground staff are here suggests to me that they think that rain mm. is on the way. And but bear in mind, Sussex have still got to get these runs. It, yeah. It, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's from Northampton's point of view. I think you'd have to say Luke Proctor. Yeah, excellent. would be would be on for your for your three points at the, at the moment. He's Most had a, he's had a very very good game. Um, other than that, Rob Keogh played nicely today. Um, Lewis McManus, I think Lewis McManus must be in. If North Africa get a, get away with this one, get away with a draw, um, then I think he's going to be on for the two points, isn't he? Um, and and it's a very good story. In fact, interestingly, I was I was chatting to uh, North Aberdeen's head coach John Sadler. We were talking about Lewis McManus, and he said, from his point of view, he thought it was the best story of the winter. Um, the fact that you know Lewis had had such a an awful time last year, um, you know, highest championship score, twenty seven, broken thumb, couldn't buy a run um, in Red Bull cricket, certainly, and the fact that he's come back he's, he's taken the initiative himself took himself off to India um, at That's his own terrific. at his own behest uh, had, as he said had a couple of weeks when he just concentrated on his training nothing else no extraneous uh, you know teammates to worry about or coaching programs or anything he just did what he thought was was needed um, came back uh, made 50 yesterday and, and played as though the 2023 season never happened he was back playing the way he did in in 2022 so that's a you know it is a good story and it's it's nice when they will talk about reward for virtue don't they and oh, it's, it's it's rather nice when somebody's actually t- you know prepared to put that investment into their own game when they actually you know find it being rewarded good for him now the umpires the are coming back down the steps yeah the lights are awful now isn't it? it is very very gloomy uh, you you just <laughs> This feeling that this might be the the sort of the decisive thing. They're I think actually going out on the field. Yes, they are. I mean, I I just wonder whether they're going to sort of because they they'll probably feel a obli- I mean, obviously overs are ticking away now. I wonder whether you get to a stage where there are so few overs left in the match that Sussex can't possibly score the runs. But yeah. if there's, no, we've lost. Um, I mean, if there's if there's twenty minutes. I mean, Sussex have got to take a wicket. Then we will lose two overs as yes. well. So even if they said, right, there's 10 overs to go, by the time a wicket falls, there's seven, and you've got seven overs to get... Seven. Well, Sussex would have a dip at it, but... I'm just making an announcement to the effect that uh, the, the umpires will, will get the game on if they can, which we, which yeah. we know, but that's, um, that's fair enough. But it is, I have to say, it is very dark yeah, now. Um, yeah. I know we're we're looking. It's always it's always slightly difficult when you you sort of like like when you're watching a game and you realise you've got your sunglasses on. No. And you think, oh, can they be playing in this? We're th- looking at it through a slightly tinted window here, but it it I think it is pretty dark. If you're looking at the sort of relative light, certainly for me it's darker than it was when they came. No, I agree. Each of the the last two evenings, um, but with the again with the match, it's one of those where if if the game was dead. 
the umps would uh, would, would, would say, yeah, OK, you know, let's go home. But um, the fact is that there is a possibility still of a result. So they have to do, you know, everything with due process. Somebody's... Um, it's, it, it's one of the ground staff. They're collecting up some of the chairs. Oh, OK. Below, right so. so the umpires are out there at the moment. And they're with... The, I think that's is that Ben Gibson out there, the head, yes, the, the head groundsman. Yeah. Um, somebody, we joked, didn't we, about a quarter of an hour ago, Adrian, about they'd, they'd be asking because there's no floodlights, they'd be asking people to put their car headlights on at Cromwell Road ground. Somebody has. Yeah, they have. They have. Um, well, that shows so, how dark it is. And uh, yeah, the, the announcements just come up on the, the board to say further inspection as soon as conditions allow. And. Well, they're still out there. I think it is... Well, there's, people are starting to vote with their feet yeah, now, I think it's fair to say, yeah. and they're starting to, to drift away. It is very hard. Um, with the best will in the world, it is very hard to see now how we are going to get back on. And I say that because with the, with the radar on, the, the rain that we were talking about that's coming up from the south is not that far off the coast now and so presumably there's sort of cloud ahead of it um, and it, it's yeah it's difficult to see how this uh, how this could happen can I just say if we uh, you know the, the basis that we may be uh, off soon a big thank you to everybody connected with Sussex County Cricket Club I've had I've had four thoroughly enjoyable days here you've got some of the friendliest people on the gate and around the ground on the circuit um, it's always a great pleasure to come here and, uh, uh, you know, I, I look forward. It's been three years since we were here in any competition, and I hope it's not three years before we're, uh, we're coming back because it's, uh, it's a great pleasure coming down here to, to Hove. Well, thank you, Andrew. It's been good to have you here as well. It's been a real, what a start to the championship. Um, it's been a terrific game. I, I, and lots of good talking points as well. I think, I, I, I hope that, that, you know, the Sussex aren't going to get too much criticism for not having the floodlights. I, I, I think you're absolutely right. If we could have started at half ten yesterday and today, we wouldn't be in this situation. Um, but there well, you go. I've had a quote here, and uh, Ollie Helfrick is, is, is working overtime today on the Isle of Man in Douglas. Uh, he said, brilliant start to the county season for both teams. Cracking ad for county cricket. Thank you for your engaging commentary. And in the words of the great Jeff Lynn, and I mention this because he went and watched um, the ELO, the ELO tribute the other night. Sweet, sweet is the night. <laughs> so thanks for that, Ollie. Well, it's not quite night here, but I have to say it's not, um, it's not far off. It's one of those... And the old, the great old chestnut of Lionel Tennyson and Walter Livesey batting together for Hampshire in the twenties, and the uh, deciding that they ought to be appealing for the light. And uh, Tennyson said, "Why don't you appeal against the light, Walter?" And he said, "I can, I can hear you, my lord, but I can't see you." <laughs> and it's, it's a bit like that at the moment. It is. Well, it's 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 very dark. Um, I I I have to say I will be amazed if it, for two reasons: a, it's too gloomy; b, as you say, it just feels like rain now, doesn't it? You can just it's low and it's glowering. And um, well, it's, I mean, the other the other interesting thing we, we mentioned about the fact that this would have been and it may not be now, but the Sussex haven't uh, beaten Northamptonshire in a championship match since. 2014 at Hove before that Hove uh, 2010 so um, and they haven't won at Northampton for 20 years which is extraordinary um, and of course they will have uh, an opportunity to put that right when Sussex come up to Wantage Road at the end of June match starting on the 30th of June at Northampton which is also former players day so that's uh, always a day to look forward to but it is extraordinary that, um, that, that Sussex I say, you haven't won at Northampton since 2004. I, I suppose, again, it's the sort of thing that happens with two divisions, doesn't it? You get teams that just find themselves in different divisions and so they don't play each other for a long period of time. But 2014 was Division 1, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was uh, yes, it was. Well, yeah. the, the last time Sussex won, I mean, Northamptonshire had a, had a woeful season. They didn't win a game. I suspect... I, th I suspect probably Joffre Archer got a stack of wickets then, or maybe not. No, it was before Joffre started. It had been a bit before Joffre, I would have thought. Yeah, probably perhaps McGoffin 
Yeah, twenty. I'm just going to just going to have a little look. You, you've you've piqued my interest, as they say. So I shall have to have a little look now at the at uh, that that 2014 game. Uh, meanwhile, the ground staff down to our left are well poised and ready for action. A bit like Brenda when the new ball's due. Yeah. Um, and uh, quite a number of spectators now over to our left. And I think there weren't a vast number here in the first place, but um, a few of them are now just starting to drift towards the the exit. Um, I think they've probably made their own minds up, but again, in other circumstances we will be sitting here moaning about the umpires that can't make a decision, but in this situation they are absolutely right. They've got to do the right thing for both, you know, for both sides, in particular for the side that is, uh, is still in with the chance of winning. So, as I say, we shall, uh, we shall just wait. So that, I've got that game up here now. Um, County ground, July 2014. Sussex won by an innings and 85 runs. Sussex 405 all out. Luke Wright 158. Uh, four wickets for Andrew Hall. Uh, then in reply, Northamptonshire 116 all out. They were 0 for 3 and 11 for 4. 20 for 5. A um, little bit of a Runs down the order from David Willey and Stephen Crook. And it was indeed Mr. McGoffin. Was good, it? good shout, mm. Harmsey. Five for 12. Yeah. Um, a bit of a star, Steve. And, uh, well, the late and much Miss Matt Hobden. Yeah. Two for 34. And Northamptonshire following on. We're all out for 204 with Stephen Crook top scoring at number 10 with 52 not out. Three for McGoffin, three for Hobden. Two for Asha Zaidi. Oh, yes. Yes. And, uh, uh, left arm spinner. Sussex winning in three days. The last man out was David Willey, stumped off the aforementioned Asha Zaidi. Now, the umpires are walking back to the pavilion. Uh, and I, the, um, the, the stumps haven't been pulled up yet. But we have now lost... Uh, 26 minutes of play, so that's going to be what seven? Yeah. Well, realistically, seven, eight overs. Yeah. We're not getting back on here. It's, it's. Really I would, I would be very surprised. Yeah. Now the umps will stay with it, of course, because we just want to wait until we get a, a decision one way or the other. The umps are, are now going back up the stairs, back up the steps, to uh, presumably have a word. That they've done this once already. Just went and had a, a word with the, uh, presumably with the captains and the coaches. They're now climbing their weary way up the staircase, up towards the uh, the balcony where both teams are, and both teams actually in their dressing rooms at the moment. There's no sign of anybody. I think they're, they're deciding. One's going one way. Paul Baldwin's going into the Northamptonshire changing room, and Surrey Shanmugam's going into the Sussex one. And yeah, this is probably the skippers coming out here. We just uh, uh, yeah, we'll we'll just be having a look to see if there's a if there's a shake of hands or nice. whatever. Yeah. Well, John Sadler, the head coach, is now Northampton's head coach, is now out on the balcony, having a word with the umps. Well, only Helfrick was saying, "Come on, umps!" Well, <laughs> they're going back out. They've had a word with John Sadler. They're now going back down the steps. This is gripping stuff, isn't it? <laughs> They're now walking down the steps, back onto the playing area. And, well, I'm not quite sure what they can say that's going to be different to what they've said before, but, as you say, it's all down to process, isn't it? Maybe going to have a word with the scorers. Mm, see how many overs have been lost. See how many overs have, uh, have been lost and, and how we're doing for... For time, uh, the scorers, of course, are up in the uh, up in the score box, which is at the top of the pavilion here, next to the the big clock, which at the moment says five past six. So we've been off for half an hour now. I think that is. I think they're going up to have a word with the scorers. So Messrs Unwin and Owen sounds like a firm of solicitors will now be in business. And they'll just consult, make sure that they're, again, it's all doing things the right way. You do this in a 
in a club match, wouldn't you? You just check with the scorers to see how long have we been off, how many overs have, totally. have gone. Just doing things right. Um, but now they're... <laughs> I'm not absolutely sure they've worked out how to get up to the score box. They, were just, they came out of the members' pavilion and now I think they're going upstairs. So I suspect within the next five minutes or so, if you bear with us... We will probably have... I, I think they'll call this off. I, 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 I mean, there is n I just don't think there's any way. It's, now it's five past six. I mean, it's, it's really, really dark. Here. There's no way you can play in light like this. And there's no sign of it really. There's not as if there's blue sky behind us. No, I think it's, um, it's, it's very much odds against. But um, it's like I say, I think, it, I think it sort of typifies the approach... Totally. That these umpires have taken in this game, which is, you know, doing things right. I think generally I'm saying, but not necessarily saying that they do anything any different to any of the other first-class umpires. That's all. It's all a matter of process. But um, I think these two. I just think they've they've done well. I think they've they've both looked in terms of, as we say, in terms of decision making, in terms of just general management of the game. I think they've done very well. So. They are, I think, now up having a word with the scorers over to our left. And just uh, checking where we, where we are. The scoreboard is still saying further inspection if and when the light improves, which is quite correct. Most of the spectators have gone home, but not all. There are a few still around. I'm looking to see if there's anybody still in the deck chairs at the Cromwell Road. <laughs> Cromwell Road end. Well, there's people standing around the deck chairs, but they're not actually sitting in them. I think it might be a little bit too cold for that. There's a couple of impromptu games going on. Some young spectators, school holidays, of course, or at least it is up our way. I imagine it is down here as well. And they're having a little chance to have a go in the nets, which is great and very good to see. But uh, whether they're going to see any more cricket out in the middle, I think the odds are probably very much against the uh, rain that we were talking about is well it's closing in fast I think it's no, fair to, I, I agree it's fair it, to it, say. Just, it just um, feels like rain doesn't it now it, it just what, whatever did we do before before the weather radar oh good question yeah. we, we it, <laughs> Jim, Jim Watts I mentioned him earlier actually playing his last first class match at Eastbourne in 1980 it was a, say one of my cricketing heroes former Northampton captain and he um, was reckoned to be one of the best when it came to working out whether it was going to rain or not in those rather less scientific days and uh, I remember David Steele telling me that uh, if, if Jim turned up with his Mac then it was a question of, of um, when, not if, they would be rained off. The stuff, that the, the skies that are coming over to our left now, it is filthy. Um, it really is very, very dark, threatening clouds. Even there aren't, there aren't even too many seagulls at the moment. They've um, they've had, they've seen enough. We're, we're going to get wet going across to our interviews. So I, I I think it's sort of 99.9 percent. .9 this will be called off in the next five minutes or so it's I mean the umpires have done their bit they've they've tried to get every chance but you can just see now you're quite right that darker cloud is is making its way towards home and I, I rather fear in fact Ben Gibson's now having a look and I think Ben is you can see he's looking behind the pavilion where this weather's coming from and uh, his staff are getting ready I think with uh, with the covers he's well umpire Paul Baldwin I can see is now up on the gantry just where the scorers yeah. Sit. So as as we suspected, they're obviously just having a having a word as the match officials team. Presumably Dean Cosker, I think he's there as well, the match referee. Um, and that again is, I mean, again, people sort of say, do you really need a, a match referee? Or I mean, they don't necessarily call it that. They have a he's the liaison officer, isn't it, for ECB? But um, do you really need one in the county championship? Well, I think the answer is yes, you do. And I think the umpires probably appreciate having somebody that they can, you know, take soundings from, discuss. I, I mean, I, I can remember instances, you probably can, Adrian, that uh, when games have been called off, um, that's it. That is it. Yeah. And here come the covers now. The signal has gone out and yeah, that is match abandoned as a draw. Well, it's a shame because it could have been a very, very exciting 
finish as it is. It's been it's been a terrific day's cricket. Thank you very much for your patience for staying with us. But obviously we wanted to dot the I's and cross the T's for you. But I can confirm now that uh, the match has been abandoned as a draw uh, with Northamptonshire clinging on at 170 for nine in their second innings with, uh, well, Lewis McManus take a bow because he's done his job for the side again as he did in the first innings. Sussex pick up 15 points, which I, I think they'll be fairly happy with. 13 for Northamptonshire, so decent haul for both teams, but Sussex have really bossed this game. Since tea time yesterday, they had a good chance to force a win, but as we said right the way